The Horrible Gamers podcast may contain content not suitable for all ages. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Horrible Gamers Podcast, show number 271, being recorded on August the 24th, 2019. I'm one of your hosts, Jesus Vintel, so doing this as out today. I'm joined by my friend from the West Coast, the best coast, Gunny Chief. Welcome back, Gunny. Welcome. Hey, it's good to be back. It was a nice couple weeks. Uh, had a good weekend last week, so mm. good to be here, bud. Yeah, fuck doing? yeah. My fine, sir, and from Ohio, the Mayo. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Gl- glad to have some Gunny back. Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah, Gunny. He get all that, that fun at the theme park. Yeah, I'm you know what? Younger. You know, Gunny, you, 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 miss, there? you miss more days on the show than anyone else, Gunny. What the fuck? You know what? You say I go to that theme park like four times a year. You know, I have like If you check back year. the records of each podcast, I think it's been a year and a half since Bullshit. the last time I was there. You've been there like ten times this year already. I would go at least at least three times a year, but no, it's been a year and a half since I've been to any theme parks. God damn! Take too many theme parks. You're it's done. usually like out to the ocean or out to the mountains, you know, or, or to Fiji Islands somewhere, but. Well, that's like a theme park, yeah, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. I guess you could say that, like a water park. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> see, I consider like any theme park like a little vacation. Gunny has to separate his vacations yeah, from know, his theme right? parks, yeah. right? Oh no, the theme parks are just a. Those are just a one day thing. Uh, my vacations are like three weeks, guys. Fuck, you know what was really you, fun? Gunny. I, I know what was really fun was going to, Great America, Santa Clara. The, and I know they've got them at other theme parks. Is the Mass Effect Mass Effect experience, mm-hmm. and so since summer is kind of winding down, they only have literally like one row of seats open. So it's like the second row. It's like the best row to be in, and like that when you put on those 3D glasses, it's like the perfect spot, like sitting right in the middle. Wait, wait. You mean they shut down the other rows in the in the ride? Yeah, like I think That's because stupid. now why would they do that? They, so the first time we we went and we got in line, and it's there's not a lot of people there because because now like everybody's back in school. They kind of changed it. I don't know, like ten years ago, where everybody goes back to school mid August. But um, so the, we get in there. It's like, oh, the ride's down. Like, what do you guys want to do? And then we were like, man, we were so close to like being the next people in line. Me and my son. And then we're just we kind of just stood there for like five minutes, and then we're like, yeah, we'll just come back. So. We went and we rode, I think, like, uh, it was, like, one of the rapid rides or something. And then we were walking back through, and they were like, okay, it's open again. So we ran for it, and then, boom, we were, like, right in. But still, they only I keep that. I know what happened, Gunny. I know what happened. <laughs> they didn't close that road down because of the people. Someone pissed themselves or shit on that road. <laughs> yeah, puked. something. Somebody puked on one of those seats, and they're like, Fuck! We gotta keep the ride going, but we gotta shut this fucking seat down. We'll just shut down the whole row and say that we need to close this row down. So the most dis- disturbing part about this ride is that they have like these uh, these things like in the like where the armrest is, and what it does is you know when you meet the geth like as you're traveling along and uh, in the sequence of the of the show is that it shoots out like this mist of like crappy. I don't know, liquid. And it stinks like it's, that shit just got right in my eye. I was like, oh my God, like it got up under the glasses. I was like, oh, geez. Like I'm, I'm like rubbing my right eye, but it was still like like a fun experience. It just makes me excited Spade for you VR. Right the eyeball. The right the eyeball, week, man. I was like, oh my God. Right? So, next week, Johnny has pink eye. Yeah. The fuck? I was kind of concerned about that because I'm like, people have their hands all over it and ugh, disgusting. Yeah, that's disgusting, honey. What the fuck? Yeah, it's just, but I enjoyed it. I actually, went, we actually went back around and did it a second time. I was like, no, we're not going to come All back right. here for another year. I get sprayed in the face again. Woo! <laughs> so this time, this time, I actually held my hand over the, like, the thing where it shoots out at. Mm, okay. So, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it because there wasn't a million people there. So so the roller coasters, you know, we were able to ride them oh, yeah. back to back. All right. Good times. 
See, it really, really okay. teases. I, I think what it is, but he's not telling us it was senior discount day. Oh, <laughs> that, is that right. what it was? You get a special discount on that day, Gunny? Like, yeah, we I only got, allow I, seniors in this day. Whole drinks. <laughs> and I mean, the food is horrible, you know, at these theme parks. So eat before you go into any of them. You don't eat anything at theme parks. They're too expensive, first of all, and they're just shitty food. Shitty yeah, food are too expensive. Well, it's terrible. Yeah. Just buy drinks. Get... Just buy drinks there, Gunny. All you need is drinks. Hey, you know what we used to do back when I was a kid? Because I've been going there since I was four years old. Because um, I used to live in San Jose when I was five. But we would actually make our food. And then anytime, like, hey, any of your kids are hungry, you get your stamp, you go out to the car, and you get a, grab a sandwich out of the cooler. That's the way it was done. We yeah. would do that. And we went to the water park here because we had the season passes. So. My wife would just pack a cooler and we'd swim yeah, and dude. get hungry because like it's like a zoo and water park all in one. So like they have a water park off to the side. Well, of course, the food is like nine dollars for like a little thing, like three chicken fingers and like two French fries, <laughs> you know. So my wife would just make stuff and put it in the cooler. And then yeah, and then you could the put car. the cooler in a diaper bag and put the diaper bag in the fucking Oh, we don't stroller. have diaper bags. <laughs> and you put that shit in the stroller and then you take the baby in there with you and you hide that shit underneath the baby. Underneath <laughs> yeah. Blankets. Yeah. Woo! You have like ten bottles, baby <laughs> bottles, full of beer, <laughs> vodka. Woo! That's just water, people. That's ice for the baby. That's, That's water for the baby's bottle. <laughs> 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 oh shit! Anyways, people, you can follow us on Twitter at underscore horrible gamers. Leave us a review on iTunes, please. Go ahead and do that. We're also available on iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, Spotify app were available on everything you can think of literally everything you can think of player fm just tell alexa to play a horrible gamers podcast and she will find us so there you go if you have an alexa enabled car or alexa in your home just tell her hey alexa play horrible gamers podcast and she'll find us and she'll play us and there you go there you go that's how you can listen to us and tell your friends to listen to us and be like well how do i find these podcasts you speak of you don't just tell alexa to find them she'll find them Horrible Gamers Podcast. Anyways, you can join our group, Horrible Gamers Podcast Community. That is a closed group. That means anything you post in the group is not visible to people that are not part of the group. And you can join, I guess, like, not join, <laughs> our Facebook page as well. You can leave us a review on there, just like on iTunes and on Google. So leave us a review on iTunes, Google, Facebook. And then go and join our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash horrible gamers and support the show with the monies. Woo! Yeah. yeah, we did get uh, John Drum sticker mailed out to him the other day. So, oh, you did? Awesome. Yes, the uh, decal is on its way. He'll get it Monday. Nice. Sweet. I'm gonna go stalk him now. I know his address. We know where you live. Now, mm-hmm. you, now you can never stop being a patron. You fucked up. <laughs> Show up to your he, house he's now. Good. <laughs> You can get HGP ads in the mail now. We're going to start sending them ads. <laughs> Just send them ads in the mail all the time. A bunch of junk mail with our shit on it. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to send them uh, Gunny's Blue Pill ads. <laughs> it's going to be all these like, Anyways, uh, online fucking, gaming ads and coupons stuff. Websites and shit. you can go to. We're sending them some coupons. <laughs> Anyways, people, you can, you can support this show like Adam Sunday has, Ellen Maybe, Bo Sassone. Bill Garner, Brian Capessa, David Snyder, Dirty Bite, Evan Tanaka, Henley M, Jake Vossen, Jesse Kraft. Or oh, Jake, thank you for becoming a Patreon, dude. Oh, as you became a Patreon the other day. Thank you for becoming a Patreon, Jake. I appreciate you, buddy. John Jerome, Jonathan D. Hall, Jonathan D. Hall, M. Polo, MacMod. Native Lives Matters, Pork Shampoo, Robbie Wheat, Steve, the Mayo, and Subbader, thanks for being Patreons! Woo! Yeah! Mm, yeah, so you guys are all pretty much going to be entered until next month's drawing. So we'll see. We'll see what happens next month. We're giving away 50 bucks to one of you lucky fuckers out there. Yeah! On the 14th, right? Mm-hmm. Giving away 50 bucks. We'll see who wins it. Anyways, people, let's talk about video games that we've been playing this week. But first, let's give a quick shout-out to our 
music makers Fowler and Twistix they make our intro song called Breakout special HGP remix and the outro song is done by Broke for Free it's called Night Owl and let's talk about video games this week what we've been playing what I've been playing what you've been playing let's talk so this week I've actually been playing a game guys uh, I haven't gone back to Rebel Galaxy Outlaw and it's not because I don't want to it's not because I don't care about the game or whatever or like I've lost interest in it it's just I haven't had like the time to like really want to sit down and play with it you know what i mean like like if i play it i know that i want to play it forever so i'm kind of like scared to play it right is that situation more like it's not like <laughs> i don't want to play it i want to play it but i know if i play it like like i don't want to just play it for an hour i want to play it for yeah. like 10 hours straight yep it just seems kind of hard to do that at this point in time so I do that with uh like like with Assassin's Creed Odyssey yeah i know that if i sit down on a sunday morning like okay i know i can get at least three hours out of this game or four yeah that's the best experience instead of just playing for that one hour or 45 yeah, minutes like, like you it's not worth it you feel like you get nothing done right pretty much yeah so, yeah that's like, kind of how go anywhere with it i feel about it but i gotta say that ghost nico bought the game based on my recommendation he actually messaged me on uh <laughs> discord and he was like hey jesus do you think i should pick up rebel galaxy outlaw and i told him look man if you're into like space games or whatever at all and you want something that's kind of interesting and unique i highly recommend that you pick it up pick it up on epic or wherever you pick it up at just buy it and he's like okay i'll buy it on epic i guess and then he bought it and he messaged me back like <laughs> i think it was the next morning or something he's like dude that fucking rebel galaxy outlaw is incredible he's like holy shit the soundtrack is crazy good and i was like yep yep they have a really good soundtrack and um they actually have a playlist of the soundtrack, the music to play in the game, on Spotify. So if you want to just listen to the soundtrack, you can actually go to Spotify and find the playlist that has like all the actual artists they use for the music in the game. Which is actually I'll have to I'll dance. have to listen to more of that music because you know you put that on our secret private chat and I went in there and I'm just not a jazz fan, so I need to actually no, listen. No, it was to not just music. jazz. That the one song I gave you, <laughs> it was the jazz song. And, and, and actually, people, I, I do like jazz. That's a fun fact about Jesus. I, I do enjoy jazz. I actually enjoy all types of music. It's kind of funny because on my playlist, it goes from anything from like Tupac to like fucking jazz. <laughs> That's what I have on my fucking playlist. It's not like, it's like, and then I have everything in between. It's like I have country in there. I have fucking like classic rock. I have the doors and shit, Guns N' Roses in there fucking all that shit in there you know like it's weird i got like rock i have rap i have country and i have jazz and that motherfucker i'll be <laughs> so, throwing some greta van fleet in there so some, playing crazy, that game. some crazy ass fucking uh some crazy playlists that i have on my phone but uh but yeah i actually do enjoy jazz and i was like oh, this actually is a pretty catchy song i remind you like a like a 1920s like great gatsby fucking type of music or some shit you know what i mean that's the vibe I got. <laughs> yeah, that's the vibe I got for that. But that's actually off the jazz station inside the game. Like, in the game, like I said last week, they do have, like, radio stations. Just like Grand Theft Auto, they have, like, radio show hosts in there. They got, like, radio shows. They got, like, this one station that's all, like, talk radio. And there's, like, all these space people that talk about, like, what do you think about the war going on between this sector and this sector or this and this? And they're just talking about space shit. And you're like, what the fuck is this bullshit? And they have like, uh, they have comedians on there. It's just like literally like Grand Theft Auto radio. Like it seems like a real radio, you know, like you just scroll through stations and fuck around and listen to shit. Um, but yeah, I haven't played any more of that people. So I'll probably be getting more into that tomorrow. Then I'll probably talk about it next week. Anyways, Let's talk about other shit that I've actually played this week. Some more Apex. Unfortunately, I got back into that last night with Brink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, me and Brink got in there last night. We, we didn't know what to play. I mean, he wanted to play Battlefield Five because they had the new Metro update. So they've redone the map of of Battlefield, I think it was 3, Metro, the Metro map, the, the one with the trains. They've redone that once again and actually released it for Battlefield Five. He wanted me to download it, but it was like, dude, I have like 10 things queued up in my downloads. I have like a bunch of updates on Steam, and I'm downloading CSGO and all this shit. Like, like oh, fuck, fuck it, fuck it. It started to download, but then we ended up playing Apex for a while, and uh, yeah, we were just drinking, playing Apex, man. We didn't get a win, but it was just fun and games, you know? We were just fucking with people in the chat. 
<laughs> yeah, I played some of that Apex today too as well. Apex, yeah. With, uh, yeah. yeah, with Caddy. And uh, what's your friend's name, Mail? No, uh, Whoopi. Yeah, Whoopi. Oh, so Whoopi. yeah, it was. We we didn't do too good, so we oh, sucked. Yeah, yeah. Speaking for all of us on here, Caddy. <laughs> Caddy's like, so you even put it in so. chat. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I was the worst in all of it. Anyways, anyways, other stuff that I played besides Apex Legends and all that good stuff, guys. I've actually went back and finished Heavy Rain, and the ending that I got this time was absolutely like the best ending. The game. Oh, game. spoilers! No, no, so, I'm like, 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 no, like I like everything turned out good this time around. I don't know what I did differently. I must have done something differently, but I, I know I made different choices in some areas. So I got the good ending. You know what I mean? How many? You know, like how many endings this game actually has? Like how many endings you can get? I think like five different ones or six or seven different ones. I, there's quite a bit, I think. Okay. Uh, I know I'm just uh, just a little ways into it yet. I haven't had time since I bought this VR to get back into it. So I need to make a point to get into it. Oh, it has 17 different endings. Wow, it's a lot. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, I guess I I've just only seen three. Now. Yeah. So I've seen two. I guess uh, I could play the game 15 more times to see the other 15 fucking endings. <laughs> well, it'd be my luck. I'd play it 15 more times and get like the same two endings yeah, over and that's over. That's exactly my <laughs> thing. Yeah, I would probably get the same exact ending over and over because I'll be making the same choices over and over. Um, but it was pretty cool, like the way the game unfolds in the end, like like everything kind of like unravels real quick in the end, and you find out who the killer was and how they got away with everything and, and what was going on, and and you're like, holy shit, this all makes sense now. It all makes sense. It's like one of those like serial killer movies or something where like, you know, at the very end, the, like the de- the detective is like piecing all the fucking evidence together, like holy shit. It wasn't this guy. We framed the wrong guy. Oh, fuck. We we sent him to the death chair. Holy shit. We got to stop the execution. Like, it's one of those moments. Like, holy fuck. It's like a really good movie. Yeah. Yeah, kind of like a good movie. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, there's that. And um, so I finished that. Heavy Rain, people. I recommend that game. It was free on PlayStation Plus a while back. And actually, it was free once again when they gave out Detroit Become Human. You actually got the deluxe edition. Which gave you heavy rain. So if you didn't download it the first time, you could have downloaded it the second time. If you downloaded the last month's giveaway that they have on PS Plus, you now own Heavy Rain and Detroit Become Human. So there I, you go. I bought a PlayStation at the right time. That's right, Gunny. That's right. Other games that I played this week, I went back and played some more. What the fuck else did I play this week? Oh, 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 Mayo, you'll be happy to know that I've actually played uh, some Counter Strike. Oh, yes. Me and uh, me and uh, Brink of Eternity last downloaded it last night on Steam, and it's free to play, right? That free to play one. CSGO. Oh, you played the free to play mode, yeah. Yeah, so we played that shit, and it was kind of ghetto, but it wasn't bad for being a free game. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I expected it to be like, like real shitty <laughs> for a free game, but it wasn't. Yeah, I'm not sure what all the free version has. I like, I bought it like years ago and so i'm not sure what the difference is i know my son was playing with it with one of his friends and he had the free version and i know he can't get into everything but i'm not sure what the difference is between the I two don't are know the difference either there's a bunch of unless, nodes in there unless unless it's going completely free i'm not sure does this no jesus you have the, the free to play version is it and just judging from gameplay that i've watched on twitch sure over the, the only version that i saw on steam past couple of years is it you get to like after you do so many matches, or, or after each match, you get to you get coins, right, or currency to bu- to purchase uh, skins, or something um, like that. You can get crates that will drop actually when you play online rounds, and these crates you will go into your Steam inventory, and you can actually kind of like what PUBG did. You can you can sell the crates on the uh, actually Steam marketplace, or you can open them. But to open these crates, it requires a key that costs you two dollars and fifty cents. Hmm. So uh, you can you can buy dangerous. these keys. It, it is dangerous, but what you can also get to is uh, they have some really rare items and some things, and there's just different values of all sorts of stuff. And you can like look it up in Steam, and it shows you the values of things. And like I know somebody they got actually a knife that was really rare, and it was valued in Steam for over four hundred dollars, and people will buy it immediately for four hundred credit in Steam. So basically, you get Steam credit, and you can get four hundred dollars of Steam credit by trading this knife away. 
Wow. Uh, but there's lots of gun skins, and there's different kinds of skins. There's like worn and pristine, and you know, so there's different quality of gun skins you can get. Yeah, we were just playing you know, the free to play of CSGO, I guess, Global Offensive. Yeah, we were playing that one. I guess there's other ones on here. I don't know. It costs like 10 bucks. I don't know. I'm not interested in paying 10 bucks for the game, but I'll play the free one. But mm-hmm. <laughs> it was all right. It was actually pretty fun. We were playing with bots for a bit. And then uh, we were in a match with real people. But, like, how the fuck do you mute people in the game? We couldn't figure it out. Oh, uh, it's been a while for me. I don't remember. Um, I don't know how to mute. Dude, it was just annoying the whole fucking... We had this dude from, yeah. like, from like, China, like, I'm from China, man. I play games, and then he was just fucking around the whole time on the chat. This other guy was singing like some fucking song, playing the guitar or something. <laughs> this other yeah. guy was doing something else. This other guy was telling everyone to shut the fuck up. This other guy was trying to be all serious and shit. Well, me and Brink were just like, dude, we're we're on Discord chatting with each other. They can't hear us, but we're like, dude, like, this is hectic. How do you shut this shit off? We don't. We couldn't figure out how to shut off the chat. We just couldn't, and it was just annoying as fuck. <laughs> Yeah, but anyways, so I played some of that, some CSGO on, on Steam. And I was surprised because I've actually played this game before, Mayo. Uh, I played it on the 360. Uh, uh-huh. It actually came out for the Xbox 360 a while back. It came out on the arcade, so it was like only like a digital-only game. And, yeah. Um, the game was actually the same game on the PC that it, it was on the Xbox, like the same fucking game. Uh it's just I don't know if it was if it ever took off on the Xbox because of I think it was the time when like Call of Duty was real still popular still, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like Call of Duty. I thought that one on there. Xbox actually had like some kind of campaign or something to it, or was it just just the actual? No, multiplayer? it was just the multiplayer. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it was just the multiplayer. But uh, they uh, it's just the game never got like the community behind it. Like yeah. like for a while there, I, I, was, I was playing it and there was a lot of people playing it. But like a few years later, I got back into it, and like I could find matches here and there. But there was like certain times and situations where I would run into the same people over and over. You know what I mean? Like only a certain mm-hmm. people play the game, and I was running into the same guys over and over on the 360. And then I don't think it ever came to the Xbox One, and I never even got ported, like a backwards compatibility or whatever. I find it yeah. interesting, like. You know, like how you say you don't think it was like real popular on the Xbox, and it's like the flipped on the PC side, where like Halo here on the on the PC side wasn't really popular. I mean, we had Halo One in on the PC, and it just was never popular. You don't hear people talk. And same thing with like uh, Call of Duty. Call of Duty, I don't think it was ever really, at least the community that I'm I've always been in was never really uh, popular on the yeah. PC. But then on console side. You oh, know, yeah. it's it's, it's really popular, and then you know, on the PC side, it, it's all CS:GO, um, Team Fortress, and stuff like that. So I just find that kind of interesting, like the different platform how they don't cross over. You know, as soon as one goes to the other, they don't have an interest. Yeah, but you know what? What game does seem to be pretty popular on both? That they've actually done a pretty good job of getting it popular on both platforms. Is, PUBG? Uh, no, not PUBG. Uh, Portal? No, Rainbow Six Siege. Yeah. It seems like oh, yeah. that game is really popular on both like PC and consoles, even on the PS4. Well, they're always on adding the Xbox on everything. It's popular on everything. It seems like you know what I mean. Like they've actually done a pretty good job making it popular for they everyone. Yeah, operators all the time. Yeah. Anyways, so moving on now, and uh, so I played some of that, some CS:GO last night. What the fuck else did I play this week? I'm trying to just think really hard. Uh, I played some Masterbot yesterday. Some Masterbot. I actually was able to stream it. Um, because actually the, that morning I was streaming another game, Call of Duty. <laughs> so I was actually playing the Call of Duty Alpha, guys. Uh, How is this? So Call of Duty Alpha, exclusive to the PS4 right now. I'm pretty sure it'll come out next week for like everything. Or like a week after next, it'll be for everything. <clears throat> they always do that. We're like one week to do it for the PS4, then the next week to do it for everyone. Um, so the new Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, is what it's called. Uh, so the new Alpha came out. This was a 2v2 mode. This is a new mode in this Call of Duty, I guess, called... I forget what the fuck the mode is called, but it's pretty much it's you and another person versus 20 gunfight. people. It's called... Yeah. I think it's Gunfight, right? Or OSD and, um, or something? No, yeah, it's Gunfight. And then pretty much you're like in little tiny maps, and you spawn in, you and the other dude, random weapons, you don't select your loadouts, you just spawn in with whatever guns. And each 
all the people have the same loadouts. So, like, if you have a Magnum with the scope on it or whatever, like a big pistol with the scope on it, the other team has big pistols with scopes on them. You know, if you don't have grenades, they don't have grenades. It's just like that. There's no weapon pickups in, like, the game. Like, you can't pick up, like, random drops of weapons. It's just whatever you have, you have. And you pretty much spawn in, and, and like, these maps are really tiny, but it's you and this other person just have to defeat the other two people. You either kill them both, or, like, let's say you and you kill the other player, and then they killed your partner, and you two are just hiding from each other. You can't find each other. You just keep going in circles, which is really rare. There's a little flag that spawns in the middle of the map, or somewhere set. There's a set location for the flag where it'll spawn every time after, like, so many seconds that you guys haven't shot at each other or whatever. This flag will spawn, and you can run there and try to capture that flag. It takes, like, five seconds to capture it. So if you get in there and the other person's across the map hiding and they don't notice that you're capping it, well, you can win right away. You win I was right wondering away. what that was. Or they could run up to you and shoot you while you're capping the flag. So it's kind of like a risky situation to go for the flag, you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, we were playing this. Oh, I was playing this yesterday with randoms. Uh, quite a bit of people on PS4 were playing it, and uh, a lot of people actually had mics. So I was talking to a few people that were playing. Um, actually, Jedi of Light was watching the stream. Thank you, Jedi of Light, for stopping by. Um, so me and uh, we were just playing, and uh, it was quite quite a bit of fun, dude. I actually do like the the way the guns feel now. They feel a little heavier. They don't feel like 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 floaty. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's kind of funny. It's kind of hard to explain because your character feels like it has weight to him now. Like it feels when he's running, he feels more like a Rainbow Six Siege character than he does a Call of Duty character. It feels like he has a weight to him, you know what I mean? Your character feels like he's actually like running and has a weight to himself. Uh, when he's pulling up the guns, the guns take a little bit longer to pull up. You don't just pull them up right away and aim down sights. Like, depending on the type of gun you're using, if you have a big-ass, like, LMG, like a huge fucking gun, it takes them a little bit longer to pull up the gun. It doesn't take, like, ten seconds, but it takes, like, maybe half a second instead of, like, a fraction of a second. You know what I mean? Um, it's not huge changes, but it's definitely noticeable changes. Um, the sniper rifles are still in the game. There's still sniper rifles in the game, which I think is so stupid, but whatever. <laughs> There's always going to be sniper rifles in Call of Duty, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I like the shotgun. That was that was a lot of fun. I got a lot of kills. Shotgun is really good, yeah. There's double pistols. A lot pistols. of kills with shotties. Uh, yeah, the pistols are really good, too. The pistols are really OP. The Desert Eagle, I think it's like a one-shot kill. Like, boom, you just shoot someone, and they go fucking flying. <laughs> Uh, the ragdoll animations where the characters die now are pretty funny. Like, they actually have, like, these fucking, like, animations. If you shoot the dude in the head, he, like, flies backwards and, like, does a backflip and shit. Um, it's kind of funny seeing those play out. As far as the game, for me, does this does this alpha sell it for me? Not really. I would have preferred, like, a team deathmatch mode or something. Yeah, that would be cool. Because um, it... It was like, like you said, a like small sandbox. Yeah, it was like really tiny maps. Like they have a like a paintball arena. One that's one of the yeah, maps. Yeah, it's a good example. And another map was like a like a little warehouse. Another map was like a, something else, like a little like jungle or forest. Um, but yeah, like it was all right, dude. It, it was all right. It was quite a bit of fun for a while. There was a few matches where I was just wrecking people. Like like a few matches where I just went fucking crazy good and. Like I just it just clicked, you know. Like it was just I'm in the zone, and I was fucking people up. Um, and they like I made a few people rage quit. There was a few matches where people just rage quit on us. Like we were just like, they would spawn, yeah. dude. We would spawn. The match would start, and like two seconds later, the whole team was like the other two people were dead, and me and my, yeah. me and my teammate were just wrecking them. And next thing you know, like it was like the other team is forfeiting the match in ten seconds, and it was like, we look at the scoreboard and there's nobody left in the game. Like, they just rage quit. They just left. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, when you spawn in, yeah. you're kind of, you're on that top platform. Yeah, yeah. You're so like, you you're better like, move. Like, like, yeah, you, yeah, move you better move quick. when it when that match starts. Yeah. Or, or you'll and, be dead. And you gotta, like, you, once you memorize the spawns, it's kind of pretty interesting, because there's a few situations where you can actually spawn kill somebody if you memorize the spawn. Like, if you know, like, okay, I jump on top of these, like, tires right here, and I have a sniper rifle. I can aim with my sniper rifle real quick down this lane, and the dude's going to be sticking his head out of that corner there. I need to shoot that fucking corner. And there's a few moments in the game where, like, I would spawn in with the sniper rifle, jump on top of the tires, aim real quick down sights, and there's, the dude was, 
like barely sticking his head out, and I was just boom, headshot, and he was fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he was fucking pissed. I, like, I would have been pissed if I was him. But the reason I learned how to do that was because it happened to me. So see, like now he knew. I gotta jump on top of the tires now and shoot back, you know. So like, that's how you learn, I guess. <laughs> Different shit. And we were just playing like that, where uh, me and the other, me and the other dudes were playing. Um, but yeah, it's Call of Duty, man. There's nothing more I can say about it. It's literally, it's just Call of Duty. It feels good. I look forward to buying it this year. Um, and you can see the support for crossplay right there integrated into the game. There's a because when you pull up the social tab, it showed PlayStation Network. Like it showed like select your friends from the PlayStation Network. Or it showed select friends from the Activision network. So I'm assuming to crossplay with PC and to crossplay with Xbox, you're all going to have to go on to Activision and friend each other with the Activision, like inside Activision. You know what I mean? Because you have a yeah. user, you all everyone has a user profile. With if you ever play Call of Duty or anything from Activision, you have an Activision account. So I'm assuming you're going to have to send friend requests to everybody that you know on Activision to be able to crossplay with them. So it's probably the like your Battle.net account or something. But I know Call of Duty always had its own website yeah, yeah. and Look, app. I'm pretty everything. sure it's the Call of Duty Activision account because this is on there. Invite your Activision friends or your Activision Activision social account or something. That's what it said. So I'm assuming like that's how you're going to be able to crossplay with people on the Xbox and people on the PC. One thing about the PC people, if you are playing on PC or planning to buy this game on the PC, know for a fact that if you are playing with mouse and keyboard... Your friends on consoles will not be able to invite you to their game. You will definitely be, uh, you're going to be banned from playing on against console. Once your, once your PC detects a controller input, mm. it'll switch from putting you against PC people to putting you against like Xbox and PS4 players. Like your lobbies will okay. just automatically change to console gamers. Um, so that's pretty interesting how they're going to do that. Um, hmm. So there's that. And that it's is gonna, interesting. And it's also going to lock your frame rate to 60 frames a second. And it's going to fucking switch you to aim That's assist. That's fair. Aim assist and like you're, you're, you're pretty much locked to console settings. You know what I mean? Like it'll switch yeah. you to console settings. Which isn't a bad thing. I mean, 60 frames a second is still all right. And it's what everyone on console is playing at. So it's only fair. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, because think about it. At any time, you can go PC Master Race and then just go mouse and keyboard again and unlimited frames yeah. so you, you have that option that's cool uh, and that, like to me i'm probably gonna be picking the game up on my on my pc um that way i could just play with anyone so if people want to play with me i guess we're gonna have to add each other in activision guys another launcher yeah good old battle net <laughs> that galaxy launcher is starting to look better and better every day <laughs> another, another launcher guys Woo! another friend Send me your friend code for Activision. Woo! <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that's that's Call of Duty for you guys. They have all the same guns that they've had in there before. All the same assault rifles and all that shit. It's all there, dude. It's all there. There was no from kill streaks. Yeah, no kill streaks. Yeah, from what you were, we were shown, yeah, or yeah. able to play. Yeah, that's that's really it. Um, I had fun playing it though. I'll tell you that it was pretty fun. Uh, could have been a little bit better though if it was Team Deathmatch. And they did say they can have up to 100 players in a lobby. Which I'm <laughs> assuming is like a... 50v50? <laughs> they, they what? They, they've that. proven that with Battle Royale, yeah. but I don't know what they mean by that. They, I'm assuming they said they can have like a huge ground war type game mode where mm. 50 versus 50 maybe. Which at that point would be... I think that would be fucking cool as shit. You know what I mean? Instead of having like a Battle Royale mm -hmm. mode, have like a 50 versus 50 mode in Call of Duty where, yeah, 50 motherfuckers on one side calling in airstrikes and shit against 50 people on the other side. Yeah. It would be pretty fucking epic, I think. That would be fun. And have like drivable vehicles, like a fucking tank in the middle of the map or something. You know what I mean? Something yeah. like that. It would be kind of cool, I think. Anyways. Yeah, there's that. And I, that's it, guys. So I played this week. Oh, wait, no, I'm lying. I'm lying. I actually played a little bit of Days Gone today. I actually restarted it for oh, the yeah? first time. Yeah. Did you finish it the first time? No. <laughs> did you have uh, Did you have any magic boulders that appear out of nowhere and make you crash this time? No, this Riding time it was actually, cycle? it actually seems a little bit better. Like, it seems more stable. They've actually recently patched it, like, yesterday. So they patched it yesterday for, like, the hundredth time now. Uh, more stability patches and more like other stuff. 
I just can't help but notice that the game runs at 30 frames a second. I, I can't. Whoa. Can't help but What are these words? That. Well, yeah, like the game just runs at 30 frames a second. I cannot help it but notice it, dude. Uh, playing on playing on my TV, it feels good. I mean, it, the game looks beautiful, man. It, it looks incredible. It looks fucking beautiful. But, like, playing this and it just, every, it just no, I just noticed it right away. Like, as we're you, driving, you're driving the motorcycle and you're driving and you just notice the frame rates at 30 frames. Like, I don't know yeah, how the dude, fuck I noticed it. It hurts. It actually hurts my eyes when I when I drop down that low. Like when I've had a couple games where I played it, yeah. it was literally just hard to watch. Like I would like rub my eyes to make sure they were like <laughs> correct. You know, that's like, what I feel like I today, man. Right? Like yeah, like playing it today. Like like you know the first cutscenes, you're running the motorcycle with your friend or whatever, and like there's this chase sequence where like right in the beginning of the game, you have to chase this dude on your bike, and the and the game is telling you like oh press X to boost and do all this shit. So I'm doing that. And I guess I'm boosting, I'm like, this, this feels like the motorcycle is moving really slow, but it could be just the, the speed of the motorcycle or whatever. Maybe that's the way they wanted it, so you don't crash everywhere. And then, like, I just noticed that every so often, the the, the screen just looked funny funny to me, you know, and it looked, it looked too slow. It looked like mm-hmm. something's wrong here. <laughs> this is not like you right. Can, you can kind of, like, see a slideshow. Yeah. Kind of like, <laughs> like, the game is, like, in the background is doing, like, a slideshow, yeah. and you can kind of see it. I, yeah. It was fucking bizarre. I never thought I would be able to notice it until, like, I guess I've been playing, like, PC games for a while now, and I haven't really gotten into a console game that's 30 frames a second in a bit. Because all the VR games that people are like, well, what about your VR games? Well, VR games all run at, like, 90 frames a second, dude. They have to run that high to be able to, like, not get you sick. And it's just kind of weird, like, seeing the big changes from those types of games to this. And I'm like, fuck, this sucks. Because even Call of Duty on the PS4 runs at 60 frames a second. So, yeah, it was really bizarre switching from all those games to switching to this Days Gone. And I'm like, dude, like, I just noticed it right away. It was not a big problem, though. I guess I'll get used to it. The more that I play the game, it will just, my eyes hopefully will adjust to the game and let me just enjoy it. Um, Mm -hmm. Because I am really interested in in the story. Like, the first time around, I, I realized that I wasn't really paying attention to the the cutscenes, the characters, what they were saying, the things that were going on. This time, I feel like I'm a little bit more involved and invested into the story. I hopefully, can play it and beat it because I mean, I did pay sixty bucks for the game, and I should probably at least beat it once, even if it's on easy mode or whatever. You know what I mean? I should definitely probably at least beat it once. I shouldn't just pay sixty bucks for a game and never beat it. Um, I bet it looks incredible on that new TV as well, right? Oh, it does. It looks way better than it did on my old mm-hmm. TV. I bet. <laughs> that for sure. Like, my old TV, like, I noticed it looked good. But this TV, like, I had it go in there and I fucked with the settings on the TV a little bit. And it looks it looks really fucking good. I was like, whew, man, this thing is nice looking. Like I said, Colors it's, popping. it's still only 30 frames a second. And, but it is what it well, is. The, the yeah. good news is, you know, for next gen, that, you know, they're looking to push everything towards 60 at least. Yeah. So. 4K, 60. The console players can can look forward to at least having that constant 60. Yeah, so, so like, yeah, I'm look, I look forward to that. And so, yeah, I look forward to playing Days Gone and actually going through the story. And, and man, like, I don't know what they did to the game, but this time, I don't know if it's because the TV looks better or something, but, like, dude, like, I ran into the little the little kid zombies. They're called, uh, what the fuck are they called? They're called newts in the game. They call them newts. And uh, so I was climbing, and I climbed onto this rooftop. Everyone knows what I'm talking about, because this is the beginning of the game, and you have to do this. You climb on top of this rooftop to get into the mechanic shop to get the fuel pump for your bike that just broke down, down the road. You're on top of the rooftop, and you see the little newts. And, like, when you first see them, these little fuckers, they will avoid you. They do not fight you one-on-one, because they're little kids. They're like little babies, like little baby zombies, and they're, like, crawling around, like, yeah, yeah. And they fucking, they see you, and if they see you, they run away from you. They're like, they're like, remind me of like the wretches from like Gears of War. Have you ever played Gears of War? You, see, you remember the yeah. wretches? Exactly what they look like, kind of, but they're wearing clothes because they're little kids. And they're like, they look like the little wretches. They like crawl on their fucking four, like, you know, hands and feet. They crawl on the ground. They jump around and shit. And they're like, yeah, yeah, they fucking ran on top of this roof. And I saw one, and he was climbing up to the rooftop, and I'm like, oh, fuck, I have to go up there. Like, I guess I'll have to fucking see what he's doing up there. And I climbed up there, and he like, ran into this hole and then he came back out with like some of his friends and i'm like oh what's up motherfuckers and i was like should i shoot at these guys but i was like if i shoot them i want to alert the bigger zombies that are down there so i'm just gonna hit these guys with the baseball bat so i pulled out my baseball bat dude and like it sounded so gnarly man because i'm wearing these headphones like these other headphones that i have over here it's just like 
Duke, like you just hear the fucking noise of the baseball bat hitting the little fucking zombie in the head, and the little fucker Fashion flies back. Zombies. Yeah, the little fucker flew back on the ground, and like, and like the dude just grabs the baseball bat and cracks him on top of the head, like straight killing the dude. I'm like, God, I was like, that is fucking brutal, dude. Like I legit <laughs> took out like three or four of them that way, and I was like, I legit had to like stop for a second, and I was like, whoa. I was like, that is a little fucking hardcore, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. just straight, like, bashing these little kids, zombies, with, like, fucking a baseball bat. Just, like, no remorse. Just, like, fucking just hitting them, like, as fucking hard as you can with a baseball bat, dude. And you just hear, like, the dunk, <laughs> the fucking noise the baseball bat makes when it hits them in the head. And you hear their whole fucking skull crushing and shit. It's, like, uh. it's gnarly, man. The game is dark. The game is dark as fuck. And the guy ran into this room where, like, the zombie, like... I was walking down the hallway and this zombie kicks this door open and he attacks me, right? And like, I pulled out my knife and I'm fucking stabbing him in the neck and the gut and like, oh, he's like, just, 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 like fucking prison shanking this fucking zombie, dude, and they kill him. And I go into the room he jumped out of and the room is covered with blood. Like, the room is just like fucking blood on the walls, everywhere, on the ceiling, on the floor. And like, what I noticed in the room was he was like wearing like like a like a man's clothing like he had like a flannel t-shirt on like flannel shirt and like jeans and shit but i look over to the corner and i see like this like this lady looking zombie like a lady like a dead body there looked like a lady and she was like holding something like 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 had her arms wrapped around something and i noticed like a smaller body and i was like what the fuck and i looked around the room i see the blood on the walls and I was like, holy shit, this family was in here trying to hide from the zombies. Somehow the dad got sick uh. and killed the mom and the daughter. Because it was like like a little like a little kid's like sleeping bag with like paintings on the wall with like crayons and shit. I was like, this is dark. <laughs> dark as fuck. And I was like, holy man, like this is fucking crazy. So like it's kind of crazy how like I'm noticing all these little things this time around playing the game where I wouldn't. I never noticed the first time around. You know what I mean? But like, the game is really dark, dude. But it's so cool too. At the same time, it's cool as fuck. Cool. So I look forward to like being a badass biker zombie killer thing. Yeah, we'll, we'll look. We'll see how it goes for me. Um, but yeah, Gunny, are you ever interested in picking that game up? Exclusive PS4. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm only. I'm looking at Spider Man next. So. Spider Man. So that's gonna be my my next game before I pick up Days Gone. Yeah, I would, yeah, Spider Man is really fucking good. I looked <laughs> I at the store today like, and I was like, okay, it's fifty nine. I wonder, you know, even if I go to like GameStop tomorrow or whatever, just kind of cruising through the mall, like eh, if it's if it's twenty nine, will I pick it up? So it's always on the, it's always yeah. going to be on my list of decks to play. Dude, I got that game for like how much did I pay for that thing? I got it was on the Christmas sale last year, I think. It had to be the Christmas sale. I think I ended up. I think I no, it was this year that I bought that game. I bought it in some kind of fucking sale they had going on, where I ended up getting it for like twenty four bucks with all the DLC, like the, yeah, season, and I saw the season pass and the game for like twenty four bucks. And they do their flash sales like even digitally for like seventeen ninety nine, yeah. or get the like the deluxe for twenty one or nineteen. Yeah, PlayStation is really good about that, but you gotta like the problem with PlayStation is they don't advertise their shit like Xbox does. You know, on the Xbox you turn it on. There's usually always ads right there. Right, so like, like on the front We have a screen, fucking yeah. sale going on. Extreme sale. Go, go, go. Spend all your money on us. And like, PlayStation never tells you. <laughs> it's like you have to go into the store. You have to launch the store to then realize like, oh, fuck, they have a sale going on right now. Like, I wish I would have known this like three days ago. Yeah, but they do do a pretty good job once you actually click on the store and then it, like it's in big, big, squares you know of actually how much it is so <laughs> yeah. oh yeah but oh, i'm yeah. holding off like i said like like ah, i can buy it now but then will i play it should i play it you know like yeah well what Just, are you playing right now on the ps4 uh god of war currently i would say finish so, god of war first and then buy spider-man yeah how far are you in god of war gunny Let's talk I've about, made, talk so about far god i've made war. it i've made it to the tower to the top of the mountain oh not the tower but, you met Mimir. Yeah, so you met Mimir. Yeah, so don't you meet him? Don't you meet him actually earlier when you're on the bridge? Like it's the same dude because he gives you that that item that lets you uh you know teleport back to him. You know, to fix no, up. Oh, or is that his brother? That, no, that's you're talking about the elf that has a store, right? 
Yeah, and he says, oh, like, you met my brother, but I can actually, you know, upgrade your Those hacks. are different guys. Those are different. That's, um, that's Sindril, or Sid, what's his name, Sindril, or Sildril, and his brother. No, I'm talking yeah. about Mamir. Mamir's a totally different dude. Okay. You'll know who Mamir is when you meet him. Mimir yeah, because I already threw my axe in the water, and then, you know, like, everything, the water kind of lowered down, and, yeah, and you know. Oh, did you meet the big snake? Yeah, the I big, thought I was going to have to fight it or something. Yeah, I thought that same thing, too. I was like, oh, no, no, I'm going to die. I'm this gonna fucking die. thing We're is all gonna big. Try you, you, do fight a, you do fight a giant, though, in the game. Like, you do fight, like, a legitimate, like, like giant, giant. Like, this thing is, like, a hundred thousand times your size, and you're, like, the size of his thumb, and you're fighting this thing, like... You, you legit do fight a giant giant later in the game. That's like way later in the game. You probably forget that I even told you this. <laughs> but it's legit. Like you do fight some crazy shit in the game, Gunny. I don't think you ever fight the snake though. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, because what? I would assume you're like seven feet, right? And the, some of the giants that I fought are, the like, enemies are like maybe 10 feet. So no, this, thing, this fucking giant is like 300 feet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good luck with that, Gunny. Well, Everything will be upgraded by then. Hopefully. So. Um, yeah, you'll mostly have most of your upgrades by then. You're still, like, at the end of the game, you still end up getting, like, some fucking upgrades, like, near the fucking end of the game, dude. Like, it's really weird. I actually did start a new game plus on that, Gunny. On that Card of War. Yeah. It's I kind of funny, it's- though, because, right, because I started a new game plus, but, like, it's showing my Kratos with, like, all his crazy-looking armor. <laughs> so, like... <laughs> The game starts off, and my Kratos has, like, this fucking golden armor on <laughs> with fucking, like, all, like, shiny with, like, fucking, like, his axe has, like, a bunch of jewels and shit in it. Like, it's all upgraded. I'm like, this looks kind of fucking weird. You know, like, it doesn't make sense with, like, the story, right? Like, yeah. Like, like my dude's supposed to be, like, this, like, this guy who's, like, hiding from the gods, but yet you look like a god. Like, you have, like, fucking jewel-encrusted fucking armor on with, like crazy looking axe golden axe with like fucking jewels in it and like your little kid is wearing like armor too like i'm like this doesn't look like impactful as it did the first time around with like seeing kratos with like no shirt on and shit you know what i mean like yeah it should have done like a uh, like there's a couple games out there that say hide you know hide cosmetic armors or whatever yeah you should have done that during the gameplay it, it looks funny as fuck seeing the dude wearing like crazy looking armor but isn't that so cool when you have your axe it it actually shows the sockets with the jewels in it. Like, yeah. oh, that's so cool. Like, those, those are the ones I put in there. The yeah. HDR, yeah, you see the HDR kick in and you see them shining the light and shit when the light hits them. It looks fucking cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. It is cool. I love the HDR in it. That's a good game. So, God of War, Gunny. Is it, is it living up to the hype that we've built up for? Uh, it? Oh, absolutely. I thought it was a great moment, too, when, uh, let alone like the gameplay stuff, but. I forgot what moment was Atreus was uh he was looking at something, right? And it was like a moment where I think he was thinking about his mother. Mm. And um and then it was like you wanted to like actually put your arm like on Atreus's shoulder to kind of like comfort him in a way, but then he hesitates and I thought, mm, interesting, you know, like it was like just cool moments like that. Yeah, Kratos and, is kind of a shitty dad. Yeah, yeah, he's like, oh, fuck, I got pride. You know, fuck it. Oh, I don't want to show any kind of love, right? Fuck showing love to my children. They don't need love. <laughs> gotta be hardcore. I gotta show them who the man is. And then, show them how to kill things. Fuck yeah, that'll teach them. <laughs> you know, and and just things like where you go in and it's got those RG, RGP, RPG elements, right? Where, hey, you know, all these different upgrades that they're simple, but they're meaningful. Right, of what you can upgrade, um, like everything, you know, from your armor to your weapons to Atreus's armor, uh, his weapons. So, st- just stuff like that, you know, it's like yeah. really cool. Like, okay, I need more XP to unlock this next item that I really want, or this next move that I mm-hmm. that I want to execute the next time. So, that's that really, like, right there is like, yeah, this game's definitely worth it. Yeah, Absolutely. Definitely, definitely. I like just holding down the RB button now I have that unlocked. And so, like, he'll, like, actually swing his axe, like, three times. And then he'll, it'll actually, like, then he'll throw it out to the enemy. And, like, immediately just comes back. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Great. Great combat. 
<laughs> yeah, all this God of War talk. Yeah, <laughs> males are falling asleep over here. Like, oh, fuck, guys. <laughs> anyways, anyways, what's next, Kenny? Oh, next one on the list. Um, but I did want to go back to the the Call of Duty beta real quick. Mm-hmm. But I, I I gotta say, like doing with the uh, PS4 controller, it did feel really good. I, the first thing I did was go into the settings and up the sensitivity on that. Yeah. And I was like, wow, actually, I'm actually getting a lot of kills this way. I set it up to like max, like not max, but like super high. I think it's like level seven. I think I went to four. So I was like, yeah, I was like, wow, like I'm actually able to. It starts off at like fucking two. Like what kind of sensitivity sets that? Set I think I would two? have to be like negative. I'm so bad with the controller. <laughs> this man moving super slow trying to aim. <laughs> uh, don't move, enemy. I'm trying to aim at your head. Don't move. I'll shoot you in a second. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to play more tomorrow nice. and just... Uh, yeah, but, I mean, do I plan on picking up Call of Duty? Uh, I don't know. Like, we'll have to see from the campaign and online how it goes. Like, if that's something I want to get back into. It's I been really years. am looking forward to the campaign as well, dude. I'm looking forward to the whole... The whole game actually looks really good to me at this point in time. Like, I was actually watching the trailer for the campaign in the PlayStation Store the other day. And it seems like the trailer is taking a lot of stuff, like, that's happened in real life. Like, they're, it looks like they're getting rid of the whole, like, original Modern Warfare story. And they're, like, adding, like, a lot of new shit, like, based on, like, real events. So, like, it seems like there's a, there's a, a mission in the game where you're raiding a compound similar to, like, the Navy SEALs raiding, like, Osama Bin Laden's compound. It seems like there's a mission in the game where you fucking do that yourself. You know what I mean? There yeah. also seems to be a mission in the game where, like, Benghazi, you remember that happening? Where, like, the embassy got overran and there was, like, four or, like, or, like a couple, like, Navy SEALs went down there and, like, defended the whole fucking embassy against, like, a thousand people or something. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's a mission. Like, it seems like there's a mission in the game where, like, they're showing, like... It was, it was really interesting because I kind of caught it where, like, they're showing, like, an embassy being surrounded by a bunch of protesters... And then they're showing, like, a Marine dragging another Marine as he's shooting at these people. As like They're like, oh, fuck, we got to get out of here. They're, like, breaking down the gates. And they're, like, running back. But it seems like there's a lot of, like, real events being tied into the campaign this time around. Like, based on, like, real shit that's happened in real life, I guess. You know what I mean? It seems like yeah. they're getting rid of that old, like, story. Whatever story they had back in Modern Warfare, which I don't know. Which is weird, though, because this time around, they do bring back Captain Price, which he was really old in the beginning of Modern Warfare. So I'm wondering how they're going to do that. He's going to be super old now. Maybe his son? I don't know. Yeah, I'm 60 years old now, and I'm still out here <laughs> fighting wars. <laughs> is, is what? 60 years old, super old, is that what's considered super old? What, what game was it? with? Uh, super old. <laughs> I don't Gunny's know if it was Modern there. Warfare. <laughs> was it one or two where you had to stop the nuke from going off? Right, well, you're, you're kind listen, of going down that hallway. In Modern Warfare Two, no, 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 no. You're talking about Modern Warfare Two where you're going down that hallway, Gunny, and yeah. you're you're defending the nuke. You're defending it. You're not trying to stop it. You're letting it go off. Okay, I thought and you had Captain to get to the Price. Control room. Yeah, no, no, Captain Price. Okay, first they get to the control room of the submarine. They hijack the submarine. You get to the control room, and then Captain Price sets the coordinates to the United States. And he's the reason why, like, if you remember the story of Modern Warfare 2, how the Russians invade the U.S. because the U.S. power grid goes down. Because of Captain Price. Captain Price was the one that launched a nuke that went over the United States that blew up above the United States, which took out the fucking power grid, which let the Russians invade. Yeah, it it EMP, EMP the U.S., which the Russians invaded. And, like... What the fuck, Captain Price? And they get, like, it never the goes terrorists. back. It never goes back to why Captain Price did that. Why, I know. why does he EMP the United States? I have no idea. Like The game never goes back to that. It's just like, you have this one mission where you're defending this nuke, and you're defending this hallway because the nuke needs to shoot off. And the nuke goes off, and then that's when, that's when you cut back to, you remember you cut back to that forest? Where you're like you're with that one dude ghost and you're shooting, you're defending, you're like this forest line, and then the helicopter comes down and Commander Shepard, the U.S. general, gets off the helicopter and he shoots you when you give him the yes. hard drive. Yeah, I thought yeah. I lost the game at that point. I was like, what happened? Yeah, yeah. So he I shoots died. you. You give him the hard drive with like the codes of like the weapons of mass destruction. You give him the hard drive. He shoots you, and it's like, 
Okay, why did I just get betrayed by the United States? And why did Captain Price shoot a missile at the United States? What's going on here? And, like, the story never fucking really ties up. Or, like, what the fuck? Why Captain Price ever did that? Try to go on Reddit and figure out why Captain Price did that, Gunny. You cannot find anywhere why anybody yeah. knows why he did that. Why did he shoot I a heard, nuke? I heard Game Informer talking about it, the same thing this week. Why? Why did he shoot yeah, a nuke? Yeah, they don't know either, so that's a good question. Like, He's they're a fucking terrorist. That's what he is. Yeah. Everyone thinks Captain Price is a hero. He's, rogue. He's a crazy He's a bastard. Boy. He's a British spy shooting nukes at the US. <laughs> Probably Saudi born, you know. Yeah, yeah. You crazy fucker. He has a beard and shit. He smokes Planted. a lot. You know. He's a terrorist. Mm. <laughs> it's fucking weird. It's a weird story, right? I don't get that whole fucking thing. That and I didn't think about that until the other day. I was like thinking like, oh this shit that's happened in Call of Duty. And I was like Wait a minute, why did Captain Price ever do that? Like, it makes no sense. It's not like you're trying to, you're not trying to stop the nuke, you're letting it go off. It's fucking weird. Yeah, and the gameplay is just like, right, like you're in that section, and then before you know it, like you're in the boat, right? And, yeah. you know, shooting enemies from the boat, like, what the hell is going on? Like, I'm just everywhere in this game, so. Really yeah, weird. I think uh, Modern Warfare 2 was the best one. But I hope that this new one, like I said, they kind of just reset the story and, like, Make a whole new story. Like, oh, like, oh, that other stuff was just a dream. Captain Price was really asleep on an airplane on his way to raid. <laughs> yeah. He was on the way to raid Osama Bin Laden's compound. And this is the real story now. This is him waking up and experiencing real life. Dun dun. Yeah. <laughs> that was all a dream, guys. It was all a dream sequence before. Yeah. They could yeah, you got to figure it out. I'm glad they're keeping it hush hush until <laughs> the next. I look forward we'll to get it. Closer. I look forward to seeing what they do with the story and what they do with the multiplayer because it looks really cool, man. Like the game looks good too. It looks really good. The graphics look good. The engine is pretty good from what I've seen. Yeah. Runs at 60 frames. Hell yeah, I like that. Cross play with everything. Everything's cross play. No Stadia support yet. Stadia hasn't mm-hmm. come out and said that the game's coming out for Stadia, which is like. How the fuck are you not having Call of Duty come out for your platform that's Play Anywhere? Like, I would be fucking paying Activision millions of dollars to be like, yo, guys, put your Call of Duty shit on our fucking thing. Put it on there now. We'll pay you anything to let it work. Cause if I'm you, sure I'm sure they're working on... I just you can't know, believe like, it. They're in that... In the office going, come on, man. Just, just give us COD, you know? Yeah, just give us Call of Duty. Just like... We'll give you a check, a blank check. Give us Call of Duty right now. <laughs> we'll put it because think about it. If you can get people to buy Stadia and like to play Call of Duty anywhere, and, and they actually integrate like the crossplay of Xbox, PC, PS4 with Stadia as well, like Stadia can crossplay with all those two. Yeah, that would make Stadia like like if people would buy Stadia just for Call of Duty. I think. I don't know, man. Yeah, it's just I, I agree. I think that would be a, a smart move on their end. Yeah, and I also wonder, like, okay, so we do have crossplay coming to the to the to the Call of Duty game, right? But say if I buy this, let's say I buy it on the PC, but then I buy it on the PS4 as well, because I like I see it on sale one day for forty bucks on the PS4, and I buy it on there. Will I be able to like? Will my stats say if I go on my PlayStation and play one day, and then go on my PC and play there? Do my stats carry over? Or do I have to start a new character, like a new level with each one? Or is it like Destiny where just you play anywhere and your stats just carry? I hope it's from like, you know, like you said, if you create an Activision account, yeah, it's just going to load that account. So it's going to put yeah. all those characters in that account and it's going to look at that account, whatever platform you're playing on, and hopefully load that character into that system. I got a perfect business plan, guys. We're going to quit our jobs. We're going to play Call of Duty all day. going to level mm-hmm. up. Max Prestige, all the characters. Max Prestige, everything. And sell Call of Duty accounts. Hmm. We can make some money off that. <laughs> sell you a Call of Duty account. That's a good idea. $20. I'm going to sell Des- Johnny Nipron. There you go, right there. Extra cash. Nipron, start selling Destiny, Destiny accounts. Destiny 2 accounts. <laughs> we, this account already did all the raids in Destiny. You don't need any more raids. 
Yeah, you can get all the not play. You can get like a special jacket or a sweatshirt yeah, or something like that. So, so he can like earn it for that account, and then he can get the bonus Just sweatshirt. Sell it. You can walk around with that, you know, yeah. that special sweatshirt swag too. You can yeah. be like, look at me, I beat all the raids. Yeah, <laughs> he didn't didn't sell the it. yeah, just <laughs> sell it counts. <laughs> Oh, the the account selling people are going to be super happy. They're doing all this crossplay shit because they're going to be making money. Someone's like going to buy that shit. Wow, wow yeah, someone's going to buy those because you know there's going to be people. Buy a wow account. You're going to see yeah. the shit on eBay where it says like <laughs> Call of Duty eBay. Activision account fifty dollars, everything unlocked or whatever. Someone will buy it. Someone will buy it. <laughs> Anyways, they what's will. next, Gunny? Uh, let's see what's next on the list. I did play a little bit of Rad. Give eight seven seven seven. Pick this up. What's Rad? Only played, uh, it's a top down isometrical, like a like a Diablo like game. Today. So you kind of start off with like where you have basically a baseball bat, okay. and you can actually get something like a the equivalent to like a gun or something where it shoots off like a or like a flamethrower. But um, that's the thing I'm trying to figure out, like, in this game. Not actually going in with any prior knowledge to watching any videos on it. Because they have these, uh, like, you can go down into these extra, uh, I wouldn't call them caves, but not like a portal. But you'll go down and uh, face these enemies where I just get I just get killed, like, instantly, you know? Like, if I'm just going there in there with a bat, so... Um, yeah, so I need to actually do some research on this game before I play any more of it. But other than that, it's very colorful. Looks good. Um, and the other thing I noticed, too, is like when I start off with a character, I think it just says like regular regular rules or something. So it's really it's just A to jump and X to swing your weapon, you know? And then I think you can use like your right stick and right trigger for shoot. Uh, so, so when you do pick up like a ranged weapon, um, so I assume like you can actually go in and actually choose like different modes for uh, like maybe a harder difficulty. So I'll talk more about that next week. So since I didn't play that too much of it, um, the other one was just just Cause Four. I played a lot of that last week. I don't know what it was. I just wanted to get in and blow more shit up. Just playing that on the Xbox. Just that mindless fun. Sometimes it's nice to get in there and just not have an objective, just to go out and just blow stuff up, like he said. Yeah, it was one. it was more about like I mean, my objective is just to clear out the whole map, and then there's there's like the one mission that's kind of left in the middle. And my son, you know, since you know he just goes to school, and doesn't have any other life. Like, oh yeah, I beat that months ago, you know. <laughs> but I keep asking him like, well, why can't I unlock the middle of the map? He goes, yeah, because it. You know, that's that's like the end of the game right there. That's why. So you can't. It shows that you can go there, but yeah, you have to do other things first, like unlock other parts of the map, and um, yeah. So that's what I'm continuing to do, and I think I just have like two more areas left, which take anywhere from like could take you ten minutes or it could take you an hour to uh, basically you know take over a base, uh, depending on what they want you to do. So, yeah, just get in there, grab a tank, uh, you know, blow up everybody with a tank or a helicopter. It's, you know, just like all the other Call of Duty or uh, Just Cause games. Just mass explosions and grappling hook is fun. So I was really excited to play that game. I never I never picked it up and I seen it went out on the Game Pass on the Xbox. And uh I played like the intro for it, and then I kind of stopped and never got back to it. I was so bad with the controller. It's funny how like, I just feel like I can't play a shooter with the controller because <laughs> I, I just miss like, everything. It's so I funny. S- I saw that you. I think you have just cost two on your Mayo Pass. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I saw that. I, that is like probably one of my most favorite games ever. That's definitely in my top. Oh uh, gosh, I want to say it's in my top five, maybe. Definitely in the top ten. Like nice. that one's amazing. Yeah, and we played that one a lot. Just cause three, it it didn't it kind of missed the mark, uh, especially like in graphics and stuff. And you know, four again, that doesn't look anywhere near amazing. Um, but still, it's just you know utter mayhem and chaos. And uh, you you playing that on the Xbox, right? Yeah, 
I wonder. I wonder if the PC version looks much different. It, because it actually looks a little bit better because my yeah. son plays it on PC. I'm like, why does your game look better than mine on Xbox? And it, and it could be the fact that, you know, I have this OLED TV, and you know the colors. I just don't like the color palette of it. So mm-hmm. just kind of like well, weird pinks and reds and yeah. Like with a game like that too, a big open world game. Like the PC will load more textures in, so you'll get more vegetation, you'll get more trees and stuff like that, and you'll get, you know, the buildings may have like different kind of brick, or or maybe instead of a window, it's going to have something different on the PC version. If you ever look at side by side shots in games, you, that's where you really notice the texture difference, too. Like, it's not a deal breaker, you know. Like if you're playing a console, you're not going to notice it at all. Like the game looks completely fine, but then it'll have a completely different look on the PC. You'd be like, oh, this PC version. It, you know, this building here on the console has, like, it's broken down and it has, like, three walls. Yeah. And the PC version will have, like, all four walls, but it'll all be, like, torn apart and bricks will be falling off or something like that, you know? Like, you yeah. can notice, I notice a lot of that in, like, uh, I've seen a video of a side-by-side of uh, Fallout 4. You know, you can see it, and then just that open-worldness, you, you can notice it. I just wondered if it would look better on the PC, you know, with maybe more trees loaded in. Because I've heard complaints about the graphics of it and what I've seen, I thought it looked pretty decent. I didn't think it looked that bad at all. Even on the PlayStation, I didn't, or the PlayStation, the Xbox, I didn't think it looked bad at all. Yeah, I don't, you know, so I should, I should, I just to me, the graphics just don't look up to par, especially on, yeah, on Xbox. I don't know, just something about it I just don't like. So, and not that I'm going to go back and buy it on PC and try it on there. So I think I'm just going to finish it. You know, I paid my 60 bucks. So, uh, I'm not going to buy any kind of, you know, like premium packs or like Game of the Year editions or anything. just want to finish it and game be done with it. Year. You know, speaking of Game of the Year, guys, this week, uh, actually, was it this week? Yeah, I went to go watch the movie, uh, what's the movie, the one with the little boys that are like going to sixth grade and they talk a lot of shit. Oh, yeah, it looks funny as hell. My kid wants to see that. All right, so listen, we're, we're starting the movie, right? We're like watching, you know how they do like all the intros for like... I don't know what they are, production companies or whatever, you know, like the, whatever, like fucking, like DreamWorks and all that bullshit. <laughs> well, this one had like Good Boys Entertainment or whatever, that was one of the fucking companies. One of the logos that popped up. But one of the logos that I noticed and I couldn't help but laugh at it was the fucking Tencent logo. <laughs> Tencent. <laughs> popped up. Yeah, it popped up and it was like, like a big T and like, like a, like a fucking, look like an Amazon like globe around it or some weird shit looking like a big smiley face or something. But it was like Tencent Productions. I was like, or t- it was like Tencent Films. I was like, these motherfuckers are in everything, dude. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, they are. <laughs> some of the largest, some of the largest like, uh, like you said, production companies and film and all that are like Tencent, Sony, Sony believe it or not, right? They do a oh, lot yeah. of Sony stuff. Sony does a lot of movies, yeah. Yeah, a lot of movies, right? Like they do all the camera yeah. and Oh, a lot effects of, and all that. Oh, yep, yeah. all that good shit. Yeah, but yeah, man, like I was surprised to see, like, like I just couldn't help but laugh because I know how big Tencent is in the video game world. Like they own like all the big publishers. <laughs> they have like a stock in almost every single big game developer. You know what I mean? Because I would have been really surprised them, like, if, Tencent. yeah, if we would have never mentioned them, like on the show, would have been like, what the hell? Yeah, man. Fucking Tencent. Yeah, I see them all the time. Yeah, oh, everywhere. And, like, it seems like. Before, people wouldn't mention them very much, but it seems like in the last, I would say in the last two to three years, they've been mentioned a whole lot. It's like people started noticing them right away. Because if you look back, like, when the Xbox One and the PS4 launched, Tencent wasn't really big. They were big, but, like, I think the biggest publisher at the time, or the biggest game maker at the time was, I think it was Sony or Xbox. Then it went from Xbox to Sony, and then, like, there was a graph that I posted in the group one time on the Facebook that showed like the like the development of games and like how much money companies earned in the the years of making those games and like for the first like X, it shows like Xbox 360 on top then the PS3 right underneath it then like Nintendo underneath that then like a few other companies like Ubisoft EA and all these companies underneath that and then it was like this graph from like 2011 to like 2016 and like all those years, you see, like, Sony go up, and then Microsoft go down a little bit, and then EA goes up, then EA goes down in 2015. But then you see, like, this little Tencent, like, at the bottom of the fucking list, 
like in 2011 it just goes up and up and up and up and up like by the end of like 2016 on the graph that fucker's like at the top with like way more money than everyone else it's fucking crazy man fucking yeah crazy. especially I like just, in taiwan and yeah i was kind of looking them up yeah. and here and just according to wikipedia it says it's the world's largest gaming company the world's lo- most valuable technology company <laughs> The world's largest social media company, <laughs> one of the world's largest venture capital films and yep. investment corporations, and it says it also includes several social network, music, web portals, e-commerce, mobile games, internet service, payment systems, smartphones, <laughs> and multiplayer on games, online games, which are all among the world's biggest and most successful in each of their respective categories. Well, you know what they do? The, what the big, what their biggest customer is, Mayo. The Chinese government. Mm -hmm. Everything the Chinese government does in their country, all the internet, all the Mm. facial recognition, all the fingerprint scanning, all the border patrol, everything in the government that's like government regulated TV, everything goes to Tencent. Everything, dude. And like these motherfuckers are so smart. They have everything locked down in China. But not just that. They're spreading around the world and they're locking down companies around the world. Like, they own, like, fucking 40% of Fortnite, dude, of Epic Games. <laughs> yeah, and they also own, like, uh, <laughs> a bunch own, of Activision. Yeah. I think they own, like, 40 or 50% of Activision. Even. And they own a bunch of stock in PUBG. They're the only ones who make PUBG mobile. You know what I mean? They own a mm-hmm. bunch yep. of shit. And, like, these motherfuckers have a... Looking at the revenue <laughs> for this for last year, for 2018, they made $312 billion, uh, fucking... Uh, was a, oh, the People's Republic of China money, the renminbi, three hundred twelve billion mother. Well, then here it even says here that the company surpassed the market value of the U.S. five hundred billion in two thousand eighteen, <laughs> become the first Asian technology company to cross. Yeah. Wow. That's fucking crazy. Like people are like are sleeping on Tencent, man. But Tencent is a fucking threat to the gaming world. So I'm telling well, you, as soon as these motherfuckers lock everything down and they become the biggest one ever, no one has to do anything but follow their rules. You know what I mean? They're the ones that set the rules. And people, these motherfuckers are the company in China that's facial recognitioning gamers. When they turn on their fucking consoles or their PCs in China, you have to have a webcam, and you have to let that webcam scan your fucking face, and they're like, okay, we recognize you, Jesus. Uh, you only have, like, three hours to play today. Do you want to play them right now? And you have to, like, agree to that shit, and they'll shut you off after three hours. They just, like, turn your shit off, like, you're done. No and more gaming age limits, today. too. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. Like, Gunny, your, your boy won't be able to play. Yeah. You know, Grand Theft Auto anymore because they'll be like, eh, "You're not old enough." Yeah, yeah, you're too little. It, it's. I wonder. You know, like I think of things like where I wonder how often Tencent contacts like, what is his name, Natalia at Microsoft or Natalia, like the uh, head of Xbox or head of Microsoft Gaming or whatever it is. Like, like we're gonna give you seventy. Million, you know, or whatever it might be, right? Just to buy off the uh, Xbox division or contact Sony, you know? Yeah. How many times do they have to say no, you know, to Tencent? Quite a bit, I bet. But I mean, yeah. like I said, eventually, like like these motherfuckers, if they become so big, you know, like so big that you cannot, you have to force, like, they could just force their will upon you, whatever they want. They could just tell you to do it, and you have to do it. Kind of like, think of it like Disney. I like to talk shit about Disney because they own a lot of, like, the media companies in the U.S. Yeah. But they're super powerful. And just like they did recently with Sony where, like, Sony lost Spider-Man or, or like, they've broken Spider-Man from the Marvel comic universe or whatever the fuck. Yeah, because, um, yeah, they just can't agree But if on, you look at, you look at what Dis- Disney was asking for a lot, dude. So Disney already makes, they already make, Gunny, 5% of the gross profit that Sony makes on a movie, right? So but, Sony, a, but a deal's a deal. That's Sony, okay, thing. listen. Sony puts out a movie. They give Disney 5% of the profits they make off of ticket sales for that movie. Right. But on top of that, Sony doesn't get any merchandising from anything from that movie, from Spider-Man. All the t-shirts, all the toys, all the posters, everything that's related to marketing or like licensing Spider-Man to like a theme park, Sony doesn't get a deal shit out of that. Nothing. They get zero profit mm-hmm. from that. Disney makes right, 100% so- profit from those marketing branch, like those marketing deals and merchandising. 
Disney makes all the money off of that. And they, so what they did is they went to Sony and they were like, okay, we know we make all the profit off of the fucking merchandise in Sony, but we feel like we put a lot of money into the movies. How about you give us 50%, 50% up from 5%, you give us 45 more percent on your movie profits. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? What the fuck? I mean, well, I would, I would counter that and give you like, give me 50% of your, your sales of your marketing then. You know, it's just, Sony, they, like, and then every, everyone's like being pissed off at Sony because Sony rejected the offer, and everyone's like, "Oh, what the fuck?" So everyone right now is like, you see it on IGN and all these fucking places. Like everyone's yeah, yeah. mad at Sony, but people don't realize Disney's the one that came out with the offer, and they knew they were going to reject it just to get people riled up. You know what I mean? And who, yeah, who, it's. I, it's I mean, Disney's I guess I look fault. at it where, like, I saw a friend on Twitter today or yesterday. He wrote, you know, look, these are both big, large companies that only think about money you know that's yeah. it right so it's that's what it comes down to and they just need to it's just going to be this ongoing thing right it's going to be this back and forth deal even if they cut a deal tomorrow and say all right fine we'll we'll meet you at 30 percent until sony sells spider-man to them <laughs> it's just going to be a you know a battle till then of just back and forth i'm just I, I, well the thing is like the thing is and the thing is right now like They've made two movies with the Marvel comic universe, right? They made two Spider-Man movies. Well, three or four? I guess three, right? Or four, I guess. Aesthetically, if you're counting the Avengers where Spider-Man was in it, I guess it's four, right? But I thought it was the, only three. I thought it was just wasn't it the, the Far From one? Home and then the one before, and then the Homecoming. It was a Homecoming and then Far From yeah. Home. Yeah, Far From Home. And then he was four. in the Captain America uh, Civil War. Yeah, but he also was in Infinity End War, wasn't he? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was thinking yeah, about standalone about Spider-Man Infinity movies. Okay. So they had a deal with Disney for five movies that Spider-Man was going to be in this Marvel comic universe or whatever. But now, like, the reason Disney comes out with this bullshit offer of a deal, which is 50% of your profits of what you're already making a lot of profit on with 100% of the merchandising. Like, Sony, like Disney knew Sony was going to reject the offer. They knew it. They came out with an offer that was like, we're not, we know they're going to reject it, but what we're going to do is we're going to spin it around and tell all the fans of Spider-Man and all the fans of Marvel that we're going to just have to split off Spider-Man from the Marvel Universe and put him in his own over there with Sony. So get everyone riled up and everyone pissed off to get mad yep. at Sony to make Sony bend. And I, if I was Sony, I'd be like, fuck you guys. We'll make our own Spider-Man movies. Fuck you. You know what I mean? Like, we don't need you guys. Like, what the fuck is Disney thinking, man? I don't just, I, I just, you know, and I think like that's something Tencent can do to publishers. They could go to Fortnite or to Epic or to any Battle Royale maker, PUBG or anybody, and be like, we want you to do this this way. And they're like, well, no. And they're like, well, well, fuck you. We own like 40% of you. You better do it this way or we'll just make our own game and copy you and make it that way. They don't copy games in China. <laughs> yeah, they never <laughs> yeah. do that. They've never no. done that before. No. They've never copied any IP ever. <laughs> They've never done that to any U.S. company. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, I'm just saying. you got to be They're careful, all people. Right? Anyways, keep going, Danny. Uh, yeah, So, but that's all I played, really, oh, for as far as games. Last couple weeks. Mayo Machine. Mayo Machine. Play, Bob? Hey, we're, gonna, we're not going to call this Mayo. I'm going to call this the, uh, the Mayo Virtual Corner. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. Mayo's I know. What's going on with you and VR? <laughs> yeah. That's like all I played this week. Yeah. So the only thing I didn't play that was not in VR was Apex. And uh, I was able to get a couple rounds of Apex in and been, been uh, pushing that uh, battle pass just because I, I bought that when, you know, when it first yeah. came out. So I'm like, I don't want to not play it because I don't. You know, I spent ten bucks on it. I might as well <laughs> grind through and get as much gear as I can and yeah. get as many cosmetics out of it as my ten dollars will get me. You know, but so I think I'm like level uh, maybe like fifty two. I think I am on the season pass now. Hmm. But now, like two weeks of challenges have came out, and I've done like one of those challenges in the for those two weeks. So I'm starting to like fall behind on it quite a bit. But it's because it's stupid oculus thing that sits over here in the corner of my desk it keeps screaming my name i sit down at the pc and it's going play me play me play me so oh man, 400 bucks you got to play that thing yeah it, i am enjoying it um i did pick up a couple of different games i'm excited to hear and, about uh, this so the first game i picked up and 
I just want to hit on this real quick. It's called Onward, and it was on sale on Steam this week for $12, and it was normally like 20 or something like that. Um, so I was excited. I fired this game up. I bought that and a couple other ones all at once. So this is the first one I launched. And so, you know, I'm standing up playing it, and the first thing it does is like, the tutorial, you know, this is how you play the game. And like 30 minutes later, <laughs> they're like, all right, we're done. You know, you know, you can go into this game where you can just go into the shooting range. So in the tutorial, they're like, all right, this is this is your gun here, and it's attached to your chest. And you look down, and it's like stuck to your chest like Velcro. And I'm like, what yeah. the heck? You know, this gun is just kind of dangling there. And I'm like, it's like an <laughs> AR, you know? And I'm just kind of like, all right, that's kind of weird. But yeah. okay. So I grab it. And uh, I don't know if you're familiar with, like, the Oculus controllers. There is two triggers on each controller. And then there's, like, two buttons and a thumbstick on each controller. Mm. So the game's like, okay, so this is how you fire. So you basically got to take your, your, your off hand that's not holding the gun, and you got to hold it and then stabilize the gun because you can't fire just one-handed on it, which is, I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool. So you got to hold, like, you know, grab the, the end of the gun with your, your off hand and... So you can look down and aim down sights. And so I just fire away. I empty the clip. And it's like, okay, now you have to hit the A button to release the clip. And you got to pull the clip out with your off hand. And, and you drop it on the ground. And you, you have to reach down and go to your left side. And you have to hit one of the triggers. That you, Again, you have two triggers. And that's kind of important here. And this trigger here, will you'll grab a clip. So you grab that clip out. And then you got to shove it in the gun, which is... You know, okay, obviously. And then once it's in there, the gun still doesn't fire. You actually have to chamber the bolt and everything. So then you have to kind of like grab with your off hand the top of the gun and, you know, and pull back. But you have to use a different trigger button to do it. So it's like, okay, I got to switch to this trigger button. So then I got to, and I kept wanting to grab the wrong button early on. And I'm sure as I would play it more, I would get a better feel for it. But so then I'm like, just kind of messing with it. And I, so I'd run out of ammo, you know, and then just kind of do it again. They're like, okay. Well, next thing you do, you have a knife. So then you reach down to your left side. You hit the other trigger button, and you can pull out, like, a small little knife. Just kind of like you would in, in like, counter Strike or something like that. So I'm like, okay. Then they're like, now, you take your left hand, and you reach beside your head, and then you click the other trigger, and that will bring up your communication so you can talk to people, but you got to hold your hand there. So you can't have, like, the gun, like, ready and communicate. So you, like, kind of get your hand up here, and it opens your communication, and you're talking to your squad. I'm like, okay, okay. So I got, like, four different things I can do with my left hand. Then they're like, so let's go to your right hand. You know, your right hand. <laughs> can we talk can... about the game, uh, Mayo, please? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yes. like, at well, what point is... does... Does it, you know, a VR game just become too complicated? Yes, and this is this was my gripe with the game. So, like, I continue to do this tutorial, and they, they teach you about the handgun. They teach you about um, first aid. So there's an, a first aid needle on you, and you literally have to, like, stab yourself with a first aid needle and inject yourself to heal yourself. And then there's a thing where you reach over your shoulder. It's a map, and it will show your squads and how much health they have. I'll say if it's, like, they're, they're red, they're almost dead. Yellow, they're low health. Green, they're full health. And there was just a lot to it. So I'm like, I just don't know if I like this. It's just almost, crazy. and it felt, it felt really slow. And it, I mean, to me, right away, it feels like a straight up simulator. And yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's what I was really looking for. So I'm like, all right, I'm just going to kind of play around with this game a little bit in the, in the gallery. And so I went to the shooting gallery, and your movement was kind of slow. It's like there is no run. So it's just a constant slow walk. And it's a real slow walk. And I went over and I shot around. No crosshairs, you know. You got to pretty much aim down sights of the gun, and it just it just didn't feel accurate. And I didn't like the way the gun shot. Like it just felt weird. Like when I was shooting, like I I swear I was hitting the target. Like I thought I was right on the target, and it wasn't registering the hits. And I just really wasn't feeling it. So I actually returned it. And uh, very rarely do I return a game on Steam. What was the game actually well, was, about, though? Um, was it like so a it, duty game or something. Yeah, it's like a. And I don't want because I'm also going to compare this other game to it too. It's almost like CS:GO. So basically, you got two squads. It's an online shooter, and you have a squad with you, and you'll have an objective like a bomb or something like that to plant. Or oh, the other thing too is you had to go to the satellite, and you had had to put a code in at the satellite. Well, when you got to the satellite, you had to pull your little tablet out, and it gave you the code. But you had to memorize the code, and it was like a seven-digit code. 
Then you had to go to the, the, the satellite and punch in that seven-digit code. If you got it wrong, you would have to start over again. So you have to look back and forth. And, and so it was very, like, hands-on. Like, you really had to be paying attention with everything. And, again, it was just very much like a simulator. And I just I, I really didn't care for it. So I was like, you know what? I think I'm just going to return this. I, I played it for, like, an hour. And I'm like, I want there's, there's to think of something else I can enjoy. I agree with you. There's games on VR that seem too complicated. That just, it's kind of overwhelming. And and for me, one of those games to me, it's uh, No Man's Sky with the move controllers. It's very overwhelming, dude. At first, mm-hmm. and I couldn't see myself learning the controls for the, for like the the move controllers. Learning the controls with that, like in a hazardous planet where like you're dying and you have to fucking learn everything, because like. Everything is like you have to tap on your wrist. So like you have to pull up your left hand with your right hand. You have to trigger, pull up the fucking map on your right wrist with your index finger. Then you got to tap on like inventory or, or skills or different shit, like different things you need or different crafting. You would, Then the right hand pulls up the map or the radio or just it's fucking complicated, dude. That's the way this was. And it just and some of it didn't feel real fluid. Like I felt like I was grabbing in the right spot and it wasn't registering quite right, you know, and so then I'm like, okay, maybe I need to grab here. And also the game has a ton of different guns. So then each gun is unique in how it reloads and, and stuff like that too. So yeah. So I sent that back and uh, uh Steam gave me a you know, a refund back to my bank account. So if you do play a game with less than two hours or have it for less than two weeks, yeah, that's, that's they will pretty much game. refund the game. And, and I haven't put as in the game isn't very fun. Now, I will say, though, that I think the game is probably a good game if you're into this kind of game. Like, the reviews are all really good. It's just too much of a simulator for me. Like, I, I feel like almost like comparing Project Cars 2 mm. versus yeah. Forza Horizon. You know, like, one's a straight-up fun arcade racer, and the other one is a racer. You know, like, you're literally... It's like Forza Motorsport to Forza Horizon. Yeah, yeah. like those two. <laughs> yeah, like, Forza Motorsport is like a fucking, like, a simulation-type thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like to show, Tur- like, your tire yeah. pressure. You know what game I fucking hate racing in? Gra- Gran Turismo, yeah. dude. As much as people praise Gran Turismo for, like, their graphics, which the game looks... Even, like, nowadays, the game being, like, four years old or whatever, Gran Turismo Sport looks fucking incredible, man, on the PS4 Pro. But, like, that game is too much of a simulation for me to even enjoy, like, even remotely enjoy. Like, Forza Motorsport, maybe I can do, like, a race or two and kind of enjoy it. But this Gran Turismo shit is, like, no, it's 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 bad. Like, you tap your fucking mm-hmm. wheel, your wheel thread is, like, the tire thread is too low, your fucking car spins out, and... You can't, now your car, you crash into the wall for a little bit. Now your car keeps turning to the right because your wheel well is all fucked right, up. Right, the damage is on. And <laughs> you go into the corner too fast and you're trying to break and all you're doing is slide and you can't turn. Slide and hit and the then, wall. Yeah. Are you using the right springs? Yeah, using the, the right springs. Yeah. What's the suspension? <laughs> yeah. Doing that so. bullshit. What tire pressure are you using on your tires for this racetrack? Like, fuck off, dude. Sticky or not sticky? <laughs> yeah. That's like F1. What's Formula the weather 1? like today in the game to make sure your tire pressures and everything is the exact perfect thing that you need to use for this race? Like, fuck you, man. I don't want to deal with this shit. It's annoying. You talk. You talk Gran Turismo, I just have nightmares of the old endurance race where you just have to go on that big, like, I want to say it's like a Daytona race. It was yeah. just like a left turn. <laughs> and you just, I, I remember just playing that for like five hours, just going and going yeah. and going and going. And I'm thinking, I'm going to beat this thing. And and I can't remember what car it was. There was like one car you wanted to use and you would get like laps ahead of everybody. It had, it had a big wing <laughs> on the back. It was like an yeah. off-road like yeah. rally car. Yeah. And you know, I'm like, 10 15 laps ahead like you know like 100 laps in and they're like 500 more laps to go <laughs> and i'm like yeah and just like and fuck <laughs> kind of looking at uh the listener questions ahead um yeah i saw that one there That's was the a talk about, was about, of, yeah. about falling asleep yes. i literally fell asleep playing that game i would wake up and my car is sitting <laughs> against the car rail <laughs> and and I'd still be in like first place. <laughs> oh, like, shit. Man, how long was I out? Like the cars have been moving. It's just sitting there, you know. And I'm just kind of like, what? What happened? <laughs> you know? the good mayo fell asleep in the middle of a race. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. 
That's fucking funny. Yeah, I hated those games too. But like, you have to unlock the C license, the B license, the A license. Like, fuck you and your licenses, you fucking and then game. Taking the little license test, yeah. and you had to sit there and be like, do it over and over and over and over. Oh, that's just yeah. so annoying. On the PlayStation, the on, the, on the PS1, I remember, because back then I was like fucking little. I was like eight, nine years old, man. I'm trying to beat these fucking licenses. I've never driven a car in real life, let alone, you know, like. <laughs> This fucking video game is just me to get a license? What the fuck? <laughs> speaking, speaking of, I did get a kick out of, uh, on Project Cars 2, I mentioned playing this a little bit last week, um, playing it in VR, you know, it really feels like you're in the car. So I, I sat my 12-year-old daughter down, and I adjusted the seat, like, so everything was correct for her. I'm like, here, you try this out, because she enjoys racing games. She'll sit there and play my my Forza Horizon and stuff. And she was just all over the road. You know, it was really funny to watch her try to drive that compared to like a regular non VR game because she can do those pretty well. But she like just could not keep the car straight. You know, especially when you're going up on like a little bit of an incline, you can't really see the road. All you're seeing is like hood of the car and sky. You know, and she just didn't know how to handle that. So I kind of got a kick out of watching her trying to play that. And she's just like, man, this is hard. <laughs> I'm like, this, this is driving. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So Sam, dope. But uh, so being being a little bit disappointed and in, in onward, I end up picking. Uh, I want to say it's called Pavlov VR. Pavlov, yeah. And P-A-V-L-O-V? this game, yeah, yeah it's P A V L O V. Yep, in VR, and it's this is only a ten dollar game on Steam. That's true. And so it's already cheaper than onward and onward it was on sale for 13 it was like 12 and change and this game actually feels like an exact csgo ripoff and and i'm not complaining about that like but it feels like csgo like once once you got past the tutorial you're literally like terrorist and counter terrorist pretty much it, it is i was playing against bots which you know again like like csgo it has bots you can play against or yeah and yeah, this is this is CS:GO. You you start the round and you you right click the one thumbstick. I'm using the uh, the Oculus controllers again, and you right click the the analog stick and it pulls up your bi wheel and it's a circle and it says SMG heavy, you know, gear wow, upgrade. So it's legit like. And so I click and I pick SMG and I go down to like an ump. And next thing you know, the ump pops up as in my, in my hand. Then I go down to gear and it's like, do you want a vest? For a thousand, or do you want to invest in a helmet for three thousand, or do you want you know this? So I'm like, since I'm just like doing bots, it gave me like unlimited money or something, and I'm like, invest in helmet, you know. So I'm like fully geared, <laughs> and and so yeah, so it, you go through and you're walking around, and the movement did feel a little weird for me because you know I am standing while I'm playing it, and I did feel a little queasy. And at first, I didn't change the settings, so when I would turn with the right analog stick, it would do like a half turn. Like it was a preset. The snap turning. You mean like like the yes, sure, like the yes, next it was frame, a snap right? turn. That snap and instantly, turning. you're you're yeah. looking to the right. Then next time you're looking behind yeah, you. Yeah, that's how uh, all VR right games so are set like, up. Man. I'm like, I don't like this. So I want to go to a smooth turning. And so I tried the smooth turning, and I could walk around with the left analog stick, but I couldn't figure out really how to like look around corners or kind of like without actually physically doing it myself. So I'm still trying to play with the uh, the controls and the feel of things. But the map is almost like uh, one of the Counter-Strike maps. It looks, you know, it's got an A and a B for bomb sites, <laughs> literally wrote, spray painted on the wall. Like, I'm like, this is bomb site A, this is bomb site B. And I'm going, this is awfully familiar, you know. But, um, but basically, it's like a $10 virtual reality uh, CSGO. I do think it could be a lot of fun once I, I spend some more time in it and I get used to the movement because it, it does feel very floaty. So when you're walking, there isn't no like kind of bounce. Like I noticed when I played No Man's Sky, since I'm, I'm still kind of new to the VR and like walking like that, No Man's Sky had a little bit of bounce when you walk. So you kind of felt like you were taking a footstep. Where this doesn't, it feels like I'm floating. So I'm just kind of gliding across. And, and it, it kind of bothered me a little bit. And, I've been catching a cold, so I don't know if I, I was just not feeling well. And it was really late at night. And it was mm-hmm. kind of made me kind of like, well, you know, I think I'm gonna kind of stop playing for a little while because it's kind of giving me a headache. So, um, so I didn't really give it any more time in it than that because I just picked it up like two days ago. So definitely, I will give it some more time this week. And I, I know M Polo was asking about it too, and 
Um, my, my first impression, though, is there's three or four maps. I think there's three maps, and they're a lot like, like CSGO. Um, my son did have some company over today, and they were playing it, and they got into some random map. I walk home from work, and they're playing a map that looks like Minecraft. I straight up thought they were playing Minecraft VR. And they're like, no, we're playing this. And so now it shows as as being available in my map. So somehow they got in a custom online game and it literally just added it to my map. And so I YouTubed it and I found all sorts of stuff on there, like different weird maps and different events. And I seen this YouTube video where this guy was pretending to be like a teacher and they were like playing Russian roulette (laughs) roulette and stuff. And they're just doing all sorts of goofy stuff. So it looks kind of like a wild online community and it looks like it could be just a lot of fun and a lot of a lot of goofiness going on in there too yes, yes. so i'm looking forward in uh, to getting in, in some of that besides the serious aspect of the csgo side of it you know it's, it's nice to jump in and, and have it maybe be more of a cartoony graphic because these people look like fortnite people or not fortnite people but uh minecraft people they were very blocky and they look like little fortnite or i keep saying fortnite but minecraft characters you know the square heads and yeah. you know a square body and stuff you know and it was just kind of humorous but when you back to the regular game they looked like regular people you know and they did actually scare me one time i was walking around and the bots don't really make any noise and i happened to turn and one was standing like two inches from my face and i'm like ah you know because this thing has like a mask on he has these creepy looking eyes and it, it was kind of funny that it actually scared the crap out of me for a second the one time I think it's probably the first time I've ever had a little jump scare in a game like that. Like, with this guy legitimately, like, I just turned and he was standing right there, and I'm like, ah. <laughs> right. but so, another game I hit on, and we talked about um, No Man's Sky quite a bit last week. So, and I mentioned I wanted to try Subnautica, because Subnautica is a very similar kind of game to No Man's Sky, I feel. And,. On the PC, I had access to it, um, and it has the VR version. Now, is this available on the PlayStation, do you know, in VR? No, it's not. No? Okay. It, it's too bad, because this game looks so much better than No Man's Sky. I mean, it just looks crystal clear. You start the game, and have you ever played it before? I know it was yeah. on the Epic You remember, like, in the beginning when it says, like, Subnautica, and it's over top of water? Just the logo at the beginning. When you start the game, you're standing on your little escape pod, and it says Subnautica huge, and you're everywhere you look around, you're just like standing in the middle of the ocean on your escape pod. It looks really cool. But so you do the sequence at the beginning, you know, and your little your escape ship, and and when you climb out of it, and the first time you just jump in the water, it's that water is like a tropical vacation. You can it's crystal clear, and then it, it made. No Man's Sky looked really, really bad in how fuzzy the graphics were in that one. Mm. Because Subnautica, I mean, it was just gorgeous looking. And swimming around, the movement was great where I thought, you know, No Man's Sky wasn't too bad. This is ten times better in the way the way it moves, the way it controls. The menus are better. Um, you know, I thought No Man's Sky where the menus would kind of get in your face or things would kind of overlap each other a little bit. And I, I would find myself wanting to kind of like back up and be like whoa this is like right in front of my eyes you know and subnautica did a way better job of keeping the menus a little further out from your eyes so you didn't feel like something was right in your face you know and it just the presentation feels better the the audio sounds really good and just everything feels amazing about it um i'm definitely looking forward to get back in this i don't know if i've not played no man's sky anymore comparing the two like I have seen some things online where you can. There's some fixes for No Man's Sky. They say it's really bad on the PC, mm-hmm. and I didn't notice it at first because you know it's pretty much our first time playing a game like this. And then I'm starting to see all these articles now. They're like, oh yeah, it's all these hot fixes you can do to make the game look better, make it run better, and, yeah. and stuff like that. They say it's like maxing out, you know, 1080 Ti's and stuff like that because. I mean, let's, but hopefully, to No Man's Sky's credit, that they, you know, that that's a issue that will be a lot better in time yeah and i think it's you know i think they're a small company you know and i'm not can't remember if subnautica was or not like i don't remember much about subnautica's like studio or whatever but but yeah no man's sky you know i give it the grace of you know this is new you know the they've been working on this for a while and the the game is very playable so like people that are complaining about the graphics of it you know it's 
it's playable. You know, it's not like it's so bad it's not playable. Yeah, because when I when they first did that update on on No Man's Sky, which was I think they added in <clears throat> I'm trying to think if they just added like actual real people was like one of the main things. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I played it like that first day and like I was falling through the world and screen tearing and shit like that. So Yeah, and this this like I said, like when I would turn and when you would move in VR, like when you turn your head, you can almost feel frame dips. Like you would, like, I'm not sure what the frame rate is because it, it doesn't have a frame rate counter up. So I don't know what my frame rates are actually are, but it felt kind of jittery sometimes when you were turning, like the screen was kind of like bouncing as you were turning. And it didn't have that smooth feel like, like Subnautica does. Um, I just hope that they can maybe fix it in a patch or something like that. You know, that. I'm sure they'll do, you know, they, they have shown that they'll do lots of updates on right. No Man's Sky, and they're, they're pretty much dedicated to this game. And Yeah, so. I'm so glad, yeah, I'm so glad they're just focused on the one game that, that's cool. But yeah, Subnautica, if, if you have it, it on PC and, B, and VR, I would highly recommend it. Yeah, so it doesn't have that setting like Jesus talked about before. Like you said, like it, you know, when you turn your head, it not in, like the snap feature, but the one that's kind of... I forgot yeah, what he called so it. In, in, um, so in or uh, No Man's Sky has the smooth movement. Like, you can smooth turn it on. Yeah. yeah, it didn't have it on by default. It had, like, the teleport method, I think, is what it was. Like, so when you move the analog stick, what it does is you put a marker in the ground, and you move it around with your thumbstick, and when you let go of that thumbstick, when it goes back to center, it will teleport you to that spot where you had that marker. So you're just kind of like, boom, 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 you know. When you yeah. turn that off, you, you're literally using your analog stick to move, your your left analog stick. Okay. Your, you know, yeah. So then it feels a little more natural, you know. And Subnautica, actually, I don't think it has support for my controllers for the Oculus. So I was using a Xbox One controller. So everything felt really natural besides the fact I'm not actually using my hands you know, with these move controllers, like where, where No Man's Sky, you see in your hands and you're pointing at the back of your hands to get into menus. But that also can feel kind of clumsy sometimes. Like you're trying to do the menus and you're hitting the wrong spots right. to where, where, like in Subnautica, you're using the controller and everything is just instant. You know, you like you, you hit it, the back, I think it's like the back arrow button or whatever, but it will pull up the menus and everything is just really instant to where in No Man's Sky... You're, 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 it's like point at the back of your left hand and it'll pull up a menu and then it'll pull up three little bars and then you got to point at the bar that you want to access like your quick build and then you hit you know A and it'll access that where on Subnautica playing with the Xbox controller it's really literally just you know you, you hit one button you know arrow over and then hit the button again and you're completely fine so I think I enjoy both games but I think I'm definitely going to like Subnautica a lot more cool yeah I'm glad to hear that it's a good VR game, man. Like, um, hopefully this thing will come to PC or uh, PlayStation for you guys because, I mean, it, it's so smooth and, and it plays so well. Like they they nailed it. Like, I wonder if I don't know why they have it. If a PS4 can handle it. Yeah, I don't know. Like maybe it's how demanding maybe, it is. Maybe it's super dependent on like what kind of graphics card you have in your system. Because I mean, what does a PS4 Pro have as a graphics card? Um, I'm not sure. I know, like the rating isn't the rating like like two teraflop. It wasn't the Xbox four or six. The mm, X. Six, right? And then the PlayStation or the PlayStation Pro was four. Yeah. yeah it says here that, like that PS4 Pro specifically uses an FX eighty three fifty processor. So yeah. What is that now? Um. I don't know, they they have their own unique processors, so it's kind of hard to compare them to like PC. Like, you know, it's like comparing like a processor and a, and a cell phone to like a, a PC processor. It, they have like their own technology the way they do things, so it, it's kind of hard to compare the two. Um, you can look at what's the, does it say like what kind of clock rate it has and stuff, uh, and like how many cores or anything like that. No, it says here that it features 8,192 megabytes of GDDR5 memory on the card. Uh, it's operating at a frequency of 911 
Megahertz. That's important. And memory is running at 1700. Yeah, so like the, the, the frequency is really low. I don't know why that is, but I'm sure that's like a design thing on the consoles. Because I think the Xbox is the same way. They both run a really low frequency. Like you know, our, our CPUs on on PCs are like in the gigahertz range. You know, we're talking mine's overclocked to five gigahertz, and you know, you know the consoles yeah. aren't even running at one gigahertz. So I, I'm not saying that they can't. Is this something to do with their design? I don't know how they work exactly, but don't like, they? I, I may be overstepping my technical boundaries here but don't they have to lock everything in order for you know a developer to say okay here's the ceiling like this is as far as you can hit because it has to work on every single playstation 4 and the pro it has to hit the same exact mark yeah or you know you can't go above it you know yeah and that's but that's the beauty of it too is is you know kind of like an apple product when when you develop for a game for for say the playstation you know your boundaries you know exactly what you're dealing with where the PC side of things, it's an open world. Like, you know, your computer gunny is completely different from my computer, and Jesus' yeah. computer is completely different from, from, you know, ours. And there is so many graphic card companies. You know, you have AMD, NVIDIA, and then you have all these sub-companies who I, make I would hate cards. to be a, a major publisher that's only exclusive to, like, a PC. Like, think of, like, uh, that one game, that big PC game. Uh, well, like Mordhau, even, like... Mordhau or like that one PC, like that online space game, like Everspace. Like Everspace? Yeah, or not Everspace, something like, but... Uh, what the fuck is it called? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? The one, yeah. The, Elite Dangerous? The, the no, one that's, yeah. The one with like the, where everyone like has corporations and shit, and they have like, like them fucking legit working, like they spend all day playing this shit. I'm pretty sure it's yeah. Everspace. Well, not Everspace. No, it's not Everspace, because I was going to talk about that one, actually. Everspace. Something is else. Something close to, like, Everspace. Something space. Space something. But anyways, the one that has, like, Mark Hamill and shit doing the voice acting. Oh, the what? yeah, the, they're in their own website right now. Yeah, where you they're, can, like, doing, like, so a bunch of... Is that of, where you uh, buy the game is on their website? I wonder... Um, maybe. I don't know. I thought it was on Steam. Because you can go watch the trailer there and see... Yeah, I think it's on Star, Star Citizen. Star, Star Citizen. Star Citizen. Like Star Citizen, right? Like, a huge game that's so ambitious that has, like... Gonna millions and millions of players burn like, out some CPUs right you know there. what I mean like that thing think about like how hard it is for them to make such a big ambitious game like this where like they want like this online economy these online fucking worlds and everything's constantly being updated by player use like whatever the user does over here it affects this user over here in the economy and like think about that and the graphics and how good that game will looks and how hard it is to develop a game like that for, like, all these different fucking graphics cards. I would fucking hate it, dude. I'd be like, fuck yeah. this. It's too yeah. hard. Yeah, and, and then That's... you'd have to go to different CPUs, you know, yeah. and you have to go older to newer. So, mm-hmm. you know, you just think of Intel. Oh, and then, and then you think, alone. Like, well, we can really make this one GPU and CPU work really good, but they need to have 32 gigs of RAM. But most gamers only have 12 or 16, but some only have 8. <laughs> you know, you got to think of all that shit. It's fucking craziness, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would hate it. Yeah, but yeah, well, hopefully, fingers crossed for you uh you PlayStation people that, that again this game this game will come to PSVR eventually, hopefully, you know, or even maybe on the next PlayStation when it comes out that you guys will maybe get Subnautica and be able to maybe it'll be a free update if you already own Subnautica. Yay, you can have it in yeah, VR right. now. That yeah, would be no, awesome because yeah. I'm telling you it's it's really fun. I'm really liking yeah, it so far, and I really want to get back into it. Yeah, it is on the PS4, the base game, but yeah, not the VR version that I've seen. And do you, do you guys play the non-VR version? Either one I, I you, played or? a little bit. I did. I, not. I did. Yeah, did, I did. You like it at all? And non-VR? I, I didn't. I didn't like it uh, all four times that I played it. And this is okay. going over. This is going over at least at least two years, where I bought it day one when it first came out on Xbox. Did I buy it? I think I bought it for my son on his account. And mm-hmm. then probably Ryan owned it or something, and that's how I came across it. Or um, Anyway, but yeah, either way, I I didn't like that. This the way that, you know, you have to, you know, the items you have to get and the things you have to mm-hmm. do in the game in order to progress. Uh, right. I, wanted to, like- I think I just wanted to explore more. I wanted to be like, okay, I want to go out to this, uh, you know, this shipwreck or you know whatever this area was but hey no you need these more more advanced uh, oxygen tanks you know to get there so you have to do these things in order to do that first 
but it doesn't really tell you that. And even though I knew what I had to do, it just I, I didn't want to go through with it. So yeah, gameplay was just snore fest for me. But the well, game looked amazing. It does look great. As far I agree. as it coming to PSVR, I don't think it's going to come to PSVR because it's saying on here all the Reddit subthreads that I'm in that uh, the game only runs at 30 frames a second on the PS4. So it cannot do VR. So they'd have to make like an like a new game, basically. Pretty much, yeah. They would have to like yeah. fucking dump the infrastructure. It down. Would have to be. Yeah, it would be too much of an investment. Architecture would have to be different. Yeah, I wonder if that same architecture would work on the next PlayStation though, and then it would just Slowly. work. You know how like See, the PlayStation that, that's the beauty, would work on the next. That's the beauty of the Xbox One X, where like they've designed the console to such a way where. Like Xbox One OG games work on the Xbox One X, and they actually get yeah. an improvement from it sometimes. Hey guys, so with that said, like I was thinking about that actually this past week, where like when we talk about limitations and things like that. Mm -hmm. But you know, you take a game like you know, like Fortnite, right? And like back in the day, you know, like last gen consoles, you know, that was always the thing, you know, where we asked those same questions of, you know, how can we get this to work on, you know this machine or whatever it might be. So now we see like Witcher three coming to switch. Like how are they doing that? You know, like somehow well, they're making that happen. Do you see, you see that they're actually like lowering the graphics. The settings are going to be way different on the switch version from like, say even an Xbox one original version where like on the Xbox one OG, I think that game didn't even run at 720 P. I think it ran like at six something on the mm -hmm. original Xbox one. Because, you know, like, it was just limited on power on how well the right. game could look. But they needed the game to look good on the Xbox One S. So they optimized it for that platform, I think, on the Xbox side of things. Then on top of that, the Xbox One X got a patch. But I think they're just dumbing it down, man. And if you look at the future of gaming, I think they're going to see more and more games from consoles coming to mobile phones. Um, I think we're going to definitely see, like, with the upcoming launch of Apple Arcade, which launches this fall... That is Apple's new gaming platform, kind of like Game Pass, but with mobile games. They're mostly targeting it towards mobile gamers, where they're right. saying, you give us, I think it's six bucks a month or something like that, where we'll give you a bunch of mobile games that you can play. You just download all these mobile games, you play them whenever you want. If you don't want to play, you just delete it off your phone and download another one. You know what I mean? So that's interesting yeah. that, that Apple is introducing this service, but I'm wondering, is Apple going to introduce this service and offer some games that are big hitters for people that are using iPads? Like you, Gunny, using an iPad Pro, right? And you can actually play these bigger games like Civilization, or uh, Kotor, or uh, like these it other. Does have more power? Yeah, yeah, these these bigger games that have like more, they take more juice. You know, they need like an iPad to play instead of an iPhone. Maybe you get access to these games on this new game service, which is going to be interesting. You know what I mean? I think we'll see more and more console games coming over, dude. Because there's there's actually been quite a few. Um, major like hits on the consoles and even on pc like big indie games that have come over to the mobile phones and actually done really good on there as well uh, yeah inside is on the phone now like you can literally play like inside the game that was on the xbox that was like a big hit on the xbox a few years ago that was on that xbox indies program it came to phones it's available on your iphone like you can shortly after it. yeah yeah you can download it on your fucking phone and like there are like holistic games yeah uh, yeah Dead you Souls. got the You've got the. Do you have the iPad Pro too, Jesus, or just the regular iPad? I don't or? have any iPads. I just have an iPhone SX, or whatever. Okay, because then, uh, so curious about your X because there is like a list of games like you can go into, where like, hey, these games look actually. Think about you this. Know, they're look optimized at this. for the Pro. Mayo Dead Cells on my phone costs eight bucks. Like that is cheap. Some people may look at that and be like, "Well, I'll save myself a few bucks and I can play it on the go," compared to buying it on my console for fifteen bucks. Or buying it on right. the PC for ten bucks, and and it, it could be worth it. And I think people are overlooking mobile gaming, which we shouldn't be doing because I think mobile gaming nowadays in 2019, man, there's been kids that have grown up with that shit. Like my daughter, yeah. my daughter knows mobile gaming. Like she can play Roblox on a phone and chat and do all that shit, and she's fucking eight years old. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, my phone yeah. actually. I think when I first got it, it, it has an app on there that come with it, and I have the uh, the Note Nine to stream your games while you're playing. Yeah. Like I can stream my phone game mm -hmm. 
to Twitch? I don't know, I'm not even sure like how it works, but it goes to Twitch yeah. or what it goes to. But it's like you have the option to stream. Yeah. Like all these, and it like came a with lot you know, of, Fortnite back yeah. in the day when they did that big promotion. And YouTube. But, yeah. A lot of uh, a lot of games that are Apple only, like Apple exclusive, like like say for example that one game that looks kind of like Forza. It's called Asphalt. Asphalt Nine or whatever. No, I, I, I think yeah. it's actually on Android as well. But it used to be an Apple exclusive phone or game or whatever. That That's game, featured, yeah. That game was fucking. It looks like a Forza game. It looks like Forza Horizon or something, but on a phone, and you can legit like I can stream that to Mixer. I can stream that to Twitch right from the app. It tells you on there like. Log in with your Twitching platform, or like your streaming platform. What do you want to stream to? Log in with your account, and we'll stream your gameplay to it. Yeah, and it it's lets you, crazy. like, uh, there's actually, like, a record that feature in that. I play it once in a while. Yeah, time. and it uh, looks iPad. good. It looks like a, it looks like a, like a fucking Forza game on a phone, dude. Like, when you play it, you're legitimately, you forget for a moment, and you're like, holy shit, my little-ass cell phone is pushing out these kind of graphics. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's kind of yeah. crazy, man, and like and we'll, we'll we'll see that too. Like yeah. with the, uh, you know, like like you said, with phones and the younger generation and Google Stadia coming, mm-hmm. you know, like we'll see people. I I can already see people playing like, you know, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven, and then they're gonna switch over and play something mobile. You think know, like something like think a, about it. Like I'm excited for Stadia when I think, I'm thinking I'm gonna buy Cyberpunk on Stadia maybe because think about it. Like Stadia, you can legit be on your PC playing like Cyberpunk, and then be like. Fuck, fuck this! I'm gonna go play downstairs. We'll play and go downstairs. Yeah. I'm gonna like, turn off my PC and get ready for bed. Well, what if I play like ten more minutes of Cyberpunk? <laughs> yeah, and, and you turn on your TV. You can do 4K at 60. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna get 4K at 60 on your TV. 4K so. 60, like that's not even bad performance. That's actually pretty good performance. Is what we're kind of used to as console gamers, and like even being a PC gamer now, like 4K 60 isn't bad. Like that's actually pretty fucking decent. You know what I mean? And right. um and it's it's good it's a good frame rate it's sixty it's it's kind of like what everything should be at <laughs> all the time you know if you can't hit six like if you can't if you could do four K sixty or like fourteen forty p sixty or whatever do that instead of like four K thirty do it that mm-hmm. way it, it'll just, it'll be a better experience yeah that fourteen forty is such a nice happy medium I mean it is you just don't really notice the difference between that and the four K and you get that such better frame rate, like it just—it's just, it's just yeah. that nice spot to be in right now. So I'm excited for Stadia, and I'm excited to see like Cyberpunk, like you just said, Gunny. Cyberpunk is gonna be running off some fucking server farm, a hundred miles away from me, and all I need to do is log in with my online account and be like, "Hey, I want to play Cyberpunk right now." I was like, "Okay, let's pull up your account, load up your save." And, okay, here you go, Jesus, you're good to go. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, but you know what? That Google, like, it's 80 miles from me, Mountain View. Yeah. So I'll be close, but still, like, they'll be using the same data centers as you have, like, you have those server farms in Oregon. Yeah. Like, I noticed those playing Apex today. Yeah. Like, But we'll get the same experience, you know, playing on iPhones. and. It's fucking crazy, man. Or people on their Samsungs on their Android devices with better colors, and but it'll be the same same experience. The future of gaming is it's insane, dude. It's going to be so main, main, so mainstream. And so, like, just normalized. By the time you, by the time I'm old, Gunny, by the time I'm your age, <laughs> 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 screw you, shit. Ouch! Right. I feel like <laughs> kind of too, like us being our ages, and then this newer generation growing up playing games. Like, I feel like we're really getting pushed out the way we do things, and we're gonna have to adapt the way you the, are, the younger yeah. generation is doing it. Because you look at Fortnite, like how big Fortnite, and some people, yeah, there's older people play Fortnite. But it's a younger generation game, and they are controlling things. They're doing the. They're, they're the ones pushing the cross play. They're the ones pushing this and this and this. And, and then mobile games the same way. Like you said, our kids are growing up with these devices in their hands, and that's the norm for them. So when they start to become in young adults, that's what they're going to market toward. And our consoles that we're going to sit down and play and our PCs, <laughs> yeah. we, we might be on dinosaurs. We're going to be over here with our, our walkers <laughs> going, you know, back in our day, we back sat down and played day, our I video built game. A PC. <laughs> and this, we had 30 you know, wires coming out of the back. Be, our kids would be like 20 some years yeah. old at this point and they're going to have like these fucking wireless giant... headsets and shit built in their heads. <laughs> right. And so 
It's fucking crazy. Yeah. yeah like, and they're just going to think it's Norman, you know, like this is back how we did it back in the day, you know, with these, <laughs> you know, look at the step just the controllers, you know, I remember back in, we had to plug everything in and you had to sit on the floor yeah. in front of the TV because my Super Nintendo controller was only like eight feet long. Exactly. And I had remember? to sit in front of the TV. Think about the innovation of the 360 when the 360 came out and they had that wireless controller for the 360. Right. Everyone was like, holy shit, this thing is wireless. Whoa. <laughs> the sooner. <laughs> You know? <laughs> and now we take it for granted. Yeah. Everything's wireless yeah. controller. So now we're just kind of like... Why is it not okay. wireless? When something comes out with the wire, you're like, why does it need a wire? <laughs> well, why yeah. do I have this generic <laughs> GameStop brand controller that's got a cord stuck to it? Okay. <laughs> Here, here, give it that to the little sister. Now we're asking. Now, play. now, now we're asking. What? Why does my PS VR headset? Why does this VR thing need a wire? Why can't you guys make this wireless? You know, like right. we're asking why things need wires when before it used to be like, whoa, that thing doesn't use a wire. That's kind of weird. Like you know, now it's like the opposite. Like, why does it need a wire? What the fuck you mean you need a wire? <laughs> it's fucking weird, man. It's the future. But hey, guys, remember? You remember? Uh, Star. Remember that old TV show, Star Trek: The Next Generation. LeVar mm-hmm. Burton, what was his character name on the show? And he wore, like, that air filter on his eyes because he was <laughs> blind, but then he could... You know what I mean? Like, But I thought about VR what back then. What was his name? You know? I know who you're talking about now. Was it, like, sort of a V? I thought it started with an E, but it, it's... Know. Yeah. And I thought, I thought about VR at the time, like, because there was a few times, like, they showed, like, what he can actually see with those things. But I thought, man, that thing is like a, like a virtual reality thing on his eyes, you know? Yeah. It didn't have any wires, so... When are we going to get to, you know, those times, you know? It's fucking, it's just to me, it's it's crazy how, like, you're almost right, there. You, Mayo is completely right, though, dude. Eventually, like, the generation you guys, and I'm from, really, I mean, we're going to get pushed out. And, and the fucking, the fucked up part is, Gunny, that I'm going to be, like, your age, and I'm going to be seeing it happen. Like, like fuck. Yeah. Like, fuck. I can't stop this. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Stop making everything into an eSport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, hey every guys, sport's going to become an eSport at that point. Yeah, everything, We're not going to do real sports anymore. <laughs> Everything's just eSports. Not even, every, all, the, all the football players are just playing Madden now. <laughs> Yeah. Then it's gonna be like the old Wally. They're, you know, I remember Wally. They're yeah. all wearing headsets. They were yeah, all exactly. heavy set, and they're all like can't get up out of their chairs because they're pro esport players. And <laughs> well, bro, I'm a professional athlete. This is the body of a fucking professional athlete right here. Mm, yeah. Mm. <laughs> you know, I can already picture like everybody just, you know, all the kids pile into school. The bell rings, and they all sit down, and they all just put on the headset. Yep. Put on your right? headset. That's kids. it. Everything is just quiet. And the teacher sits Today, there. Today we're traveling. Today we're traveling to ancient Egypt, and we're going to see Cleopatra <laughs> talk to Alexander the Great in <laughs> real time. Let's travel right. there. <laughs> the animus. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, like it's going to be crazy. Yeah, to the cool. animus. <laughs> Ubisoft's going to actually like make the animus in the future. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. Yeah, but it's it's going to happen, man. You know, like as much as as much of a joke as this is, like this is all pretty much gonna happen, I think. And people yeah. are like, "No, no, it will never happen." The internet infrastructure isn't there. Forget about all that, man. Internet infrastructure will get built. Companies, well, look how much companies like Facebook and Google cannot afford to lose the internet infrastructure. Fucking bullshit. Like, like to like have their companies fail. Based on internet infrastructure because of the government, that's bullshit. They'll lobby so hard to get that shit upgraded that it's going to happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you just look too. Like, I remember it was about 20 years ago when we were doing the dial up, when it just kind of started becoming a thing in the public. That's only been 20 years. So, yeah. what happens with the stuff that we have now in the next 20 years? We, you know, I'm, I have a one gigahertz download speed of my internet here at the house. And I went from whatever kilobytes, like 700 kilobytes yeah. 20 years ago to this now. millions of kilobytes to, to gig, you know, a thousand gigahertz yeah. now in 20 years. So what happens in the next 20 years? It's going to be, you know, a billion gigahertz download, you know, or is it going to be free Wi-Fi for everybody? It's going to be in, this, in the airway. I, that's you know, what I like, think it's going to go just gonna to, connect, I think like, it's going to be like you, that. You're going to have internet everywhere. I think it's gonna be like a like they're gonna deem it. The government will eventually deem it like a uh, like service, a, like a public necessity. You know, like you just need it. 
Right. Where like it's kind of like emergency services. Like you just need them, so they need to mm-hmm. be. Like even if your cell phone has no service, you can still call nine one one. That's exactly what it's going to be like. Like even though you cannot afford this, we'll give you like basic fucking internet for free. Here you go, because you need it. You know what I mean? You need. This uh, to I read. Survive. An article a long time ago saying that back when they did uh, i might have mentioned this before in the show back when uh, standard definition tvs when we were getting the, the tv shows on our tv and they went to all high def oh, yeah. all those airways were bought up by the government yeah. according to this article and they their plan was actually according to this article was to basically make a free wi-fi so basically your your lower income neighborhoods had mm-hmm. internet access so they could get the education that they need yeah. and would you know kind of like going to the lab right now except where they could have it at home they could have very you know it's very slow very limited internet but you, they would have internet access to where we still have people right. in this country that don't have internet or oh, can't well, afford man. internet you know i mean the truth of it is is you know you get in these rough neighborhoods i think you know there's just people that don't have internet you know and they have you to go choose, to the library yeah you choose between feeding your kids or having fucking internet to watch netflix like you know, I mean, you're gonna feed your right. kids. It's, it's obvious, and like, and I, and I think it's, I think you're right, man. And for the people that are out there that know people that are like in low income neighborhoods, reach out to your ISPs, or how those people reach out to their ISPs in their area or in their neighborhoods, and you'd be surprised how like some ISPs provide lower tier plans that are really cheap, like pretty much nothing. You pay like five bucks a month or something, or two bucks a month even. If you're like a low-income family and have kids or whatever in your household, the the companies themselves, Comcast I know does this, which people give Comcast a lot of shit, but Comcast actually does this for their users that are low-income. They'll like, they'll say like, hey, like how much money do you make a year or whatever, and if you're like below the poverty line or whatever, and you have kids, and they know you have kids going to school, They'll be like, all right, look, we'll give you basic internet. It's not like high-speed internet, but it's internet that you can browse the web with or whatever, and you can access stuff for school, and we'll give you that for like three bucks a month. That's mm-hmm. what it was you know when I, I mean? was a kid. When I was a kid back east, um, you know, and dad not being around very much and, <clears throat> you know, being on food stamps and all that good stuff, it was whatever it was, Edison, Electric, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Hey, as long as you submitted a thing showing, you know, this is your residence and this is your income. This uh, yeah, so it was always that. Yeah. yeah, so I think it was like government subsidized, like electricity and uh, television as well. Yeah, so like like people don't, you know, like like you give... A phone. We give Comcast a lot of shit for a lot of things they do, but they also do stuff like that for people that are low income and... Whether it's subsidized or not, it's still a cool thing. I think to be able to. Do hey, that, I think the know? old, I think the old Pacific Bell before everybody, if yeah. anybody knows what that is, uh, AT and T, um, back in the day, you know they were all baby bells, but uh, yeah, those were subsidized. I think it was called like Lifeline or something. Nine dollars a month for a phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember. That. I remember having some shit Basic like that phone. as a kid. Yeah, for my mom. Yeah, dude, I remember that oh. shit. Well, I think they have cell phone plans too, right? Like. Like government yeah. providing yes. phone plans. I'm yeah, you can get sure those through, yeah, uh, yeah like uh, uh, whatever. It's called Covered California out here, but yeah. it's it's probably whatever different state. state. You're in, yeah, but yeah, you <laughs> can get that's crazy that cell too. That shit. you know they can they can do that, and I, and I see how much I'm paying, and I know I'm way I'm paying way too much because I have <laughs> one, two, three. Yeah, I have five phones in my plan, and it's like that's a car payment. Five hundred dollars <laughs> a <laughs> month, <Yeah>. man. <laughs> You know, it's it's like two hundred and eighty dollars a month or yeah. something like that. You it's know, ridiculous. but <laughs> but yeah, man. Like 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 it's kind of crazy to me how like everything's changing and and the thing is we're like experiencing everything. That's that's the crazy part, right? Because we're like in the middle of it all. And and I think about it like I always think about situations when like I mean like older people that tell me like, "Well, you guys have it so easy nowadays. Everything's just handed to you. Everything's just this." And it's like, well, yeah, but no. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you guys had situations that were a little bit easier than us. Like, like a lot of times back in the day, people could buy houses for so much cheaper. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you could buy, right. you could finance to fucking to buy your house and mortgage to get a house so much cheaper than nowadays. Nowadays, we're paying $1,500 for a two-bedroom apartment when you would pay that for, like, two houses. <laughs> you know so I mean? true it's fucking crazy but like yeah, yeah. It, it, everything just kind of changes and and i think as gamers we need to realize that like 
mobile gaming and those types of games and stuff like that is coming up, man. And people are like, Stadia's going to fail, Stadia's going to fail. Personally, I don't think Stadia's going to fail. And if it does fail, I think as soon as it fails, another company like Sony, Nintendo, or Microsoft is going to pick up that fucking helm and be like, hey, we're doing streaming now, guys. Check us out. Woo! Yep. <laughs> we're rescuing Stadia. <laughs> you know? Hey, as long as they have enough, I think right now, you know, in our current population and the world, you know, especially mm-hmm. United States and, you know, especially, well, even Europe, right? Because everybody wants to live, you know, that's that's kind of where it's at, right? In these yeah. these metropolis areas. And as long as they, and everybody's paying 10 bucks a month or 15 or 20, that's, that's enough to sustain, you know, income profits for Google going forward, right? That's where it's at. Yeah. So that's what's going to keep them afloat and keep the games coming. Anyway, that's where we're so, headed. So we, we get back to yeah, our little rabbit trail here. Uh, I do have one more game I want to talk about, and that's another VR game I've played. And at first click, I thought it was uh, a sequel or just a continuation of the current game, but um, Lucky's Tale on the Oculus. And <laughs> I didn't know... Uh, Lucky's Tale is actually the first version, and Super Lucky Tale was is like a sequel. Yeah. And so I was just kind of looking at some of the research on it, and actually it was an Oculus original, and then, you know, I don't know if Microsoft did. But um, I, I picked this game up, and that game is awesome. So I really want to see your, your video of Astrobot because I have a feeling this is the same kind of design. And I think these platformers, are really awesome in VR. Like, like Dude, everything I played pretty I much has been like, like first-person Astrobot, shooters. And I was like, holy but shit. But when you that, that, when you're kind of looking back and you're controlling that character, it's like this little 3D model running around yeah, in front and of you. Like, it's like goes up above you and he's like jumping around and he's waving at you. Like, it's really cool because the VR, <laughs> the Astrobot, he'll like, like if you just don't control him for a bit, if you're just like looking around them, like the world and just kind of like in awe for a second, you like look back at him and he'll like, like if he like he doesn't stay idle, he'll like he'll do his own thing. He'll like grab a fucking a headset like a PSVR headset and put it on himself and like start looking <laughs> around and shit. It looks kind of funny, like but like you see him and it looks just like a PSVR headset. Like he's wearing one himself and he's looking around the world like whoa. <laughs> it's fucking <laughs> That's interesting, fun. dude. <laughs> Yeah, it just this is pretty cool. Like I, I really enjoyed it, and then it has like a little section where like it reminds me of Mario, where like there's like this dirt part, and it has like a little thing, and you have to like, and you, when you walk over it, you, the little lucky guy, he's like that fox or whatever he is, you know, yeah. he 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 goes down underground, and then it's like an underground mission, kind of like you were doing like a warp pipe in Mario, and it's like a different perspective again. It's almost straight from the side, but you can see the depth. And then you, you you're working your way across, and it's just really cool. It's just like the way they kind of interacted with some yeah. some of the things. Uh, this is actually really really enjoyable. Like, even though it's a really simple and like I want to call it a kids game, you know, oh, for totally. like like a younger generation, I was having a great time it's playing it. It's fucking like, awesome, I'm like, this dude. This is cool. Yeah, and you just, feel incredible. You feel like, and the thing about what I like about Astro Body reminds me of like Mario so much, like that like that chipper music, you know, like that music is just like. Mm-hmm. Like super like bouncy like like super like oh it's just happy mode everyone's happy like fuck it everything's happy let's play happiness and it's just like it feels good when you like beat a level because you're like oh fuck it I just beat this level fuck yeah it's really mm-hmm. awesome I'm convinced I heard this on BGO too but like like now myself after seeing like this game and seeing uh, no one have a pretty good idea what Astro Boss gonna like if Nintendo would tomorrow announce a VR headset mm-hmm. and release a Mario game. VR would be legitimately here, not like a novelty, no. not like these are cool. That thing would fly off the shelves. Even, I, I even if it only had it. like fucking five pre-installed Mario games on it or some shit, it would still go off the shelves, yeah. dude. I mean, it it was almost as big as me seeing it in this view as it was playing Mario sixty four for the first time. Or the first 3D Mario when you were like, I can pan the camera and run this direction <laughs> and that direction. That's almost what it is in VR. Like you're like you're looking down at it and you're like, I can almost reach out and touch him. Like he's like running around in front of me. I can't wait till Gunny gets awesome. to play Astrobot, dude. When Gunny plays Astrobot for the first fucking time, Gunny, you need to have your kid record you, or you need to better yet have your kid turn it on and play it for the first time, and like. 
his reactions to it is going to be incredible. Like Astrobot has to, like this little thing, right? Like you go into the spaceship itself, like it's a completely different thing. You go into the spaceship itself, where like all your little Astrobots are hanging out, the ones you rescued throughout the game, and then like in there. They have a little fucking, like, a, it's called, like, a claw, it's like a claw machine. So you grab your PS4 controller, you put it on this machine, and, like, a little claw machine comes up. And your little dude, your little Astrobot guy that you control, he goes inside the machine and, like, he goes up on the claw, and he's the claw himself. He's up there hanging around, and he's like, ah! And you control the claw with the little, like, the little touchpad on your PS4 controller. You control that. And you're sliding the claw, and then you click on it, and it, like, goes down, and he grabs these little balls, like... It's kind of like one of those, like, like those little balls you buy from the 50 cent machines at the store. And he throws oh, it down. Ones, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he throws them down. No. And then you open up the ball. Like, the ball comes out. <laughs> and the ball is fucking, like, it's like a, it'll be like a 3D model of, like, something in the game. Like, one of the enemies or one of the levels or a section of the level. And you can, like... Grab like, like it's on your PS4 controller, so you can like move it close to you and look at it, look like flip it around and turn it around. It's in 3D, like it's fucking crazy. And it's like a, it'll be like a character model, or like a level model, or something like that. You know what I mean from the game. And were you using to buy like, were you using to buy a turn in the claw machine as the coins that you pick up in the game? So like I always thought to myself like, what's the point of these coins in the game? Like, why am I running around collecting these coins? Well, the coins, you have to spend 100 coins to use the claw machine to, to like, buy a like buy a turn. You buy a turn to, like, pick up a a ball and drop it off. But there's also bombs inside the machine. So, like, sometimes you'll pick up a bomb and it'll just blow up. And then it'll, like, blow up in the machine or whatever. And, like, you don't get nothing sometimes. Or sometimes you'll what? get something. What? This game has loot box mechanics. It does, but it's all <laughs> in game. It's all in game <laughs> currency. And what's really cool is though, like, ah. all right, so like, I unlocked this, like, uh, like I like I grabbed this, like, um, this like three D model of like a level, right? Like a sky level, like the skyscraper level. So the thing is, I didn't know this, but you can actually go over to like these little like chests in your little. It's like a playroom, like it says where your little astropods hang out, and you press the little, you press square, and your little dude goes up to the chest and presses on the chest. And what happens is it like it'll make the room that you're in into that level, but like you are really big and the level is really tiny. So like it's kind of like one of those uh like a like a one of those like fucking like the thing I explained last week on your a few weeks ago were like the train sets, you know, like people make train sets with like a diorama. It's kind of like a diorama. Okay. But like of the level that you played earlier in the campaign. <laughs> so like It'll make a level in the campaign, but like a diorama of it, and you can like look around, and everything's tiny, and your little character is even tiny, and it's just fucking cool, man. Like, is it is it sort of avatarish? What you're explaining, like when you go into that room? No, man, it's nothing like Xbox. It's it's something else. It's completely like it's hard to explain, dude. It really is like. Uh, so man, I'm not even gonna. I'm gonna take your word for it. I'm not even gonna go YouTube any of that. Don't stuff. do any I just, of it. Just. Gonna I mean, tell, I'm going to wait till November to just experience everything, Yeah, you know, based on... Once you experience it, Gunny, like, I'm telling you, dude, like, Astrobot is legit, like, you will think to yourself, holy shit, if this was Mario... Right. Or, or Luigi, like, everyone would want to play this right now. Like, everyone it would, would... It would be a hit. You would sell, be number one. You would sell your fucking soul to get your hands on this for your kid for Christmas. <laughs> I mean, and I can't like get his reactions too. To to explain it to people is like I have this eight foot computer desk, and you might as well just have the level spanned across my desk, and I'm sitting at my desk like I'm looking at my keyboard, and that environment would be like a Mario world across my desk, and you can move him around in that world. I mean, it's like it's right there as much as my mouse and keyboard and stuff is in front of me. It's a Mario world or or whatever game we're kind of playing yeah. is right in front of you, and it really makes me want to play more more actually VR platforms. I want to play Astrobot now, which I don't have access to and I won't have access to unless it becomes, you know, to PC, which I doubt it will the way it sounds. But I did actually on the Oculus store find another game and it's called, I got to remember what it's called now. That's that's third party, by the way. I forgot the name of the developer who made um, that uh, Astrobot, but I think. I think it's called like Witch Blood or something yeah. like that. And, it, and they, they're, they're comparing this game to like Castlevania. Okay. And so I... I I did pick this up, and I'm excited to play because it does look really cool, and I haven't launched it yet. So, um, But yeah, Lucky Tail, it definitely, 
you know, is watching projectiles fire at my character. You see this like legitimate little flying beasting or flying across my, my the map, and I'm going. I have yeah. to dodge this thing, and there you was, see it's like death. Yeah, dude, there was like these little. Uh, you remember the bullet bills from from Mario, like the little. Oh, I could imagine. Yeah. Can you imagine how they were looking. There was the some of those in this level that I was playing last night. It was like a mushroom level, and you start off in the cave, and there are these bullet bills. That are coming and they look just like the Mario bullet bills. They have like a face on them and they're so they smiling. have different sizes as well. Like yes. the smaller ones. But, and but, but like these are like all like big because you're in 3D. You're in the game, right? So you're like you see a little character running around. You're like in a diorama like looking thing and you're looking at them, and you have to dodge the bullet bills as they're coming at you. And you're like trying to run up this ramp, but they keep shooting them at you. So you have to like go zigzag up the ramp, and it's like, dude, like. Ah. It's fucking magical, man. It's like it's like going to Disneyland for the first time as a little kid or something. Dude. It like, is. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> it's fucking crazy, man. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. I, I kind of hope Nintendo is doing this. I'm telling you, I, I feel like it would be yeah. a huge step for VR. Like when somebody makes, like you know, again, Astrobot's probably still like early into that. So is Lucky's Tale, or you know, that's an older game now. I think it came out in 2016. Um, that was probably their first run at it. What happens in three or four years with VR and they get a legitimate contender of yeah. a game like that? Like, I can't think, is there any side scrollers that are like on the PlayStation that are big? Maybe like Little Big Planet. Can you um, imagine like Little Big Planet? Little Big Planet would be a good one. I think, I just Astrobot is a hit, dude. I think they'll make another Astrobot. Um, and there's another game on the on the PlayStation VR that I want to try that's like this, Mayo, and it's called Moss. That's with the little mouse you yeah. control. Yes, yes, I can get that too get on, that, uh, on the Oculus. So yeah, uh, you, yeah, game that's store a, guy yeah, loves this that. game. He so Moss is really that's really a beloved game as well. People are saying like if you love Astrobot and you love like those types of like platformers, like get this little mouse game called Moss. And, um, yeah, you control a little mouse and you run around the world. And Moss is really cool because it's, like, based on a book, I guess. Like, you open up a book and there's the level and then you, open, like, you turn the page and the next level comes up. Looks really cool. Um, so I might buy Moss eventually. But, like, man, like, like Mayo said, Gunny, like, when you first, like, people never believe you until they fucking try this shit. And once they try, they're, like, they're blown away by it, and and I I legit am super happy I bought the Astrobot PSVR bundle because that shit's incredible. <laughs> it is, man. It's like it's like crack, and um, and it and the game is like twenty bucks on download right now. You can legit buy it for twenty bucks, gunning like digital on the store. Go to the store and it's like I saw it on regular there. price. I did see it. It's twenty bucks now. Like I, I'm so glad they knew they like they're like. We have a fucking hit right here for the VR. Let's just drop it to 20 bucks and have people show all their friends about this. And we're going to sell more VR units. Because it's, it's what they, what they should have done in the beginning. Just put that game out for fucking $5 and everyone's going to buy it, dude. It's fucking crazy good. Yeah, I think I saw that in Tetris. Tetris Effect. I, I would, was like, well, I I would have been going to Tetris, but... You know, if you're one hundred percent certain you're gonna get a VR like say this year or whatever, I would put that in my wish list and or see and keep checking the Sony site and see if you do catch that thing on sale and just buy it before you even get your VR because it's something you definitely want in your library. Yeah. Like I can just tell like it's something that's gonna be you're gonna to want to experience. And if you catch it on sale in their store, I would just buy it then. And it's that way you have it ready, and then you can just when you buy your PSVR, you can bundle a different game with it. That way you have multiple things to play right away. I I think the wife listens to this show. You want to know why? You know what she told <laughs> oh, me last week? What would she say? She listens to the show because oh, fuck. uh, was it last week or was it? I think it was last week or two weeks ago. And then she goes, <laughs> you know, I'm going on my trip. I'm going to talk like my wife right now. Oh shit! Oh. Oh. She listens to the show, Gunny. You need to <laughs> so calm we need, down. We need to guess. To she downloads uh, it for next week. We will not have Gunny next week. He he will come up missing. Because <laughs> she goes, you know, I'm going on my trip in November. And I don't want any unnecessary spending then. But I'm just like, I kind of looked over. I'm like, when's Black Friday? Isn't that November sometime? You know? <laughs> like, I, like I said, no unnecessary spending when I go on my trip. But before yeah. I go on my trip, and even after I come back from my trip. Wow. You know, I was like. And I just said, uh, yeah, okay. So, <laughs> But, um, I, I, you know, I thought the whole Great America thing this weekend was just, you know, I get more game time and more gaming peripherals out of that. Just so. tell her Mayo gifted it to you. <laughs> yeah, so like that Mayo gift. guy gave it yeah, to that, me. Mayo, this Mayo guy sent me this box. He's, he's way over on the East Coast. That's <laughs> like four <laughs> months from know. now, so she'll, she'll forget what she said. <laughs> yeah, you know, right. She listens to the show, Gunny. Now she's going to write it down. Next time when she hears this, she's, <laughs> she's going like, to re- put a reminder Thanks. on her phone. <laughs> like, because as soon as she said that, I immediately thought, did she hear me say I was going to 
buy a PlayStation <laughs> VR on <laughs> on the podcast? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just saying, man, like, VR is, is it's fucking cool, man. And I can't wait for the PSVR 2, <laughs> which comes out probably with the PS5, and it'll probably be a mm-hmm. launch thing or something. But, I, I mean, if, like, PS5 comes out and they like have like a PS5 and a PSVR 2 bundle. I would probably just trade in my PS4 Pro and my PSVR for that bundle and pay off the difference or whatever and get that. Even if it's like 800 bucks or some 900 bucks or something, I would still do it. Because it would be fucking incredible, I think. <laughs> as, yeah. long, as long as the PSVR 2 has major improvements, which for me, major improvements would be just a better resolution screen. Um... They talked about that and last that's year. Really and that's really it. That's really it. Like a better yeah, resolution. Yeah, they kept screen. quiet on it. Maybe better tracking eventually oh, here. Yeah. Maybe something like maybe, wi- maybe like a wireless wireless tracking, like no camera needed. Like if I don't need it, like even if it still has a wire, I'll be fine. But as long as I don't need a fucking camera to like be pointing at me, you I'll be fine. yeah. Because I don't know, like the PS, the, is it all the cameras and the tracking and the headset itself? Like my Oculus, I don't have any stands or anything to set up. No, the camera so, does the tracking, so the camera looks at you, and then like the camera. Sees like the little, because there's lights on the VR. If you look at the PSVR, there's like blue okay, lights. Okay, that's right. On. It uses like a like a uh, the old eye toy or something, or something yeah. like that. Or is it is it something like that? Eye. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. you know, like this Oculus, and and this is where the technology is going. You can see it, and you know this has been on what for like six months. Yeah. There, there, there's no sensors anywhere. You put you put the Oculus on, and it knows your height. It knows when you're turning, when you're kneeling down, because the, the every sensor is actually in it, built in. So it's got like five cameras in it. And it's always looking like yeah. how far you are to the ceiling, to the floor, you know. So it just it just knows what that's, you're doing. So that's it's what just, the, just that uh, one time one time calibration. Yeah, sort of thing. I mean, you can reset the, uh, it if you want, but yeah. that's what the uh, Windows Mixed Reality headsets do. That's what I really like about Microsoft and teaming up with like ASUS and HTC and shit. And they've actually made all these Windows Mixed Reality headsets, like with Samsung even, that have that wireless tracking as well. So like, I'm mm-hmm. hoping. Everyone's saying that the next Sony, from all the patents that everyone have seen like leaked or whatever, that because Sony's been filing lots of patents lately with the U.S. and China and all kinds of countries, and like their uh, their tracking seems to show from their new VR headset that they have inside out tracking and and also like that one camera on the outside that could show you what's in your room, like so you don't run into your fucking wall or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like like it can track like what's in your room so you don't like walk into a fucking desk and fall over or something. But it looks like it's going to be, if anything, maybe not wireless, but for sure, like, not, you don't need the camera, so you can play, like, in a different environment. Maybe even a smaller environment than what this camera needs. Because the problem with the camera, with the PSVR is, if you don't have the room for it, you're kind of fucked. You know what I mean? Like, right. like you need the room, because the camera needs enough space to, like, scan to around monitor you, you and right. monitor you and see you and like see where you're turning it's not that much like people exaggerate how much room you need because literally dude i'm right here like you see me right here and my tv is right there like like three feet away from me so like the camera was right there it doesn't need much space people exaggerate when they say like you need a whole bedroom for it or something like that. that's exaggeration you don't need a whole bedroom for it you maybe need like five feet at most um can but, you like draw a parameter like like the my oculus when i first set it up i can it put like marks on the floor it has like the pass through so I, I can see everything in black and white like the real world and it puts little dots on the floor and you take the controller and you draw a square around your play area and you can draw around anything so like i guess it don't have to be a square it could be like a rectangle yeah. or or an octagon or whatever i don't know but you draw your play area and then when you're done it says is this what you want you say yes and it puts a box around you. And, and so when I'm playing, and if I get out of that area, say like I swing a hand and it gets out of that play area, it has like an imaginary wall. That wall kind of appears in my game and it kind of tells me, it's like, hey, you're no. getting too far to the left. So no. that's something I'll probably think would be coming what, in the what next. What PSVR does, like in some certain games, like I don't know, I don't think Astrobot does it, but I know for sure Firewall Zero Hour and like Borderlands 2 VR. Those game do those game do this thing where like if I press the recalibration button, for example, on Firewall Zero Hour, if I press that button on my PlayStation Aim controller, it'll like show like the screen recalibrating, but at the same time it'll like show like this little like uh, like a grid, 
and then it'll, like the grid is showing where the camera is seen. So like, mm-hmm. it'll show like 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 a big like grid thing like above me, underneath me, around me. Like it'll show like that's where the camera can see right now. So like if I want better calibration, like if I wanted to see my arm swinging more this way, more this way, maybe I have to back up a little bit. So like it gives you like kind of a sense like maybe you should back up a little bit. Maybe you should come a little bit closer. Um, as far as like a grid on the floor, there's no way that the PSVR can do that. I don't I don't see it happening. Um, because yeah, you don't really you ever you don't cameras. ever really walk around your room. Uh, there's moments and times where like, playing like a uh, Beat Saber, you know, you're fucking swinging and shit. Like, <laughs> Next dude, thing I, know, I, I'm I like do, eight feet away yeah, from yeah, my like, PC. like I do walk away from my PC, like the yeah. camera and like the PSVR. Like all of a sudden, it'll just tell me like, "Hey, you're out of the play area." Like it'll warn you in the game, like you're out of the play area, get, and like you're like, "Oh fuck, I'm, I'm too far." To you're, in the, Jesus, you're in the fireplace. <laughs> you're inside. I, it. I'm on yeah. top of my bed, <laughs> swinging my arms. Shit. <laughs> So you yeah, like, so move over a little bit, but like it's pretty quick about telling you like, hey, you're out of the fucking play area. Like, and sometimes it'll even pause the game for you. Like, for example, Beat Saber it knows that it should probably pause it for you, so the game will pause and it'll be like, hey, you're out of the play area. Get back in the play area and then restart the game, and then it'll give you like a countdown, like five, four, three, two, one, and the game will continue. Um, so like it does that, but there's no like really, there's no really like walking around your room. Unless you, like, somehow, like, accidentally do it. Like, for example, in Firewall Zero Hour, when you're, like, in an intense shootout and you're fucking, like, shooting around a corner and you're leaning. Because, you know, you can lean in these games, right? So you lean that, around a corner. That's the way this and it's like, love is. Yeah, like, you're leaning around corners and you're fucking, you're, like, either you're blind firing around a corner. <laughs> hoping you don't kill your own teammates. Or you're just, like, fucking leaning around the corner, barely sticking your eyeball out to, like, fucking hopefully get a shot off. And, um... So, like, like a lot of the times, sometimes with that situation, like, if you're not sitting down, if you're playing standing up, you may, like, linger off and start walking off to the sides. And mm-hmm. the game I feel like I'm going to headbutt something one of these days. I'm going to be, like, <laughs> moving around playing, like, Pavlov, where you can <laughs> look around corners and stuff. I'm just, I have, like, a exercise, like, a weight machine yeah. off to the, like, far right side. And, it's, you know, it's got, like, the butterfly handles and all that stuff. I just wait to crack my head on one of those, like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna be knocked out laying on the floor with VR on my head. The and only just game, some psychedelic dream. The only game that I've ever felt like I was gonna fall over, like I actually was gonna like fall forward, was uh, Batman VR. Cause I have the Batman game for my PS VR. I'm pretty probably. Is sure. that worth? Is that worth me picking up? Eh, Should I check it out? I mean, it's kind of interesting. It's really short though. It's like two hours. Yeah. Yeah. If it's like ten bucks, maybe I bought it for like twenty, so I guess it really no, not much more. Um, but it's kind of a cool experience, you know. Like you're you're playing as Batman and you're like in Gotham City, and there's a level where like you're on top of a building. As you know how Batman perches on top of fucking buildings like a maniac. <laughs> like you can legit like walk over, like look over the edge, and you see cars going like honking and shit, like taxi cabs and cars, and then you're like fuck this is a far drop <laughs> for like a second i feel like i was gonna fall over and this was when i was actually playing on the oculus i was playing it at a at a microsoft store because they had like this event going for the xbox one x or whatever me and jonathan went and i was playing this vr fucking mode and like and even the dude in the store was like all right make sure you don't fall over dude all right like you don't want your head going into like the 65 inch <laughs> fucking screen right here because i had like a big 65 inch tv screen in front of me it's so like people are behind me in line waiting to play next and i'm like sitting there like Whoa, dude, like, I felt like I was going to fall over for a second. And I was like, that's fucking crazy. And then I came home and I bought it for the PSVR. And um, Batman VR is actually a pretty cool game, too, man. Like, you see the Joker up close and, like, Robin. And there's a few jump scares in that fucking game, too. Anyways. I gotcha. And to you talking about Beat Saber, just remind me. Hopefully, they're the, the makers of Beat Saber are watching this modding community because some of these mods I found are so cool. Yeah, I hope they just start implementing some of this stuff in that game because I feel like the game now itself is really limited. Like I'm like, oh, these twenty songs, you know, I can do the campaign. But now, you know, with this mod, I can. Just, I mean, I know they would have to monetize that in some way, I guess. But um, you know, I can just type in a song and it's there, and, you know. And but there's all these custom like sabers I can download. I downloaded uh, the Minecraft pickaxes. So you have two giant Minecraft pickaxes <laughs> and you're like swinging them around. It's absolutely hilarious. Mm, shit. And then there was like different, just different weapons. There's ones that actually aren't even colored. They look like actual, actual weapons. You know, they're, they're not red and blue. They just look like two really big like swords. And I even had one from like Terraria. They were like, 
uh, like eight bit sprite looking things. And then, you know, you have them in your hands and you're swinging and just really cool features. And then your background, like in the game, you, there's different backgrounds. Like I have one riding a dragon. It's like flapping wings and stuff. And you're riding on the back of the dragon as the beats come at you. And another one is called like trippy. And it, it's like waves of like psychedelic colors coming at you. It's all like pink and flowery and it's, it's all bouncing up and down. It, it's really wild. But that's all I have. <laughs> that VRness that you know, and you just think, Jesus, we're gonna have to go man. through this again yeah. when when Gunny gets his in November. Yeah, we're gonna Gunny's like, gonna have two weeks of VR, VR. talk. <laughs> yeah, Dude, it's gonna be at least three or four. Gunny's gonna talk all about Astrobot, Batman. I'm gonna buy them all. Speed Saver, <laughs> Firewall, Zero Hour, all again, guys. It's gonna be 2017 all over. Woo! <laughs> I can't wait. And then, you know, like, I'm going to have to, like, my kid's going to just want to co- play it constantly, I'm sure. So, oh, yes, I'm, I'm running that already. I'll I get him his own account day. because everything will be completed and finished. The one game, by the time I get hold of it. The one game you guys cannot get me to try is Resident Evil 7. I will not fucking oh, play it in VR. Yeah. I will not do yeah. it, dude. I'm too scared for me that either. shit. That's just too scary for me. I'll fucking have nightmares for the rest of my life. I won't be able to sleep. What's his name, Mr. Uh, Mr. Something on there, he he scares the hell out of me because he will just come up and just pummel you. Yeah, no, not just that, but think about all the jump scares in that game and all the weird shit that goes on. Like, right. Like, oh, you turn around, the TV's on, you turn around, the TV's off, you're like, <gasps> who turned the TV off? Who turned it off? You turn around, the TV's on once again, you're like, oh, shit, it turned on again by itself. The fuck all that, the door's closed behind you, like, no way. What about dude. playing Blair Witch on there? Yeah. In VR, no way. Dude. Yeah, any horror game, any horror game in VR, it doesn't matter if you're in the dark or not. You're you're in the VR. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so you're in there, dude. You know what I mean? Like it's fucking, it's crazy. No way. It's too bad I'd have to buy it separately because I already own it. I think Duck Season probably about my limit. Like yeah, you know that doesn't really have jump scares. It has that creepiness to it. What is the jump scare kind of in there with that when the dude's at the door recording you? Yeah, yeah, but that was kind of like a distance, and but like it's too bad that game. I I bought the you know regular version, and they have a separate VR version you have to buy, and I'm not gonna buy the game twice. So so it's just like, come on, guys, just give me the VR version for free. You know, like that's fucking stupid. You know who does that also is that super hot, like on the PlayStation. Oh. I didn't get to talk about it. I bought that this week, too. Yeah, I own Super Hot on the Xbox. I bought it on there, right, for 20 bucks on the Xbox. Or I think 15 bucks. I got it on sale. And then I bought it on the PS4 for 20 bucks. But guess what? I didn't buy the VR version, which is 30 bucks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's like, yeah. I want to end up paying like 70 something dollars to the Super Hot developers just to get access to their VR game. Like, that is some bullshit, man. Like, give me the. If you're gonna like charge twenty bucks for the non VR version and, and thirty bucks for the VR version, why not just sell one version that gives you both? Just sell me yes. a thirty dollar version that gives me both access to both. Like, like No fuck? Man's Sky. Yeah. Like No Man's and Sky. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. For me. You know. Yeah, man. Like fuck. It's kind of an, I, I'm with you there, Mayo. It's kind of annoying these developers do that. Yeah, they it seems like like they like all oh, these guys are stupid. They spent three hundred bucks on the VR headset. Let's charge them more for video games. You know what I mean? They have money. Why not? <laughs> they have money to spend. Yeah, like it's, it's exactly the thought, Gunny. Like these guys have money to blow on the fucking VR headset. Let's just charge them a premium price for this shit. Right. Like, he's gonna want to go back and play this game. That's yeah. Make him bad twice. Fucking ridiculous. But, but I will. I will talk about. Uh, Super hot mm-hmm. next week. I, I did play just a little bit too. That's another one of the ones I purchased. It was on sale this week on Steam. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I didn't play much on about, you know, I'll you head on it next week. In VR? Yes. It's, I have the VR original only. Super hot. Super hot. That shit's cool as fuck. I love super hot. Game's good. I'm never going to buy it on the PSVR unless it's on fucking sale or for free. Fuck that. I already bought the game twice. <laughs> I'm yeah. not buying it another time, guys. Fuck you. Uh, I want to speak about one last game that came out this week. It's kind of a big hit on the mobile side of things. Uh, Gears Pop came out. Yeah, I was going to ask Android, you guys. I did, I did play that today. Uh, An iOS. So Gears Pop is a kind of think of like a if you ever played um, Clash of Clash of was it not, not Clash of Clash Clash of Clash Royale Clash Royale. Clash Royale. Royale. <laughs> I was going to oh. say Clash of Kings, but it's not Clash of Queens or Clash of Clans. It's Clash Royale. 
all the clashes. If you play Clash Royale, where like you have the three lanes and you send soldiers, like this is you have two lanes. You send one to the right, one to the left. And you have two turrets that you defend and your main character that's at the back. If you kill the other person's two turrets and their main character, or just if you just kill their main character, then you win. But usually the the, the turret the soldiers will go for their turrets first and then they yeah, go for the main character. It's actually three lanes. Well in the yeah, middle the one down the middle. Yeah. The middle doesn't really count, Gunny. I mean you can send soldiers that only attack straight towards the other people's turrets, but they don't to me that doesn't really count. Wow. No, those do count because that's the fuck you, Gunny. the big guy. The big guy goes count. down the middle yeah, and everyone goes down the, the middle that doesn't the stop. Soldiers. Yeah, the ones that don't stop just go down the middle, but the ones that capture the little bar- like the little covers. Oh, right. Well, that's the ones whatever. you want to send out. Whatever, first, right? Gunny, you motherfucker you. Anyways, <laughs> So I, I played the shit out of this game. I'm actually level seven now, I think. Hold on, let me pull it up real quick. What level am I? I'm, I'm like level seven or six or something. What level are you, Gunny? Le- level, I just hit level two before we started the show. Oh, wow, you haven't been playing this So I'm able long. to join a clan. I actually spent like ten bucks on the game, I think. I, I, I bought the... There's like a like, oh, a welcome pack for like five bucks and you get a shitload of credits or whatever. So I think I bought that. Maybe that's what I actually bought, actually. Yeah, here's Pop Mail. You can actually join the Horrible Gamers Clan. Let me know if you need to spot people. Because today, all of a sudden, literally, out of nowhere, we had like like 20 members. And out of nowhere, like literally like in a span of like 10 seconds, we got like 30 new members. Like in a span of fucking, like it must have been bots or out of Chinese hackers. I don't fucking know, man. But it was like... Boom, 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 boom. This person joined your clan. 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 So I'm like, these are all people that I never recognized. Like, some of them... Uh, like, there's some of you out there that are listeners to the show. Like, Divine Fire 7, which I played Horde Mode with today. Uh, Gunny... Uh, Gib is in there. Uh, uh, King Jiggly's in there. Uh, so a few other people that I've noticed their gamer tags are in there. Because um, you can actually link... What's really cool about this game, you can actually link your Xbox Live account to this game, and it gives you achievements for your Xbox Live account, which is pretty Yeah, I watched them pop today on my on my TV, so yeah. that was cool. And it actually, well, it actually pops up on your phone. Like, if you link it on your phone, it, like, it'll pop up like an Xbox Live achievement. And be like, boop, boop, like, you want to unlock this achievement. You want to unlock this achievement. You want to unlock this achievement. Congratulations. Which is pretty cool. Um, so anyways, like I said, if you need space, let us know or let me know because I'm, I'm a chief in the clan or let Ryan know. He's the leader of the founder of the clan or whatever. Let him know or let King Jiggly know and we will kick people off of the clan to make room for you. If you're a listener of the show, you get priority. Um, we had the clan set to open so anyone could join and I think that's why like 30 people joined at once. Um, anyways, I actually got to play a little bit of the... Well, I played a lot of the battle or like you battle other people on Xbox Live or whatever. Which is pretty cool because it'll show my gamer tag on the bottom. It'll say like like it'll show like an Xbox li- like an Xbox logo, and then it'll say Jesus walks a lot, and then I'll show the other person's like Xbox logo and their gamer tag. So I'm like I'm thinking to myself, like, I wonder if I should get on Xbox and just message these people trash, like trash talk these people, like you suck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could do that. That's the not, that's an option your, you would normally be able to do. Yeah, with other I, mobile. I whipped your ass in this mobile game. You suck. <laughs> yeah, good. Take your phone and loser. yourself out of this country, you loser. <laughs> Just trash talk people and get banned on Xbox Live. <laughs> Anyways, so like I, I was playing this today, and uh, so we're all, <laughs> I was playing it, and um. I actually decided to play the horde mode. So the horde mode's a little bit different, honey. I don't know if you actually played this or not, but the horde it, mode... It, I, it showed lock, so maybe I need to... Maybe yeah. now that I'm level 2, it'll open up? I think you have to reach a certain level to open them up. And then once you do open it up, you have to earn these coins or these, like, these special tokens that you have to use. So, like, for example, I have one that says, like, General ROM. So, like, General ROM... It says, like, I have to, like, initiate that token. So I select that token, and it'll say difficulty, like, normal, easy, or hard, or whatever. And, like, for that, it says normal. So I clicked that today. And um, and I have other tokens that say super difficult. Like, I have other tokens that say, like, the, like this difficulty is super, 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 super fucking hard. Don't try this unless you have, like, really good cards. But I, I played this one today was, like, General ROM. I played, actually, three rounds of this. So you, uh, 
you select that, you select your starting deck, you have your like you get more decks the more you level up. <laughs> so I have my main deck. You click that and then it I think it sends an invite to your clan. Like it just goes to your clan and it's like anyone wants to join Jesus Walks a lot in this horde mode. Yeah, I saw the co-op. And then, like, yeah, like, you want to join Jesus in co-op? And then, like, people can say yes or no, and then they say yes. And then, like, it'll be, like, one more person with you in the horde mode. And you and this other person have to fight General Rom. So, like, it shows, like, it's kind of like the same game where, like, the dude's on the other side with his turrets or whatever. Uh, but General Rom doesn't have turrets. He just has, like, himself because he's so OP. And, like, he's up there, and then, like, you spawn your soldiers, and you have to get up there, and you have to kill him to win the match. So you kill him, you win that round, you get like five grenade tokens or whatever to upgrade your grenades. You kill him again, you win that round, you get like five soldier tokens to upgrade your soldiers. You kill him once again, like it's three rounds, three rounds, right, Gunny? Okay, right, yep. Once you get to the last round, you get like the super card. Like, like if you kill him in this round, you're going to get like the epic, legendary, like the big guy card you get like one of those cards to upgrade your big guy um and like for the life of us dude me and divine fire uh divine fire seven we were playing today and um we couldn't for the life of us beat this guy in the last round like i i already done it i done it twice with other randoms like we beat the the horde more i beat the horde more twice with other randoms like all three rounds but this round this last fucking time i was playing this last round, I couldn't. We couldn't beat it, dude. And like mm. me and me and Divine Fire, we were playing it, and like we kept sending soldiers out, and we kept sending like we got all the way to his base, and like he was just so OP against us, dude. Like he had these like crazy whirlwinds with like the the krill, like the bats, and they were like coming at us, and they were like they would just like fuck our guys up. They would fuck out like our special cards, like our level, like the cards that take like five of the mana or whatever, like the power points. The cards are like, for example, Marcus Phoenix, he takes five, right? He takes five with the little points yeah. to like launch. Like, I would launch him, and like, all of a sudden, General Rom would like spawn the Krill, and the Krill would like go up to him and like be like a tornado around my Marcus Phoenix, and then they would kill him. And it's like, what the fuck, dude? And we were spawning snipers, and, and like, we died the first time, and then we tried to redo it. Like, it says, like, spend, it said on there, like, spend 10 of your gold. Like little crystals or whatever. Like pe- spend ten crystals to like retry this level. Oh yeah, come on. So me and uh, me and Divine Fire, we retried it once, and then, like, we just couldn't do it. We got our asses kicked again. We got pretty close, I think, the second time. We got a little bit closer, but we couldn't beat it. And then um, finally, like we got killed again. And then I was waiting to see if Divine Fire wanted to retry, because it says like when you select yes, it says like waiting for a partner to retry. And I think he just left. <laughs> he's like yeah i'm not gonna like, fuck this he might be but, tempted to spin those 10 coins you know but we still get like credit for the other two rounds we beat him so we still get like the grenade credits like we get five grenade coins and the two soldier coins or whatever for beating the first two rounds but we don't get that credit for that last round and then once you're done with that you you don't have that um horde mode card anymore so like now the next time i play horde mode we're gonna have to play it on a difficulty like with against against another different enemy. For example, that first one was General Rom. I think the next one's like some other evil dude from the from the Locust or whatever the fuck. So okay. it changes the characters you play against. Um, but I'm really liking the game, man. Um, I think Gears Pop is a little fun game. Of course, it's kind of pay to win. I mean, it's a mobile game. <laughs> the fuck you expect? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just because it's Microsoft. <laughs> Phil Spencer will never ask for our money. Yeah, no, he doesn't yeah, give right. a shit. He doesn't give a shit about you or your money. <laughs> EA is probably now making their own cell phone yeah. right now, and it's probably gonna have a credit card reader built at the bottom yeah, of it. Yeah, EA They're already making a, a gears pop killer. You know? Yeah, like EA will make Apex Apex pop. <laughs> yeah, Apex pop the same as gears pop. I, I think it's really smart of Microsoft to team up with actually. Um, I actually think it's really, really smart on Microsoft to team up with the Pop team and release this game because the characters do, they look kind of like Gears characters, but they're like the Pop version. So, like, when you get them in little loot crates and they, it'll say, like, you have a new, uh, like a new, like a new token for, like, uh, Marcus Phoenix. Like, it'll show Marcus Phoenix in the little, like, 
when he shows up. He says he's in the pop box. Yeah, he's in the pop box. Yeah. And then like it pops, like the pop box pops open, and like like it pulls off of him. And it's like, hey, you know how Marcus Phoenix? Woo! Like it feels good. It feels like a like like a high. Like like it like these motherfuckers know. Gunny, they know. They know. Did you see uh, Wingman 709's post today in this Xbox Life? What do you put? The Facebook group that he... So now he started his his uh, pop collection. Dude, they know. It's like it's like they a crack addiction, dude. Gunny, like, they, they, <laughs> they post... They Wingman. They post those pop boxes in there to make you want to buy pop boxes. But you know what's really smart about Microsoft? Teaming up with Pop. Pop is a fucking... Pop is like a cultural phenomenon right now. They're kind of like... Like Beanie Babies, like like everyone in my generation wants one. Everyone in my generation has them. Think about fucking Ryan Gibson, Gib dude. He has like a whole room full of that shit. Like mm-hmm. literally a fucking room. Oh, who was it today? It full was full of uh, that shit. What is, was it? Uh, Bill I'll Gardner. Bill now. Gardner. It wasn't crafty. No, no, it was it was Bill Gardner. Bill Gardner the second has. Oh, a Bill whole, Gardner. Yeah, so he has he, a whole yeah. room of that shit, dude. He's actually sold. Like full collections, like full sets of his pops. Like he sold, I think he sold like, like well, I don't know if he sold his Mass Effect collection, but say for example, like he sold his Mass Effect collection, like Commander Shepard, Tally, Ash, uh, fucking Garrus, Edie, all those characters from Mass Effect. He sold all of them, and like he still has like three hundred or something left. Yeah. Think about nice. these fucking things cost like twelve bucks a piece or some shit like that. Yeah, that was remember actually when I traveled to uh, this flea market thing with my wife. They had actual shops there. That's all they were. And they were like more than that. They were $30, 40 50 $60, but according to the rarity, you know, you can the buy different ones. The only pop that I've ever, ever bought in my life was the Cuphead. Um, do I still have them? I don't have them. I can't give them to my <laughs> daughter. Uh, it was a little pop. It was a Cuphead. And it was like a limited exclusive edition to Walmart. And the only reason I bought it was because he was on clearance for like seven bucks. I was like, you know what, I'll buy it. And my daughter kept bugging me, dude. You can, I can, I'm not, (laughs) I cannot emphasize how much. Every time she saw him on the fucking desk over here, she's like, dad, why do you have this? And I'm like, it's a pop. She's like, why do you have Cuphead in here? Because it's pop. Because she knows it's kind of weird, man. But little kids know who Cuphead is. Like my daughter's seven or she's eight now, but she knew who Cup. She knows who Cuphead is. Like Microsoft did a really good job marketing that to little kids or somehow, even though it's a really hard game. She knows exactly who Cuphead is. But she was like, "Why is Cuphead in this box? Why do you have him in this box?" And I'm like, "It's a pop box." And she's like, "Well, what's what's a pop box? <laughs> what the fuck are you keeping this thing in a box for?" <laughs> so finally, I was like, "Here you go. You can have Cuphead." And I gave it to her. First thing she did was open that thing out of the fucking box. Like, yeah. fuck this box. Not enough. No, no, we do that now. We keep that in the box. Fuck this box. We don't need this box. First thing she did was get rid of that box. But um, but yeah, it was kind no of tampering with the box. It was kind of interesting to see how like. When, when she first saw that character and she was like, why do you have Cuphead over here? Like, I didn't know she knew who Cuphead was. I was like, who the fuck? What do you mean? Like, you know who that is? And she's like, yeah, I know Cuphead. She's like, I played that game before. I see it on stream. I'm like, oh, that's how she knows how it is. Like, I guess streamers or something must have somehow got her to know who Cuphead is. It's fucking weird. Because that game is difficult as shit. And she, I remember when she saw it on my Xbox, she was like, I want to play Cuphead. I'm like, you can't. You don't want to play Cuphead. I want to play Cuphead. I finally let her play Cuphead, and like, <laughs> she got tired of losing to that fucking. I can boss. easily see. I know Cuphead. They're doing the Netflix thing, right? Yeah. Or is it Hulu? Mm-hmm. No, it's and, Netflix. Yeah. And, and I can see it it, it coming to mobile. Mm-hmm. We, you know, whatever it. It'll it, have it a does big. Come out. It'll become a big kids show, I think, or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, even though they say it's not targeted towards toddlers. I think kids like age ranges like it's cartoony. Yeah, I think the kids so, like yeah. seven to twelve or whatever will be watching it. You know what I mean? Yeah, they'll be watching fucking Cuphead. It'll be their SpongeBob when they get old. Yeah. <laughs> anyways, anyways, gears gears pop people join the horrible gamers clan on there. Join it, Mayo. Get on there. You know you want a mobile game, Mayo. I know. You know I have my phone. I literally have zero games on it, so yeah. I first can, pop, first one. 
I used to play a lot of Clash of Clans back in the day. That's like the only mobile game I really ever played. And uh, Clash Royale is actually pretty good too, but I just haven't no, played it in yeah. a long time. I was actually on a YouTube video. There's a famous YouTuber uh, for Clash of Clans. His name was Clash with Ash. And he actually, um, we were in a clan that did a 50 attack in the first 50 seconds of the war. Back when they're doing wars, we had 50 people, and so we did 50 attacks in the first 50 seconds, and we were like just destroying this other team. Damn. It's a really neat little YouTube video. It's actually out there. It's kind of funny. It's, it's getting a little older now, but you'll see. Uh, I have a had an account on there called Little Mayo at the time, and it was like a no defense base, a clash of clans. That was like one of the bottom ones, you know. But it, it was a fun event back back in the day. Damn. All right. Well, speaking of Gears Pop, I I know. Did you? So you're gonna join our clan when you get to level three, right, Gunny? Yes. Doesn't take. Well, long, no, dude. I can join now. It said level two. All right. Well, then join it, and we'll yeah, uh, yeah. we'll make room for it. I had a hard time finding it, so like, I typed horrible gamers. and didn't find it, so I ended up just typing horrible. Just type in horrible, and it'll find it. Um, like I said, you have to send us a message and. We'll have to make it closed and kick people out to get people in there. But, um, but yeah. Move on to some news, Gunny. News. It's news, news time! time. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep. <laughs> Thanks for the sound effects. Sound Gunny. effect. Mm, yeah. Speaking of news, Mayo, there's a new Walking Dead game coming. Oh, you didn't see that on the news Oh, list. yeah, what? It's surprise yeah. news. No, this no. is surprise news, here. Gunny. So, Sur- Servios is a U.S.-based developer uh, behind Raw Data, so the company that made Raw Data. And um, they're actually going to be making a new game called The Walking Dead Onslaught for VR coming this fall. Huh. This game is actually going to use the likeness of Rick Grimes, uh, Michonne, and uh, what's the other fucker with the crossbow? his name dude with the Norman crossbow Reyes? I don't know yeah, his Norm, character Norman name Reyes. I don't know his character name um, <laughs> oh Daryl Daryl yeah. Daryl Dixon <laughs> poor white name so Daryl Michonne Carol and Rick are going to be in the game you're going to pl- get to play as them and their voice acted by the actual like cast of Walking Dead like they actually got like the dude who does Rick Crimes to be hmm. the voice of Rick, the person who does Carol to be the voice of Carol, the person who does the voice who plays Michonne on the show, she's doing the voice of Michonne, and Norman Reedus is of course doing Daryl. Um, so in this game, you're gonna be pretty much surviving, scavenging for supplies, etc., going through cities, going through survival, I guess. Um, in in VR though, you're gonna be killing zombies in VR, male. With mm. with like swords and pistols and shotguns and oh, I hope they oh. keep it simple and just I can just raise the crossbow and shoot and reload it and shoot. I was watching gameplay. They actually released gameplay for it for Gamescom this year. So they actually said that hey look we got gameplay for Gamescom. Watch this trailer and they released the gameplay and it looks all right. It looks like a VR gameplay. <laughs> it looks VR gameplay kind of never looks good in two D. You gotta be in it to really understand it. So it kind of looks kind of shitty, but maybe it's gonna be a good game. It's actually coming to the Oculus Vive and uh, Index Mail. No PSVR mm. word yet, so we'll see. Maybe it's not coming to PSVR. So yeah. Mm. Cool. Uh, keep watch out for it. You keep watch out for it. Another news. While you keep watch out for that, Microsoft has been keeping a watch on you, Mayo. Oh, oh. here we go, here we go. This we is why I don't have before, a account. This now. is why it took me forever to get an Xbox, because I didn't want to share my secrets. <laughs> Microsoft contractors have been listening to Xbox owners in their home. It says here no, multiple... They said they were it before. Listen, honey. I, I've already said this in the past. You can go back on the Horrible Gamers podcast... I don't know which episode. Listen to all of them, people. That's right. Listen to all of them. <laughs> and you'll hear me talk about how Microsoft is listening to us. Because there's been moments where I've I've said something in my home. And all of a sudden, inside the Microsoft dashboard or in an email from Microsoft or something like that, I'll get that same thing mentioned back to me in, in like a cell. Like, hey, you want to buy 
this new thing. It's like, what? I don't want to buy this. Like, you want to buy a Windows phone, Jesus? We heard <laughs> you say you think Windows phones look cool. Do you want to buy a Windows phone? And, I, and like, I swear to God, like, I was what the fuck are they doing? And sure enough, it says here, an article with Vice, that multiple contractors working for Microsoft are not going to explain how they listen to audio captured by Xbox consoles. It says here, contractors working for Microsoft have listened to audio of Xbox users speaking in their homes in order to improve the console's voice command features. Uh, the audio was supposed to be captured following a voice command like Xbox or Hey Cortana, but contractors said that the recordings were sometimes triggered and recorded by mistake. Ooh. The news is the latest in the string of revelations that show contractors working on behalf of Microsoft listen to audio captured by several of its products. Motherboard previously reported that human contractors were listening to some Skype calls. Surprise, surprise, guys. Listening to our Shocker. podcast. Woo! Woo, guys! I, 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 A listener. Didn't I just say this last <laughs> week, guys? Didn't I say this last week, Mayo, that they were listening to us on the show? Yeah, I think you did. Yeah. yeah, they're listening to us. I know they are, because... There's shit that goes on in this fucking internet that I see. I'm like, there's no way Microsoft knew we were talking about this unless they're listening to us. There's no fucking way. Anyways, it says here, they're listening to some Skype calls as well as audio recorded by Cortana, which is Microsoft's Siri-like virtual assistant. It says here, quote, Xbox commands came up first as a bit of an outlier and then became about half of what we did before becoming most of what we did. One former contractor who worked on behalf of Microsoft told Motherboard. It says here, uh, the former contractor said they worked on Xbox audio data from 2014 to 2015 before Cortana was implemented into the console in 2016. When it launched in November 2013, the Xbox One had the capability to be controlled via voice commands with the Kinect system. Um, it says here, straight away some users and commentators were concerned with the idea of Kinect listening to Xbox users waiting for commands such as Xbox On. Microsoft at the time in a statement said, quote, Connect for Xbox 360 was designed and built with strong privacy protections in place, and the new Connect will continue this commitment, end quote. The former contractor said most of the voices they heard were of children. That's even worse. That doesn't make this even better. <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah. We're listening to little kids. That doesn't make this any fucking better, man. It says here, quote, The Xbox stuff was actually a bit of a welcome respite, honestly. It was frequently the same games, same DLCs, same types of commands. Uh, Xbox give me all the games for free, or Xbox download the newest Minecraft skin packs, or whatever they added. The former contractor was paid 10 bucks an hour for their work. Must be real, real bedded. <laughs> Employee. Yeah, boring <laughs> job. It says here, occasionally I heard Xbox tell Solas to heal or something similar, which would be a command for Dragon Age Inquisition, the former contractor said. And that listening continued as the Xbox moved from using Connect for commands over to Cortana. A current contractor provided a document that describes how workers should work with different types of Cortana audio, including commands given to control an Xbox. It says here, quote, a domain for controlling gaming features such as finding friends lists, creating party, inviting players to a party. Most Xbox controlling belong to this domain. Uh, it says here, a section of the document reads, with the domain being a topic that transcribed Cortana audio should be sorted into to improve the system. So it's pretty much here, like, uh, they've just been listening to Xbox people use their Xbox. Yeah. I yeah. believe it. You know, you you're gonna, Jesus, you're going to start getting ads to Mayo. Like, you're going to start getting mayonnaise ads to your... Yeah, best food. <laughs> you know what? You're probably fucking right, mayonnaise. I'm probably going to get, like, real food. <laughs> <laughs> it was the, it was the, the best real mayonnaise right here. Down, go here and get 20% off your next purchase at Safeway for a real... You probably have a crap truck circling your neighborhood right now waiting for you to leave to like kind of drive by. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I did need mayonnaise. Oh, wow. I, what do a... need, I do need mayonnaise, Cunny. Oh, oh, my. How dare you? You just reminded me. I was just talking about that on Skype. <laughs> we were just talking about that on Skype towards on our Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if, like, 
do you think advertisers listen to the podcast to listen to what we want? Like, all right, this guy needs a new microphone. I mean, you know what? I bet <laughs> you there's like key words. Like they probably don't listen to the whole thing. Like, uh, <clears throat> sort of like play YouTube like a has machine. Yeah. Yeah. The algorithm? Yeah, maybe it's like a software thing where, like, you know, they'll pick up on certain words and then it'll focus, you know, instead of them listening to be, like, computer done, and it'll mm. look for certain key, like, trigger words, I guess you could say, mm-hmm. and then this guy needs they a would new know. Yeti is advertising to you. Just, you need a new microphone. Woo! There we go. Yeah, Yeti, send us some microphones, and we'll uh, we'll we'll talk about your microphones. We gotta reach out to like some of these guys that podcast that maybe do like a pizza podcast. You know, do they yeah. just constantly get ads from so pizza, like, like Domino's, and Round shit, Table, pizza, and like, Round Table, Domino's, yeah, Little Caesars and shit, fucking advertising yeah. to them. Jets Pizza. Jets. Well, I can't forget about Jets. Jets. We had a good conversation today about Jets that. Jets on Discord. <laughs> Anyways, guys, moving on here to some more advertising. PlayStation, Gunny, excuse me, it's giving away games. Oh, I like free games on PlayStation. Like free games? You like free games? Well, it says here, Look Sony... The cover, Astro Bot. I bought a year of uh, PS, PS Now or Live or whatever it is. Yeah. Well, no, no, not just that, Gunny. It says here, Sony is now sending lucky PlayStation 4 owners a free game. You must check your email, Gunny. It says here, are you feeling lucky... You may want to check your emails regardless, because Sony is now sending out free copies of the Astrobot Rescue Mission to select Ooh. PlayStation 4 fans. It is unclear whether this game is reserved for PlayStation VR owners, but we recommend you rifle through your inbox regardless to see if you got a code. Uh, so there you go. Check your emails. You know what? I have, Astrobot. like, on my uh, my PlayStation, my inbox, I have not received one one message yet, so I'm feeling a little lonely over there. Oh, you need more emails from Sony? Is that what you're saying? More marketing? Yeah. More marketing. Yep. Maybe Tomorrow to Sony's going to give them about 20 I need to hook emails. up that microphone. 20 emails to buy a new VR. <laughs> <laughs> VR on sale! We are 20% off if you get a Best Buy today, Gunny. Woo! We hear you want Astrobot? <laughs> we hear you like VR? Woo! <laughs> Uh, let's see here, move on here to more news. What the fuck do we have here for this? What is this news gun? Did you put this on here? Uh, which one? I did Bungie put it. Bungie says I, 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 Activision yeah. wasn't a prohibitive overload, overlord on Destiny 2. It says here, Bungie's surprise Destiny 2 divorce from Activision earlier this year left an impression among some fans that the biggest problem with the game up to that point was Activision. It says here, the dramatic updates Bungie has made to the game since then, including the Ever Eververse store monetization and the upcoming launch of the free New Light, have helped solidify the belief in that interview with Eurogamer. Eurogamer. However, the communication director, David Deej Dog, said that the split was not acrimonious, but simply the result of changing priorities. He said, quote, I think we need to dispel the notion that Activision was some prohibitive overlord that wasn't letting us do awesome things. We launched this franchise with Activision. Naturally, and over the course of time, we both decided that we had different goals for what it was intended to be. So we went our separate ways. Kind of like me and my marriage. Um, Sister, it was a big bowl, and we are making this game on our own. Doing what we think we need to do to make it awesome. It says the move to Steam and implementation of cross save and the free to play version and other big changes are coming to Destiny 2 is simply a reflecting changes in the industry and Budgie's willingness to evolve along with it, Dog said. He said, We will do whatever we think is best for the community and welcome new people in. Sometimes these are painful evolutions. When we were blending the Halo Nation with the PlayStation Nation, there were some of these moments where we had new people joining Bungie.net to join clans and ask questions. But I'm very sensitive to the fact that the lifeblood of a community is the ability to bring in new faces to keep it fresh. There you go, guys. I, I agree with this. I think I think there are way too many Destiny sympathizers out there, especially when it came to a lot of toxic behavior with where, you know, like, whether it be, I don't know, paid... Stuff should I, you should can I buy, buy Destiny? Should I buy Destiny on Steam, Lenny? 
That's what I'm going to do. I think it unlocks in, what, 54 days is what I read today. Five weeks is when wonder, it unlocks. Like I, I still have but it I, you know, on Battle.net. I, like, I never brought it over to Steam. I wonder if I can... Bring it over? You probably can. Yeah, you can. So you can... I'm pretty sure Nipron can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you can buy it today on Battle.net, and then it will migrate to Steam on in five weeks. That's Okay, yeah, because I still have it on Battle.net. I already... I said I own it, so... Yeah, so I'm pretty sure that's the way it works. Um, Big news on uh, Steam as well for Destiny 2 players. If you're looking to bring your game over to Steam, say you've been playing on the Xbox on PlayStation 4, you can now actually link your Destiny 2 account to your Bungie account and uh, pretty much lets you cross-play between any platform. So, like, say you own an Xbox, you own a PlayStation, you want to play with your Xbox friends... But you don't want to restart a new character. You want to carry that same badass over to the Xbox. So you simply have to log into Bungie, link your account, and link your platforms in your accounts there, and then just bring it over. Like you, you play the same Guardian on all of them. So it's all cross-save at this point. That's fucking I, cool, man. It's cross-save. I think in five weeks, things will change. It, well, actually, it's going to be a little bit longer, I think, before we can all cross-play. But yeah. the cross saving is in there, and I think they're kind of doing it right, the way they're setting this up right now with the saving, uh, cross save. That's that's so fucking cool to me, dude. How like you can like just go from like Xbox to PlayStation to PC to Xbox to PlayStation PC. I mean, it, it guarantees Destiny more sales of the game, right? Like if people yeah, absolutely. Really... Pinpoint Red was talking about <laughs> yeah. on GFG uh, this week about. Hey, look, I've got an account on Xbox. I've got an account on PlayStation. You know, and just kind of how they work within the Bungie.net. And do, does one delete the other? and Or, you know, does it save over the other? I think, I don't know. I guess we'll find out, like, maybe that's something you got to be careful about if you do own it on multiple consoles. It says here. Yeah, so be yeah, careful when you go to Bungie.net. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, I'm actually watching the Destiny 2 trailer right now on Steam. And it says, like, on here it says... Yeah, beginning August 20th, you can link your account on Battle.net and go from, like, PC to Xbox to PlayStation and carry your same Guardian across everything. All your progress, everything just carries over. Yeah, so I think when Google Incredible. Stadia comes out, I would just assume that, man, you're just going to be able to... Yeah, uh, yeah. To Google, cross actually, cross yeah, because Google Stadia is actually... Uh, Destiny 2, if you're a founder of the game, like, if you buy the Founders Edition, you actually get, like, all of Destiny 2 with it. So you get, like, the new expansions, the new things, and I'm pretty sure you'll be able to cross-play, like, get your character on there and keep playing. Yeah. Good things are happening with Destiny. Yeah. Go Bungie. Go Bungie. Interesting. Interesting. That's, that's... Cool, man. What do you think of that, Mayo? Do you like that? Cross- I do. I feel like it's such a smart way of doing it. Like, you know, and it's, to me, it was such an obvious step. Like, why didn't we come up with this sooner? Like, <laughs> one master account, and yeah. you can just log into that master account off any device and just take that account with you anywhere. Like, why didn't we just come up with that sooner? No. You think it was money? Yeah. Like, it was like, we want them to, you know, Call of Duty. Maybe I think maybe the most guilty one of this is. We want them to buy it on the Xbox to play their Xbox friends, and we want them to buy buy it on the PlayStation so they, they can play their PlayStation friends. Well, hey, look and at, you know look what's at, uh, changed everything? It's Fortnite. Right. Look at what we talked about. Let's go back three months and talk about what PlayStation's response was uh, to first, anything yeah. as far as, you know, cross, save, cross play. They were really, like, and everything you read into it, they were opposed to all of it. They didn't want but, to do it at first, but I mean, you. I mean, in a way, like we give a lot of shit to Fortnite for being like, "Oh, Fortnite, everyone's copying Fortnite," but like, you gotta give it up to Epic and, and the people at Fortnite who, who like, yeah, have made a game that's such a phenomenon and such a force that can that can it can actually like make these big companies bend to their will almost. You know what I mean? Like, dauntless. Mm-hmm. Like, listen to. You, you like motherfucker, you're not gonna listen to me. Like, okay, okay, we'll make you we'll listen take to our us. game off of your system. <laughs> yeah, we'll make PlayStation listen. If you don't want to listen to us, we will yeah. make you listen, PlayStation. And PlayStation was like, well, fuck, 
I guess we have to do it, guys. We have to allow the crossplay. Just, just fuck it. I guess we'll just uh, play with those dirty Xbox people. Fuck it. Let's go play with those Xbox hobos over there. You know what I mean? Like it's just like they had to do it. Like it was <laughs> like no no question about it. And like you got to give it up to them for being able to do that. Like like in a way, if think of like if Fortnite would have never become big. Do you think PUBG Corporation would have done the same? Do you think yeah. like like some I don't know. PUBG? I don't think they would have. Think think if PUBG would have like if Fortnite never came out, Fortnite never came. But if PUBG was the Fortnite, if PUBG was still as big as it was a few years ago, like the main right. thing. Do you? I don't think PUBG would have done the same I don't, thing. I don't think he would. Have. I think it's just the smartness of Epic. You know, if you really, if you remember back to even before this became an issue with with PlayStation and Xbox and the cross play. When it would come out on mobile, they told Apple, you know, like I'm not paying, I'm not paying you guys to put my game on your store. Yes. And they were battling with Apple, and so they just were like, okay, we're just going to make our own launcher, and we'll just have the people download it from our launcher off their phone and install it. <laughs> I remember yeah, that. Yeah. And I remember because Apple was like, hey, we want thirty percent of your game, you know, yeah. your income, and and they were like, no, you know, you know, yeah. right. Well, <laughs> Watch this, you know, we're going to, and they did the same thing with Android. You know, Android wanted a cut. So what do they do? Okay, you can't get Fortnite on your phone in the Apple, or the, the Android store. But if you go to this website, you just download the, I can't APK, what they call right? it, the yeah. EXE for a phone. Yeah. You just download it here and you'll have the game, you yeah, know. you're and, right. I remember about all that, yeah. yeah. And, you know, they, they did the exact same thing to Apple. So this company, Epic, took on Apple and made you pretty much said, screw you Apple. They did the same thing to Google. Yeah. They did the same thing to Sony. They did you know they didn't really do it to Microsoft, but yeah. Microsoft I don't know knew better. I think Microsoft knew better. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean but yeah, you're they pretty right. much gave everybody the finger and said, you know what, we're we, you're gonna bend to us. Our game is the number one game right now. We are the biggest thing on the planet, and we have a billion kids coming behind us. And these kids are growing up, and these kids are going to be the future. Yeah. And we got this yeah. under wraps. Good luck saying yeah, no I'm to sure, us, you assholes. <laughs> I'm sure when uh, when Dauntless when it when it debuted on on the PlayStation Store, you know, yeah, as a free to play game, and it's not the greatest game, right? But and, Dauntless is still a pretty good hit. I think like they still got yeah. a pretty popular game there. And I think PlayStation, the just the the big wigs over there, you know, they just kind of the corporate overlords are just, just kind of like, ah, you know, <laughs> pick your own battles, I guess. You know, it's going to happen. Here it is. You know, we didn't want it, but you know, it's Epic. So, Xbox I mean, is really on our smart, console, like said, whether I'm, we like it or not. I'm not going to say I'm a fan of Epic, but their their business moves are straight up cutthroat. Like they are not to not to the customer, and I don't think they're pro customer. I think they are pro. They're they pro are a money. company. And they want that money, money and, yeah. and they will undercut, you know, they showed it. They showed They'll it. fuck they over any Sony. corporation to get more will, money for themselves. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can just picture them taking, they just took Sony and just like hung them upside down and shook the change out of hey, them. Hey, like, you know what? You fucking this is what you're going to do. Yeah. And we're not paying you this money. We're not paying you any royalties by putting our stuff on your store. Yeah. You're coming to us. <laughs> yeah, you're no. right. You're, you're completely right, man. I mean, and and actually, I, I applaud them for that because it actually shows these other companies like PlayStation and Microsoft. It's Microsoft itself, dude. Like, hey, you need crossplay. You need to engage like everyone at the same time um, because everyone everyone's praising Microsoft right now. Everyone's like, oh, Phil Spencer, greatest thing ever. He's the walking messiah of gamers. But think of Microsoft twelve years ago. You know, back in two thousand nine, two thousand eight. When Sony was offering crossplay, Sony said, "Like, yeah, hey, maybe we should do crossplay for Call of Duty games." And Microsoft was like, "We will never do crossplay. <laughs> we mm-hmm. don't need crossplay for the Microsoft systems." Look who came crawling now. You know what I mean? Like, like you right. don't know what's gonna happen in the next ten fucking years. You should be careful what you fucking say. And uh, and and sure enough, like I guess Phil Spencer probably wasn't. Yeah. He wasn't the lead at the time. He wasn't the boss at the time. But, like, you know, other people were there that are still there now that are probably were part of that decision that probably agreed with their boss. Like, yeah, fuck, fuck the Sony. Fuck the crossplay. <laughs> right now that Sony is on top, they're probably thinking the same thing Microsoft was thinking. Like, fuck that, we're on top. We don't right. need Microsoft. We don't need the Xbox to bring 
players through our shit. Like, we don't need them to make more money. And, like, I think at the end of the day, a company like Stadia has it right. Where, like, everyone can game on anything, anywhere, anytime. I, I think that's the future, man. You know, it, it just kind of popped in my head, just kind of the way you worded things. Do you remember back when the birth of the PlayStation, like, when they were doing the thing with Nintendo? Yeah. And do you ever read up on that? And, and so, like, how history kind of repeats itself. Like, you know, Nintendo and uh, Sony are were working together, and then Nintendo dropped them. And they were yeah. like, we're not going to do a CD-based system. <laughs> yeah. And they went along with the cartridge and did the Nintendo 64. Well, Sony kept everything, was like, fine we did all this research with you we, we have everything here boom playstation you know i wonder if in the future we're going to see epic as being its own console type thing you know they kind of had these ideas of doing cross play and nobody wanted to play with them and then so they just went up and did their own thing and they have all this money and the backing and 10 cent and all that stuff i wonder if they're going to be our next like we're going to talk about Epic like we're going to talk about Nintendo and Sony that's, and Microsoft. That's crazy if, to think about, but you're right. They do have like a lot of money. And on top of that, they do have the backing of Tencent. So. Yes. Yeah. Could they eventually be Fuck. like, we're going to make a network and we're going to have the Epic <laughs> streaming yeah. platform. The Epic Stadium. <laughs> and we're going to charge Sony and Microsoft 30% to put their games yeah. in our You want to put your Xbox games on our shit? How about we charge you money, motherfucker? You know what I mean? You want to put your Halo shit on this? We charge you money. Uh, you're right, man. Like like I said earlier, like on the, even on the podcast, we were talking about earlier how Tencent can be this force that can force people to do things that they want to do. Mm-hmm. And maybe the the way they're doing that, or maybe the way they will end up doing that, will be through te- through Epic. Maybe they yeah. can be like, "Hey, fuck you!" Like, Epic, you listen to us, and you tell these people to do this. This is what we're and gonna maybe, do. And this is what we're gonna do, and we're gonna do it this way. And that's what, the way we do it. And there's no other way about it, man. I'm like, it's scary, but money talks at the end of the day. You know what I mean? That's what yeah. it is, right? Because going back to the Dauntless thing again, when they probably came to Sony and said, "Look, this is just free money for you." That's all it is. It's a free game, and it just goes on your store, and it makes you money. The problem with that, though, is going to if you have a player playing on your platform, the way I would look at it is, if I'm Sony and I have people that are playing on my system, and somebody releases a free game that's really good, for example, Fortnite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's and, a good example. And, I know where you're, and, and, where and, you're going. and they're spending all their time playing Fortnite, and it's buying skins, and, and if I get, like... No cut of that skin, like no money from them, which I'm sure Sony gets something from PlayStation, from Epic or whatever for the skins. But like, if I get none of that, like, what's the point of having that player on your platform if all they're doing is playing Fortnite? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like all they're doing is logging in to play Fortnite. Why the fuck would you? You don't make anything off of them besides them buying your console. That's well, right. I mean, it's more about like, like, you know, you're as long as you're on that console, right? And it's exposure. It and, doesn't mean anything because if they're not engaging with your shit, if they're only engaging with Fortnite, what, why do you need that person on your console? I think because it brings other people to that platform. How? Everything's crossplay. By the popularity of that game, you know, and, and, just, and it, it makes no to, sense. If I was Sony, I would be like, "Fuck you, Fortnite! You don't, you don't benefit me very much." But I'm pretty sure they already do make money off of the skins and all that stuff. They do make something off of that. They have to. Right. I mean, that was the whole beef with the fact that, you know, they wouldn't, at this juncture, they were like, whoa, why should we just, like, flip the switch and let Xbox owners, you know, Play with join us. in on with other PS4 players, right? The one thing that Because that could cut into our money. If I was Sony or if I was... Right. I, I guess this is the reason why they don't do it. But if I was Microsoft or if I was Sony... I wouldn't if I was Microsoft, I wouldn't let any Sony user display their skins or their special Sony exclusive shit on my platform. Like if you had a special exactly. parachute or something that was like a PlayStation parachute with the PlayStation logo on it, your ass that shit would look basic as fuck on my platform. It would look all black or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and if you had an Xbox logo on your parachute and you were like playing with PS4 players and like your parachute would look black. 
or something. You know what I mean? Like it wouldn't look like it wouldn't show on Xbox logo. And I wonder if they do that already or if they don't do that. I wonder if they, you know, if those do exist. But a lot of it doesn't because I think Epic Knows is better. very clear on, yeah. you know, this is all Epic stuff, you know. Well, oh, know and, they and they do have. Because PlayStation, like dude, a, PlayStation has like every time I go in the store, they have like a, hey, get your PlayStation Plus pack for Fortnite right now. Like they always are offering me, like, hey, you pay four bucks for this new Fortnite pack for PlayStation Plus owners. Like Xbox, that's the that's the one thing PlayStation has over Xbox. PlayStation is catering to their Fortnite players. I've never seen Xbox do a sale where they're like, hey, buy V Bucks for two dollars or something. It's, yeah, it's, whatever deal like, they're trying to cut with, you know, like, or work it, with Epic. Launch. To me, it seems like Xbox doesn't really give a fuck. And Sony's like, no, no, we know these Fortnite players. There's a lot of players. So how about we just right. sell them shit? We have the most consoles, so, yeah. Yeah, that's weird. Maybe, too, just I'm thinking, too, about how Epic gives away their free games. So maybe they're trying to build a library so when they do come out with a version of, like, Stadia or something like that, you have a library, too, already. Like, yeah. I mean, you, you got to look at as this company. They're giving away free games, but every company has an agenda. Every Why week? are they giving us free games? They they're wanting to make money off that somehow. They're not just going to give us something for free. Yes. And not have an agenda behind it. No, you know how, how dare they're not, you? They're not giving out samples. You need exposure, to, right? They want you on in their ecosystem, their platform, right? That's. Yeah. I that's wonder another. if we'll see a big a big announcement, say within the next year or two. The epic some console. Kind of, the epic box. The streaming console, or or something like that, where it's going to be. Big time, just epic, and maybe they'll start locking up exclusives. Can you imagine? Even like tenfold, like you know, as hard as they're pushing on the PC side, locking up all these exclusives. Can you imagine had their own console and just start locking all sorts of stuff up and teaming up with Ubisoft because they seem to be in bed with Ubisoft. Like everything is, you know, the man Stadia are, are kind of with Ubisoft all in on this. And and I mean. Like right now, I just got Fez for free on my PC. I'm like, hey, I downloaded that yesterday. Just downloading that yep. right now. Literally, just reminded me. Email. I just logged in. I downloaded it, and it says here next week, Celeste and Inside. Fucking yeah, great games. Yeah, another two gigs. Great yep. games, mm-hmm. amazing games for free. And like, like don't like if you just if you're a big Steam user, don't like blow off Epic man. Like get these free fucking games. It's kind of like if you have like Twitch Prime, get the Twitch Prime games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're kind of crummy, but I downloaded them or I got them, claimed them yesterday. Why not? Off my Amazon Prime, sure. Yeah, they're free. Free shit. Why not? Yeah. But yeah, it's gonna come with a price. You know, everything has a price to it. So what? What are they doing? Why are they bringing this in like that? They have a goal. Their goal is to. I think it's just to take over, man. To like eventually have yeah. enough players that they could just be like, "Fuck you, Steam. Fuck you." Everything else. You know what it is, Mayo? Like, you'll see, like, uh, every so often, you'll see some. I'm trying. (laughs) Here's a good one from Pinpoint Red, right? Like, the Atari, uh, the CEO of the company will be like, yeah, you know, they'll they'll make us, they'll have come out with a statement on IGN and we're moving forward to make one of the best classic, or, you know, the console, bring it back and it'll be the best thing ever. And it'll have all these things, and you can play all these games, and we'll have live interact. You know, I mean, just this whole shmeal of stuff, right? And and it's not so much to be on top, but it's just to take a little piece of that pie away from whether it be Sony or Microsoft or Steam. You know, that's right. what it is, right? They just want to take a cut, and it's a large. I mean, it's it's millions of dollars, right? That's what it leads to. Yeah. Right? It's not so much yeah. about being thus, but. Unlike unlike Epic's thing, that's where they, they you know theirs was with Fortnite, right? But they thought, well, we should just you know we have our own launcher. Let's just snag mm-hmm. exclusive with all this money that we have, you know. I think I think Sweeney just wants to buy North Carolina or South Carolina or whatever state he lives See, in. See, like he's, he's just buying up buy all that state. land, you know. Right. Yeah. He's got deep pockets now, so. He's buy a forest, he said. Yeah, I think he already did that. He did. Right? That's yeah. That's mm-hmm. already been done. Wasn't there? I just read an article about a, some kind of billionaire. I forget who the fuck it was. Some fucking asshole <laughs> he said he wants to buy fifteen percent of the world. 
<laughs> oh yeah, didn't you tweet at to, Donald Trump to about buying green land? It, to save it from, from like hazardous fucking like from world like global warming. I'm like, who the fuck are you gonna buy fifteen percent of the world, dude? That's a I'll big sell, fucking I'll chunk. I'll sell my lot. He can buy my lot. You know, buy fifteen percent of the oceans. Where you're gonna end up buying? What the fuck are you gonna buy fifteen percent? How the fuck is that even possible? Anyways, that's, that's just insane to me. Yeah. And we're moving on now. Moving on now, boys, to some PUBG news. PUBG is now go- getting crossplay for the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 in October. I don't know if we talked about this in the past, but yeah. So crossplay for PlayStation and Xbox users is coming, guys. I mean, this is big news, in my opinion. Uh, October 1st is when they plan to launch it. Uh, so, I mean, this is big news. On the cusp of, like, we were just talking about Fortnite, uh, Destiny 2 bringing, like, the cross-save. Not really cross-play, but cross-save, which is kind of like cross-play. You got to own the platform, though. <laughs> you still got to buy an Xbox if you want to play on Xbox. Um, but, I mean, not just that. We also have, like, Epic's Rocket League uh, come out and be cross-play on everything. Incredible game there. Um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Like we said before, it's going to have crossplay with your Activision account being logged in. It's just crazy, man. That's the future right there. Every gamer, I think, is going to be connected in the future. All gamers on every platform are just going to be connected. It's going to be incredible, man. Yeah. We complain about all these launchers on the PC. It's all going to be accounts with yeah. companies we're going to have. You know, you console guys are going to understand our pain. You're going to have like an Activision account, a Bungie account, a uh, you know, <laughs> Take Two account, a you know, every major 2K publisher. Account. Yeah, two K yeah. account, um, an EA account. You know, you're going to have all these accounts, and you're going to be able to cross play, but you got to like remember every sign in on every single one. Everything's dual. Uh, Ver- verification is just yeah. yeah. What do they call that dual verification with 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 <laughs> one one symbol, verification, one yeah. caps letter, and <laughs> a minimum of eight letters. <laughs> you gotta you gotta oh, lead man. off with the two zeros first. Remember, <laughs> no hyphens. Um, and then and then they're gonna make a launcher for all your uh, your passwords. You know they already have stuff like that, but there's gonna be a special launcher launcher for your uh, accounts for the council world too. <laughs> so, yeah. but I mean, I'm a, I mean that's exciting news for I know I know we got quite a bit of people that play PUBG on the Xbox exclusively. Like I know a few listeners of ours play on the Xbox One. Uh, that's where they play PUBG, and that's where they play their games. So they play PUBG there. I know some of our listeners play on the PS4. That uh, I don't know if they play PUBG, but if you do, you can now play against Xbox Four players coming in October. Um, so that's interesting. I I think that's a good move. It just increases the player pool. Yeah. You know what I mean? Definitely, yeah. yeah. It makes it easier to find matches. You don't got to wait two minutes to find a fucking match. Oh, yeah. I hope that's the case. That that, <laughs> that helps with that. <laughs> and other news. I uh, got more news here, boys. I, secret news for you guys. Mm, you guys don't see the notes, but I got the news pulled up. Control. So it says here, five days left for Control to release, right? Mm-hmm. That is a new game coming out. Uh, so it says here that uh, the game will not have HDR in any version of the game. So no hmm. Xbox One X version, no PS4 Pro version, or PC version will have HDR. Um, it says the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X will have enhanced features, uh, but all console versions will only run at 30 frames a second. Hmm. So there you go. If you're looking to buy this on your console, it's only going to run at 30 frames a second. Your PS4 Pro and Xbox One X will have enhanced features. What does that mean? I don't know. Maybe better look It's the Hobo version. I don't know. Better. Um, but what really surprised me of all this, this, this announcement was no HDR. HDR to me seems to be like a fucking standard in gaming nowadays. What the fuck? Not so much. I mean, if you go, what do, like, what do you into... mean not so much? Every fucking game on the Xbox One X pretty much has HDR. Yeah, but if you, I don't know. I mean, every game I, on the I don't PS4, have a good example. every game on the PS4 Pro, Gunny, has HDR. 
God of War has HDR. Days Gone has HDR. Yeah, it's AAA titles. It's I like not being 4K. I mean, it's, 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 it's like Control not given. a AAA title? Are you saying Control is a fucking indie title? I don't know. I have to look into it. So They made Quantum Break, so <laughs> that it, company can't be indie. Yeah, they made Quantum Break, Gunny. A AAA Microsoft exclusive. Yeah, I mean, that was like, I don't know. And it was what, a good looking. What do you game, mean was, that was? I don't know. That that thing that thing had HDR probably. It probably did. Like, it probably look up the look, but quantum. Break I'm not gonna turn my Xbox back on to look, but hey, was it even in 4K? I don't even remember now if it was. Quantum or not. Break runs great on Xbox One X, but at what cost? Uh, let's see. Here. I don't know. I don't, maybe it didn't have HDR. Wait no, it did. It did eventually get an update. So sorry, it got an, eventually got an update. Yeah, it got an update that was a ninety-five gig update. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so 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 control will might Meg have it. still control. downloading it. Just not at <laughs> Meg, Megmod still hasn't got to play it, guys. Oh fucking poor Megmod. We give him so much shit every week. <laughs> sorry, Megmod. We love you, buddy. <laughs> so fucked up. <laughs> oh, shit. Anyways, but I mean, I kind of think this is ridiculous. What the fuck you mean? No HDR support or no? Uh, does it even have 4K? Maybe. I hope 4K at least. You know, like because we've seen that with games in the past, but where where they weren't like in like even 4K, but then they did get the update later on. They just don't. Basically, their stance is like, uh, look, we just don't have the money right now until we get the sales in, you know, to pay the developers to actually upgrade it for free, of course. You know, it'll be a free update. Well, one of the developers on here on Twitter is saying that they're asking, like, a lot of people are asking about HDR implementation later on, but it says it's not his call. It's not their call. You know, I think a lot of times, like, with, with some of these games where we've seen, like, just random things like, hey, guess what? This game got you know, a free texture spec with it's now in 4K and HDR. I think it depends on game sales, right? That's yeah. a lot of it. You know, that's a lot of revenue for them to make that determining factor. So we'll see after uh, reviews I, I and it, I game sales. I going to have some kind of support because I actually look at it on the control on the Epic Store and it does have like under recommended. Is it an Epic it, exclusive? Yeah, damn. I believe, but it says ray tracing, and they're recommended GTX or RTX uh, twenty sixty. So if it's gonna have ray damn. tracing, I think RTX it almost gonna have one. Sixty, holy shit! I think they're gonna end up having HDR in it. Then I, I got a feeling if they're gonna do, you know, because RTX is all lighting. That I feel like they're gonna really uh, gonna need the HDR to push the lighting. You know, I saw this uh, article today. I don't know where it was, Mayo, but mm-hmm. or even the manufacturer it might have been Asus that was had this. Uh, it was like the the curve monitor, thirty eight, oh, yes. whatever by twelve hundred for. It was literally a thousand dollars. Yeah, well, I paid Ouch. back in the day when I bought mine three years ago. I paid a thousand for mine. Oh, okay. Um, it was nine ninety nine actually, um, and it's a thirty four inch. You know, thirty-four forty by fourteen forty. So basically, it's a fourteen forty monitor, and it's curved. You know, so I thought paying five hundred for mine was a lot. You know, yeah. For and, now it, and now it's just my secondary monitor because I like my hundred forty-four hertz better because this one's only seventy-five hertz. So I will play games on every once in a while because games do look pretty cool, especially like I said, the city builders, the top-down stuff looks really cool on the Ultrawide, but Sweet. good stuff. Awesome stuff. But uh, let's see. Oh, so you know what? Jesus actually left. So uh, I'm going to actually just bring this up here because I don't, you guys didn't talk about the GameStop layoffs last week. Mm hmm. Um, our GameStop Game Informer. Yeah. To lay off over 100 people, including nearly half of Game Informer staff. So yeah, listening to the latest Game Informer yesterday was a little sad, you know, to see some of the people that I've listened to over the years. Uh, get laid off yeah and now i already got like the game informer magazine that was with gamestop right so i haven't shopped gamestop but was that the one they used to give you for free 
or they would subscribe to. Yeah, they would. Yeah, because I just got my, I just got my latest episode or uh, magazine here on, I think Wednesday. So, oh shit! <laughs> You're gonna get a magazine still. Yeah, because uh, I because remember when I went and bought the PS4, so I literally resubscribed to, Aww, to GameStop. They, they tricked you into that. Well, it's kind of automatic, right? Because then, hey, because check it out, I get 10% off of turning in games that was for the Switch, so there was all these incentives. So literally, it was almost like a free subscription. Think about it. Huh. Like, it, it all balanced out, right? So for free, uh, you know, one year of magazines. What? <laughs> literally, like, uh, but then am I really going to get those magazines for a year? But they said, yeah. you know, everything's kind of continue forward but i'm just going to read this really quick it just says the struggling retail chain gamestop laid over for laid off over hundreds of people today both at its corporate headquarters in texas and other offices including its subsidiary game informer magazine in minnesota what do you uh, what do you think this means for gamestop do you, i mean so we we've noticed that they have a new restructuring going on guys where they said last week remember we were talking about it last week may or the week before that yeah, I mean, I could buy them the week before. Where uh, they were talking about restructuring the company to be more of a retro company, like a always oh, selling retro games. But do you think? I mean, I don't know. You guys are more into that generation than I am. Where like you guys are more nostalgic. I- I'm kind of nostalgic for some old shit. But to me, like, like I would, I would be more nostalgic for like a PS2, Xbox original shit. Dreamcast, you guys are more nostalgic for like Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega, you know, that type of shit. I mean, as as people in that age bracket, for you guys, I'm, I'm not calling you old or anything, but I'm like, people in that age bracket, <laughs> do, do, you, do you guys feel like your generation or your people in like around you, your coworkers, your people that you know around your age, would want to go into a fucking GameStop to buy retro games? I don't think... I think some people our age will. I mean, they, they they can lose their their fun vector quite a bit. Like when you go back and play these games, like my, you know, I bought hard. this Nintendo recently. <laughs> yeah, what I what I think is going to happen is not your generation, Jesus. It's an even younger generation. That these fourteen and fifteen year olds, the ones that are buying these pops and all that stuff, they are going to grow up with this video game industry because you know we we kind of started it. But they're going to be in the prime of it, you know. When they get older again, when when it becomes like uh, video games are going to become esports and fifteen years and from now, ten years from now, people that age, say they're early twenties, they're going to want to collect. They like to collect things, so yeah. why not go back and collect the beginning of the video game era at home when you can go back and buy these Nintendos? But that's way down the road, you know. Oh but, man, Nintendo's going to make a fucking killing in the future when they're like. Experience the original Mario game. Woo! You know, it's like look at it. It's like cars. You know, like these yeah. people collect cars. True, you know, right. we. I'll go back and look at like these old Auburn Cords. These cars made back in the early 1900s, and some of them are just really, really cool. Yeah. Like, they're yeah, they're by no we, means. We have a we have, we have now, a but. festival here in town where like they some people bring in their old cars. There's mm-hmm. this couple, dude. They own a fucking Model T from like 1915 or some shit. Mm-hmm. And it's like, holy shit, this thing still drives. I'm like, yeah, we drove it here. And we're like, what the fuck? Right. <laughs> that's fucking crazy. I think crazy. that's going to be our video game consoles. It's going to be like shows. And you'll be like, I have this rare working Super Nintendo. <laughs> Nintendo or Super Nintendo, you know. This Sega is, system. I have this Sega Dreamcast discontinued thing. <laughs> <laughs> and and especially as physical media is starting to go away, yeah, you know, right. like, you know, because then you're like, I have this copy of a game. Look, look, I can I can hold this game. Think about how many people twenty years from now are gonna own a copy of PUBG physical. And nobody. And they sell that shit at the store for twenty bucks, thirty bucks. Well, actually, if you remember, wasn't it PUBG that even when it first came out, GameStop was. It was all featured. PUBG, PUBG, right? Hey, it's on it's on Xbox, guys. They you would walk you a, in, and you got a box with a code. No, no, I'm they pretty sure you, they it was PUBG. You a disc. I'm pretty sure it's a disc in the thing that you put I don't think Xbox. so. No, I remember they, they actually gave you... It was a big no, thing, because they were like, dude, I got no. to GameStop, and here they are giving me a code for PUBG. No, because they sold the case at Walmart. Oh, do they? Okay, I'm, well, 
I could be wrong, but if I remember correctly, that was it was PUBG that was the big stink over uh, retailers like GameStop just giving out a code. Like right, it so actually sure. gave you the PUBG Xbox game. One disc revealed. This is what you get. So it says you get a retold box version featuring an all new colorway of the game's iconic key art. A new blah blah. blah. But yeah, I'm pretty sure you get a fucking disc, honey. Okay, wow, I thought it was the... Maybe when it first came out, like the first release. I thought yeah. that was the big stink of it, so... I remember we're doing an article on you that. I'm saying, like, these games that are coming out now, like... Like, like think of the... I don't know, man, I'm just thinking about shit in the future. Like, like 20 years from people that own a Fortnite console, the Fortnite Purple Edition Xbox One S, which I... I find it incredible to me that, like, Microsoft still, at this very moment, does not bank on their X system. Why the fuck not? You know what I mean? Like, they're doing it with their Gears of War system, the new Gears of War 5, the new Xbox One X for that. But why not do it for Fortnite? Why does every Fortnite system that come out for the Xbox One, why is it an S? Why is it an S, Cunny? Why is it an S, Mayo? I don't know. What do you mean? What do you mean? Why is it? Why is like, it an S? Why, why is it an oh, S? Like, why oh, is it like, not an X? Why is it not an Xbox One X? Why does it have to be an Xbox One S? Because be Phil said a couple E threes ago that that was going to be their number one console seller, the S. So that's the one he said that's going to be our. That's when it's going to make the most sales. That's just I don't know. It's ridiculous, right? Because I went into Costco and saw like there's like two pallets of S's, you know. And I think they were all like Mad Editions or something, but that was before the Fortnite Edition came out, which looks pretty cool. The actually. purple one, yeah. I'm saying, why not make yeah. a purple Xbox One X and sell it for like fucking five hundred bucks or whatever the fuck? <laughs> hey, remember <laughs> they did that with? Uh, was it Fallout seventy six? But then they were like, crap, that game's such a dud. That you game know? is so, still. You can still right now. I can go to Best Buy and buy myself an Xbox One X, Fallout seventy six edition, which is nothing. It just includes the game. Right, it's not an actual. And I get it. I could get it for a hundred bucks off. I get it for four hundred instead of five hundred. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but you know what, I, guys? It's kind of weird to me the marketing they do behind all that bullshit. Whatever. Uh, I, I think this is just GameStop talking about doing the retro thing and listening to Game Store guy on VGO and you know Michelle and all them and you know and he, like he said you know we already have these retro stores. I own a couple of them. You know I'm sure there's probably some in my area i don't yeah, know about. i know there's one in my town and, and i don't see like gamestop being like a thing for me to want to go to do like oh i'm gonna go here and hang out and play magic cards like jonathan hall and eric smith <laughs> they have those places they, they exist actually, <laughs> not not in my area because rent is so skyrocket high but i've seen them in places like uh like probably down where sean lives you know in that fresno area you know, where there's like 600,000 people somewhere that are, I, I bet you they do exist. Several of the places where you can go in. Like, like you know, my town, spaces. literally, we have this little shop, Gunny. It's called Game Something, Game Store, or Game Star, or Game Some Shit. But literally, all they sell there is game stuff, like video game shit. But 90, I would say like probably 95% of the store is like PS3 games, PS2 games, Xbox original games. Xbox yep. 360 games, and like a very f- little tiny section is dedicated to the Xbox One, a very tiny, tiny fucking section is dedicated to the PS4, and then like a very small section is dedicated to the Nintendo Switch, but everything's like Nintendo, old school Nintendo, NES, fucking Super NES, all that shit, like all, it's all like... 3DS, like, yeah, yeah. Like Nintendo 64, GameCube... They have all that shit. Rockstar Guitar Hero. They have all that shit on like they sell the guitars and all that. But they don't really focus on like new game sales. Like I've even been there a few times and the dude's like, My God, do you have this game? And they'll be like, Yeah, but we sold out. We're gonna order more copies, blah blah blah. And like I just don't see myself like like why would GameStop want to shift to something like that? Like And there's no benefit to them doing that? What the fuck? No, well, it's gonna be it, hard because your your library is gonna be limited on what what's out there or what's left. You no, know? because yeah, it's because GameStop it's a franchise, right? 
it's a fairly large franchise because it's nationwide and you know including Canada and wherever else they are in the world. But yeah, I, they're not going to go. I seriously doubt if even if they try this retro thing, you know, it's not going to work. What do you guys because think? They're going to have to charge too much, right? More than no, eBay, yeah. more, more than more Amazon, than like right? more than most like regular mom and pop shops. Most people are just going to walk out going, "Oh, fine, I'll just go buy a." Nintendo NES from, you know, the guy down the street. <laughs> yeah. who eBay. Sells, yeah, you know, eBay, eBay, buy you know? cartridges. I'll buy it for 100 bucks instead of 200 or whatever. I'm just so, wondering, what do you guys think, Gunny Mayo, too? What do you guys think that GameStop needs to do to, like, not die within the next five years? I, I don't see what they can do. I honestly don't because no. you know why? Why? What is the future? What, what do we see in the future for mm-hmm. like something that can that can keep them alive? You know what I don't. I don't you know see what physical I see? media I see becoming Google popular. Stadia yeah. in October, right? I see yeah, Google I mean, Stadia. Yeah, I see. Yeah. I mean, I see the next gen systems releasing with the disk drive. I just right. So that's going to be. I, I just think the, revenue. Right? Right? I somehow think for I mean, a short time. Now, okay, say the next consoles come out next year, right? The year's going to be 2020. I legitimately think that when we're doing the podcast in 2025, five years after launch, when I'm like 30-something years old, nearing Gunny's age, and we're going to be talking about this shit, and we're going to be talking about, like, how everything is digital, and there's no more physical media Mm -hmm. (laughs) left, and how, like, the new Xbox One... And what what do you think next? The Xbox Scarlet X system is releasing, and it has no disk drive at all. You know, because I'm sure I'm gonna you know walk I mean? in even to my Target store, and you know they have like two to three rows of like you know your gaming stuff: Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo has like a smaller section up yeah. front, and the rest of like that bigger section, even in my Target, is all it's all Blu-ray movies that mm-hmm. are thirty bucks a piece, and some of them are. I mean, there's a lot of good cheap stuff in there too, but standard def that that i would never buy because i'm digital but like that's just going to become move all over to the game section right where's the game section at again oh we don't yeah just somewhere well, over even, by the tvs you even know the movies are still going digital anymore or netflix and and you know i have a voodoo account with like 200 voodoo, movies yeah and i have you know I, I buy these movies on these sites where you can just buy uh the you know like the little pamphlets they put in with the movie yeah. and you redeem the code or whatever you can buy those those codes actually for like five to eight dollar range for new movies, and so instead of me just renting the movie, I buy the movie. So now I have like a two hundred movie library, all digital. I can play it on my phone. I can play it on a tablet. So I can take it with me in the car. I can travel with it. I can watch it in my living room. I can watch it in my bedroom, and I don't have to worry about the disc getting messed up. You know, like we, Gunny. You know, you had your son when they were younger. What happened to those discs? So they got thrown around. They got lost. They got scratched up. You don't have to worry about that. You know, all the yeah, internet. Yeah, we're just... always going back. We're always going back into GameStop. Oh man, you know, like, don't you have that copy of this game? Because this one's not working. You know, yeah. You need to exchange it. Got a big scratch in it because some, you know, seven-year-old was cleaning the countertop with it or something. <laughs> you know? Yeah, the dog had it in his mouth. Ah. And you you look at best you know our blockbuster I don't I don't miss blockbuster at all like you know and I love black you know I lived at blockbuster as a kid you know like yeah renting games and renting movies you know like weekends my parents would go rent movies and I get a video game yeah hey, you know remember when Hollywood Video came out to compete against him that was yeah. cool we had one of them right here in Hollywood Video Pack. Dude, I had a Hollywood Video right on the corner from my house I would go there all the fucking time yeah, and then so right that was the one that had the game crazy right I remember yeah next to the Hollywood Video all of a sudden one day they opened up like this game crazy store and I was like what the fuck is this and I remember going in there and I bought like Dino Crisis and shit like that <laughs> fucking crazy man like Oh, I miss all those days. That's really awesome. I mean, I miss it, but I mean, in a way, I don't. You know, like I like the ability to go in there and just browse, and that's what we're gonna miss when we lose GameStop if it does to go away. Yeah. Is we won't have that store. You know, even like at Target, I like to. My wife and kids are shopping. I walk over to the electronic and gaming section all the and time. just look at the I games. still go in and there, guys. I, I still see go in there every on single Sunday. one of those titles online. I've seen every trailer, but I look at those games and I'm going. Oh wow! Well, I remember that. That's a good game. That's a good game. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, you I know. still go on there. Winter on Sundays. Uh, every I don't time, know what the draw is. Every time yeah. I go to any fucking retail store, 
one of the sections that I visit, electronics. Yep. <laughs> Every time. Same. I don't know what the fuck it is. Like an addiction. It's like, it's like I have to go there. <laughs> I don't go there that I'm missing something. I don't know what the fuck I'm missing. You know, you know? <laughs> two years ago, two years ago, well, let's go back a little. I'm going to go back two years ago. The wife was like, I don't know about this Amazonian thing, this thing where you buy stuff on the internet. Ew. I'm, just gonna, <laughs> I'm going to Target. I'm going to go to Walmart. Um, yeah. And if you want, like, I'll go with you to the games. I'll go with you to the Best Buy, okay? And then we can look at that physical product. Stuff how like long, that. But now, now like, how long we can be. You know, I, I remember when the cell phone came out and I thought texting would never pick up. You know, I remember going, why would you want to text somebody and try and spell it out on your phone? When you can just call them and tell them. I'm like, this is so dumb, you know, and, and look at what texting became, you know, like, I'm like, boy, I called that wrong. You know, just like shipping to movies or, or merchandise in the mail, you know, like we see yeah. when it first happens, we don't see the uh, the benefit of it. And next thing you know, we're all doing it, you know. It's like they warp our mind into believing that's what we want and we just gravitate toward it. As consumers. And in the future, we're all going to gravitate towards streaming because you know what's what's more convenient, Mail, than putting a disc in your drive? Digital. What's more convenient than having to wait for a download? All right. Streaming. streaming. Yeah. That's it. That's literally it. I just told you guys the fucking answer to the future. The convenience factor of being able to, like, on launch day of Cyberpunk 2077, without having to waste a, a bit of space on your hard drive, you're going to fucking log into Stadia, press launch, and play. And play. You know, you're right going to walk into, like, Target or Walmart, just using those as an example, you know, with your kids, and they're going to look over in the gaming section, and there's going to be, like, a box that says Fortnite on it, right? This is what you're going to play it with, and inside that box is going to be you know the, the. I'll bet you even like down the road they're gonna even have like an even cheaper controller. It's gonna be thirty bucks, right, for that Google Stadia controller. Google and the, it's actually not expensive, man. Like, yeah, the and what's the like uh, sixty bucks? That's how much. How much does an yeah. Xbox an Xbox controller cost? Sixty bucks. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah, for a regular Xbox yeah, controller. For a and regular what's the, one. What's your uh, what's the Ultra dongle thing? What's that thing called for your no. Google? Oh, it's just a, one of those uh, like. Uh, I have one of my Google bedroom. Homes, mm. like Google Chromecast. It's the, Chromecast. the Chromecast thing. It's yeah, the newest one. what you're going to need, right? Yeah, that's all you need. That's all. Those two things are going to be in the box, and then it's going to have a picture of Fortnite box, and just, those are the only two things, right? Like, boom. Yeah. What do you do? Like, no, that just plays on our TV, just like that, you know? And I've actually... So I, Parents I, are going to love I, it. I didn't tell you guys this, but I've actually, doubt, I've actually like, uh, I bought the, the Founders Edition. So mm-hmm. I get, I'm going to get that when it comes out on... November, um, I, and honestly, like, what the fuck am I gonna play on there? I don't know yet. <laughs> Maybe Destiny. I don't fucking know. You'll uh, find something. I'll find something to play on there, I guess. But maybe, like I said, maybe the one game that I'm really gonna play a lot of is maybe that new Ghost Recon, because uh, that Ubisoft pass is gonna be on there. Yeah, or maybe September start September. Or, or maybe uh. First or fourth. Maybe Cyberpunk when it comes out. Maybe I decide to buy Cyberpunk on my Google Stadia instead of my PC or anything. I'm just like I'm playing Cyberpunk anywhere, anytime, when I want to. You know. You know, and I'm, and and the thing that excites me, I was talking to you guys a couple of weeks ago about this was, hey guys, you know I have this 4K TV in here, and you know I've got the older Sony TV in the living room, and thinking ahead like, hmm, maybe I want to. I want to get a smaller 4K TV because I think it's too large for this bedroom, you know, especially yeah. with like a first shooter. So if I can move that in the living room, maybe get a 47 inch in here. And, you know, and that's where I'm going to be. That's where my ultra Chromecast is going to be to play my Stadia, my PlayStation VR. And, you know, and in here I can Google Stadia. It's going to be on both of my, my PC <laughs> yeah, partner, my 4K like TV that I just somewhere. bought again. So it's a win-win, you know, all the way around. Yeah. You saying that too? Maybe just kind of think, like, people like real clean setups. You're not going to have to have a console connected to the TV, so you can have a wall-mounted TV, yeah. have its Stadia plugged into the back of it because it's going to be a little dongle. Right. And you're not going to see. You can have a wireless controller. You're not going to have any console in the way. You're not going to have any 
maybe say you don't like to have like a TV stand or something like that. Yeah. You're going to free up that living room space and you're just going to have Stadia on your wall and you won't even have to have a unit in the way to plug in or anything. That's, it's just gonna you're going to see that too. With, that's the thing too where you're going to see like either LG or uh, Samsung, you know, team up with build in. Right? Because Android's already on a lot of devices yeah, on it TV. Is. Right? A lot of them. The smart I mean, TV you're integration. Probably, you're probably like seeing Samsung. You're probably seeing Samsung do it before anyone else, or maybe Sony, because Sony has the Android on their OS. Um, but yeah, man, like, like I could totally see it just happen with all these platforms where, like, 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 we're gonna have Stadia, we're gonna have Xbox, we're gonna have PlayStation, we're gonna have Nintendo, and and people are saying, "No, oh, Stadia's gonna fail." I don't think Stadia's gonna fail. I. I just don't see it happening, man. I just think it's the way the industry is going, and they're, you know, regardless of the way we want it or not, like we've kind of been hitting that, that's the way the industry is going to go, and that's we're just going to be along for the ride. Yeah. You know, we're like, we're going we're gonna to bend, yeah. and we're going to be like, well, I guess I'm going to start streaming tomorrow I, I because guess, I have no I guess, choice. I guess I have to buy a Stadia controller now, guys, because... I don't have a choice no more. Like, I have to buy it. You Just, know, like, that one game that come up. It's going to be a Stadia exclusive. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to be like, yay, Stadia. And then we're going to be in that ecosystem. And then we're there. They got us. You know the one thing that I think Stadia is going to come out with that's going to be a like a thing that everyone needs? It's going to be something like... Uh, think of PlayStation Home. You remember PlayStation Home where you could like have your own apartment and stuff? I watched streams I of it. Think, I thought that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. You I, know, like because it, it's like a, it's like the thing from uh, Ready Player One, like the so Oasis. It was about seven years ago, yeah. They it's like that. I think Stadia is going to come out with that. I think Stadia will come out with something like the Oasis, where like anyone, anywhere, anytime is connected to this world, billions of people in the same fucking thing, everyone connected. Just do whatever you want. Just fucking do it. Buy a house, buy apartments, whatever you want to do, work, whatever, and I and I think <laughs> that's going to be the game changer. I think it'll happen eventually. One of these companies is going to figure out. It's either going to be Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, or, or Google, <laughs> yeah, or, or Facebook with the fucking Oculus. I don't know about that. Yeah, the, the Oculus does have a home already. Like when yeah. I have, a, you know, I have a environment I set up on the Oculus already that has a couch and a basketball hoop. It yeah. literally, you can play basketball in the game. <laughs> it's, it's actually funny because on PlayStation VR, you launch the Hulu app. There's actually mm-hmm. a mode in the Hulu app. Now, it's not on Netflix. On Netflix, I think there's theater mode. But I know for a fact in Hulu, there's a mode where like I could set what I want the environment around me to look like. Like I could mm-hmm. be in a beach house. And like I could see the ocean in the background, like the sand. Yeah. And, like, I'm in a beach house with a big glass window. And like I'm sitting there watching Hulu on my 60-inch TV. Or I can set it to be like a theater, so like it looks like a movie theater with like people sitting around eating popcorn and shit. Or like I could set it to be like uh, something else. Like there's three different things you can set it to be as. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. Since, since we're <laughs> you know what I think, TV guys? And VR. I, I do a quick question for Jesus. Maybe you know. I just started looking at this yesterday. Um, I had, Oculus had a player. It's like a big screen player thing, uh-huh. and. I guess there's making reference to 3D movies. You can watch 3D movies through it. Have you done any of this in VR? Like watching no, a 3D movie in VR? But I hear that on the PSVR, 3D movies are fucking incredible. Which I want to try this. I need to get a hold of a 3D movie somewhere. I need to buy it on Amazon or something. Get a hold of a cheap 3D movie. Like even if it's a copy of some yeah, like even if it's a kids movie or something, I need to fucking just sit there and watch it. Because I hear 3D yeah. is yeah, I hear 3D really works really well in three in VR. It just so works. I, I want to pursue that avenue. I, I thought about it yesterday, and I was reading some articles on it, and it just kind of popped in my head when we were talking about TV. Because think the thing I, about I how, like, because it, it makes sense, because think of, like, for example, like, how today I was talking about, like, on Astrobot, when you get those little, like, character figures, and you can flip them around and see the 3D-ness in them. Right. This is actually what a there. movie would look like. Yeah. yeah, it's what a movie would do. Yeah. It's actually probably be better 3D than regular movies. So I wonder if they can enhance the movies yeah. and make it really 3D. Like you know, oh, I need to watch Mad Max in 3D. I wonder if I could probably I could probably download a 3D version, huh? Yeah, watch it on my PlayStation. Completely legally. <laughs> Completely legally, yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> Gunny, were you gonna say Gunny? No, no, I was just gonna say it didn't relate to the conversation. So, oh, it's all good, man. Never mind. But I mean. 
We'll see. Anyways, another one more piece of news that I have here for you fellas is uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Since the new alpha came out, there's a, there's a few things that have been ch- uh, complained about. For example, there's a mode... So, like, for example, when... I don't know if you noticed this, Gunny, but when you're about to die, when you're getting shot at and you're really low on health, you know how back in the day Call of Duty used to give you, like, that blood splatter on the edge of your screens? You know, like, yes. you see the blood splatter? Well, now, I, I know... I probably, You probably definitely noticed this, Gunny, because I noticed it. It's, the screen goes black and white for a second. Like, the screen goes black and white. And um, that's really throwing a lot of players because it's really hard to see in black and oh, white. Oh, makes sense, yep. It's hard to see the enemy in black and white, and it's hard for you to realize if you're even still playing in black and white. Because it happened to me today a few times where, like, all of a sudden my screen would go black and white, and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, is my guy dead or am I alive or am I spawning? Like, what's going on? Am I dying? Am I dead? Or am I about to spawn? What's going on right now? <laughs> like, I don't know what's going on. You know what I mean? Like, like, I don't know. Yeah. Should I hide or should I rush at the enemy? What am I doing right now? Um, so apparently Call of Duty uh, Activision already said that they're going to maybe remove that black and white screen for the next beta. So it's a good thing to have an alpha. So I say for the next time the, the, the beta comes out for Xbox users and PlayStation users and PC users probably, they're going to remove that, uh, that black screen. Especially people that are colorblind. Um, yeah, they also said that the uh, some people yeah, wanted even though there's a mode. Some people wanted a field of view slider, like an FOV slider, um, and that is apparently not available in the in the Call of Duty at this point in time. Um, yeah, and, that um, should be available. Yeah, they should put that in, especially for uh, yeah, yeah, even during the beta. And Modern be Warfare thing. developer Infinity Ward Ultra Wide said that they're looking at a aim down sight slider. So like. Um, yeah, like you, how, like I guess it'll show like how much you're aiming down sights. I don't know how that's gonna work. Because mm, I kind of like where it's at right now, especially yeah, with Call of Duty. I don't see a problem with maybe, it. Maybe, maybe it'll get a little bit of a wider view, like kind of like my ultra wide, like is might FOV. So maybe the gun will kind of be kind of pulled back toward the character more. Oh, so I it's kind of almost get like a zoomed in effect. You're gonna see yeah. more of the oh, environment. Oh yeah, it's not very because it's not. Gun. Where, it, where it's at right now. You see more gun than anything. Yeah, it says here that there's no promises being made on any changes, uh, but the studio's going to definitely look into it. That's what the Call of Duty developer said, the, the lead developer. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Good changes? Uh, I don't have much else in news, man. I mean, I have, like, one more piece of news here that says Xbox Project Scarlet will see a big upgrade in the CPU. Which was speaking at OXM, or speaking with OXM, which is the official Xbox magazine, at Gamescom's 2019. Uh, Gen- Xbox General Manager Aaron Greenberg said the next generation of consoles, especially the Xbox Scarlet, will likely see a greater CPU gain as opposed to the GPU boost of the previous generation. It says here, he said, quote, We feel good about what we've done with the Xbox One X, and the same team that built that is also building the Project Scarlet. What we're seeing today is a huge upgrade in GPU. You can output in 4K, a lot of other benefits, memory structure, and so on. For the next generation, I think you see a big upgrade in CPU because we want to make sure you don't have any compromises with the frame rate. Yes, we can do 4K, but we can also do frame rates up to 120. I think that type of capability will see something, will be something people don't see today. And then the high-speed instant gaming using solid-state drive to enable instant resume, getting into games and being able to play them by removing load times and load screens that exist today, that is going to be a huge change. I mean, quite frankly, the more they talk about Xbox Scarlet, guys, I don't give a fuck. (laughs) I thought you were going to say, I'm going to buy one. (laughs) It's like they're just, they're like talking about PC gaming. Yeah, they legitimately. Are. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, solid state well, drive, to. better that's CPU. It's like my CPU is pretty fucking good at this point in time, and it's probably going to be as good as whatever the fuck they release next year. You GPU, know what I should do? Not so many. I might start building some mini towers and just buy some old Xboxes and just shove the the, the motherboard <laughs> and stuff in and all that. And I'm going to make Sell little it. Xboxes that are do it. Go to listening the mailbox. <laughs> listening to a podcast this week about you know where and we do this too on our show where we as we get closer to launch with where we predict like what the price 
launch price is going to be. And, you know, they were talking about, no, oh, it's going to be 500. Oh, it's going to be 600. And, you know, and, and then there's that whole tariff thing that's going to, no, yeah. that might change them. Oh, no, well. gonna, and also the recession that's coming. Apparently, apparently, yeah, apparently, right? So within the next year. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Political stuff. Yeah. That's a whole nother show. That's a whole nother and, bullshit. Yeah. Right. And, and I thought about it too. Like, you know, and that's something huge. I know in the Microsoft boardroom and, and even with PlayStation and over in, China and here in America, where they think, okay, like, at what point do we, you know, what's the highest we can go? Because people can build PCs nowadays for six hundred bucks, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, not so much with monitor keyboards and mouses, but no, you can definitely build a tower right now with five hundred bucks that'll probably match an Xbox One X. Yeah, I mean, you can go online. There's actually like real smart people out there. I mean, I could do it. Like YouTube has and build millions. It. YouTube. Yeah. Has millions of like when I was asking Mayo of how to build like or how to what to get on a PC or how to build one, I went to YouTube, and you can legit put any fucking price, put any price. Mm-hmm. I, I want to build a PC for seven hundred and fifty six dollars. Yeah, someone will have a video on there. And I, I have built, a part to yeah. where you can exactly buy each part. I built a right, PC so- for seven hundred and fifty six dollars. Here you go, guys. What are you gonna do? Like exactly so, that. So with that said, I think that. They look at it and they think, okay, trying to get into the mind of the actual consumer itself for the you know that's already in that ecosystem with, let's say, the Sony PlayStation, right? Where they think, okay, we don't want them to actually go, well, well fuck, God, yeah, the fucking PlayStation 5 is going to be $600 or whatever, 550 my God, yeah. you know, like, and then have them actually go in and do any kind of research for what you just said, <laughs> right? So they want it to be like, oh, you're going to get all this for... For not yeah. enough, well, there know? is a convenience of it too. You know, the console is super convenient. You know, it can be inconvenient on a PC. You can't have problems. You can't have compatibility issues. It's it's rare anymore, and I think it's over over exaggerated oh, by, by console gamers. You know what I've noticed? Brink has quite a bit of like issues, but mm-hmm. you know what Brink also does? He creates a lot of issues. I think he, he overclocks the shit out of yeah. everything. <laughs> So that he might cause like, issues. Yeah. Cast and yeah, that might have... cause issues if you decide to overclock fucking everything. That might make a little bit of compatibility issues with your games. Hey, but you yeah. know where I know where Brink's going with this stuff, and and it's something like I want to, you know, eventually is, you know, how far can I push my PC? And oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. wants to push your PC. And it's a desire. You want to, you want to make that thing go as good as that every dime you spend on it will. You know, you know like and and. My kid and I, you know, messing around with uh, Java Minecraft last week, and you know, when he's talk, I told him like, "Eh, just it's not, it's not doing it for me, man." Like, how, why don't, I, why shouldn't I just play on my Xbox X, right? Well, yeah. you know what, Dad, because you can't do mods. I'm like, hmm, that's right, good, mods. Good point. Something. Good point. That's that could be a factor for some people, right? Like, like me, that no, I want mods. You know, people that that are in consoles right now that don't know, maybe you've never experienced mods. Mod. Or like free DLC that can change everything. <laughs> uh, you know, like they did with yeah. Bethesda and, and Fallout. I think that was a smart move on their part. Oh, like so even Skyrim on, on Xbox has mods, but like they can yeah. change everything, dude. Those mods. But like, we we'll look at Beat Saber. Right? I was talking about it tonight. I changed the sabers. I changed the background. I can add my own music. I went from going, Ooh, okay, I had like twenty five songs in there that are like specialty Beat Saber songs. Yeah. But now I can. T- Type in Eminem. I can type it in, you know, yeah. ACDC. That's what I, I told you, in. man. I fucking wish Sony had that on their PlayStation. Just like Spotify support. Let me just fucking yeah. play anything on yeah. Spotify. And it just opened the world up to me. You know, like I can do any song I want to do. And then I can do custom sabers. I have pickaxes from Minecraft as my sabers. I have these big daggers. I have <laughs> different color swords. I can change the colors of the blocks coming at me. I can have gold and red or gold and blue or yellow and gold or or green and blue, or, you know, Christmas time, we're going to have a Christmas party, let's play a Beat Saber with red and green, with, yeah. you know, sparkling lightsabers that sparkle my colors or something, I don't know. But I think it was I think it was GTA, was it GTA 2 back in the day? And I didn't have, like, let's say a gaming PC, but I had, you know, whatever was available at the time. And I think, man, like, just I have fond memories of going in there and changing the, uh, uh, the music, the music stations to my custom music station. Mm-hmm. So so when I got in my car, right, when I went down to get some, you know, hookers and blow, <laughs> seriously, <laughs> and I would actually change it to my custom station to listen to 
uh, Van Halen, Metallica, and whatever else I was listening to at the time. You know, it was like the best thing ever. That that modding community can really keep a game alive. Like, it, you know, it can breathe new life into a game. Definitely. It can yeah. be graphic. It can be graphic overhauls. You know, if you guys search it, go to YouTube. And look at like the uh, the graphic mods for like let's, let's say uh, Crisis. Remember how old is Crisis? That uh, game came out it's twelve years ago. The like first that. one. I don't know. There's a mod out there that looks at makes it look absolutely amazing, like pretty much right on par with everything we see today, and, and it looks amazing, you know. And that's you know community made mod that. You know, they, they keep these games alive. And, and, you know, I remember PC Gamer used to have a section in the back of their magazine. It's a mod section. And they take about five or six games. And they talk about the modding community of this game. And, you know, and these games would be old, early 90s, late 90s games. Yeah. And they still mod them and still have a player base. Yeah, definitely brings new Yeah, you're right. Extends the life of the game for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. That, that's all I really have for news, guys. I mean, besides Cyberpunk coming to Stadia and a few other titles they announced. Um, I just have one thing, guys, that I do just want to talk about Gamescom for a second, or at least give you a small list of the games that were the coolest games at Gamescom 2019. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Okay. Oh, yes. All right, so and this Gamescom. is the coolest ones. Just maybe for people who don't know, what, what is Gamescom, Johnny? For the uh, listeners I always, I always say it's just a... The E3 of Europe. That's what I call it's it in Germany. Yeah. Much. It's, it's actually bigger than E3, but yeah. Yeah, as far as... Uh, <laughs> as far as people going, it's way bigger than I, E3. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's huge. I forgot the number of people that attend it's these things, but I was like, no huge. way! You know? it's, it's always in Germany, so yeah, it's, it's fucking huge compared to like E3. Yeah, I remember listening to uh, a couple podcasts like... I. I want to say it was a uh, uh, Destin Ligari, right from IGN, mm. and I, I think it was a several year, a couple of years ago. He was talking about how he said it was so hot inside there. He said it was just for the body heat from like thousands of people, you know. And he's yeah, like, I'm not one to get like anxiety and pass out, but my gosh, you know? the thing is like, like uh, the thing about Gamescom is it's so big, but just because it is not in America, it doesn't get the coverage. Like it is not in the United States. I mean, it doesn't mm-hmm. even Yeah, much. imagine if that came out first before E3. Yeah. I wonder what, what sort of coverage. I mean, it would still get like a lot of, you know, lot of viewers and stuff. Yeah, but, but I wonder, um, man. I have a goal to go to E3 one of these times. Like, I've never been. Yeah. And I want to I wanna come, you know, but, you know, I'm way out here on the East Coast, so it's hard for me to. It's a cost, man. You got to pay for a flight. Yeah. Now, oh, now I know yeah. a gunny cheap and a, and a Jesus walks a lot over in the West Coast. I'll, I'll just come over here. Yeah, gunny what cheap. about. You know what we talked about, Jesus? Remember we talked about the PlayStation experience? Like, they, they hold those in, uh, oh, yeah, uh, not Ventura, but um, over there by Disneyland, right? At yeah. the, uh, yeah. So, right whatever they have those, or, or Xbox has their XO game, you know, thing again in America. Yeah. We definitely, I, I definitely want to go to one of those. I mean, it's really hard. Like, I've always wanted to go to a PAX. I've always wanted to go to E3. And it's really fucking hard. To get tickets to any of them. Yeah, you have... Okay, so you have to know in advance. Packs, and then you have to be there that yeah, day packs, online. It's ridiculous, dude. Like, like PAX West. Like, PAX Prime. I like guess it's called PAX West now. And Seattle, like, the biggest one. Like, one of the biggest ones. The biggest one on the West Coast. That shit's ridiculous. To get a fucking ticket to that thing, you have to pretty much be watching Twitter all day. All fucking yeah. day. All day. And as soon as they say, hey, tickets are live, you better click on that fucking link. And buy as many tickets as you can within that fucking mm-hmm. time that you open that window. Because as soon as you even just like, even if you hesitate for a second, it shuts down and you're like, oh, sold out, sold out in a minute, sold out. <laughs> Everything. So we're sold out for the weekend, guys. Woo! We're sold Too bad. Out. I'm sorry. Three day passes are sold. Oh. You got yeah, you got so- a master race moss now, Jesus. It'll probably have faster clicks, oh, so you yeah. can probably get in there now. Super super quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, man, I, I always wanted to go to that, and I'm with you, man. I want to go to E3, man. Right. Did you get your list of games, then, Gunny? Yeah, yeah. So the first game on the list is, uh, let's see, it's the Marvel Avengers. So we're talking about gameplay here, folks. Oh, is that These... the the one game? <laughs> Shona... Yeah, this is the 
these bootleg Marvel superheroes Super. still aren't doing it for us, but at least we know <laughs> what the game looks like now. So just kind of give you the bullet points. Well, so what's it like, honey? Tell me what the game's like. I don't know because I didn't watch it. <laughs> I've seen I've seen I a video on, on it. And it I only it, saw the initial E3. It does look like an action pack game where you kind of have a, a a predetermined sequence of events. Like you, this section you're gonna be like Thor. And you're going to be doing this. And then later on in the game, it's going to flip over to this character, and you're going to play through this sequence. It's going to be a third person, uh, pretty much beat him up with the abilities of that character. You know, like, so you're going to go in as Thor, and you can have a bunch of enemies attacking you, and you can have lightning and your hammer to Thor. So it's all PvE? Yeah, it's all PvE. Okay. And it's going to have like a Is story. Is it like Destiny? Game. Like an MMO? Yeah. No, no it's where it's, said, no. it's just going to be. I would compare it more to a just a single player like Just Cause, where you're oh, gonna be a so character. Stupid. No. I'm thinking of. Be... I'd rather play that Iron Man VR game than this shit. What the fuck? Yeah. There you yeah, go. we'll have to see how it goes. Like, uh, who was it? I always want to say Warner Brothers, and uh, I always forget the name of the studio with uh, Batman, where you know there was like DLC you can get to play other characters in that universe, but. Um, those Batman yeah. games were good, though. This doesn't sound good. <laughs> no. No, we'll have to see. Uh, I mean, cool characters. But um, the next game is Dragon Ball Z Zakarot. Is that how you say it? Zakarot? Zakarot. Zakarot. So, yeah, there's that. Nothing on extra on that one. Um, Monster Hunter World's Iceborne. There's a gameplay demo, folks. DLC, okay. Okay. So one of the best games, uh, most successful games ever. So of course it's getting a beefy expansion. I think it's like what forty bucks. Yeah, it's actually like, yeah, like huge... almost like a like a, like a full price fucking thing. Yeah, it's, it's like a full one. game. Yeah, like um, I wonder if they'll release a version of the game where it comes with this expansion for sixty bucks. I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, kind of like, kind of like um, what Destiny's doing. But that, that's like, hey, buy this game sixty bucks. That's all of a game, years man. ago. If you want a game where you're hunting shit and. You're grinding, and you need something to play for like a long time. Mm-hmm. You're trapped on an island yeah, by yourself. Get, you hours get this game fucking playing. game. Get this fucking game. I'm not kidding because like it has thousands, probably hundreds, uh, hundreds of hours of gameplay. Not thousands, but probably hundreds of hours of gameplay before you can grind and get everything unlocked. It's crazy. Yeah. The next game is Need for Speed Heat. Oh, I didn't get to see that. I've seen trailers for this game, uh, Gunny. Um, I, I'm not super hyped for it, but I'm going to play it just because of Premiere. Like, 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 if I didn't have a PC and I didn't have like access to Origin, Premiere, or whatever the fuck for 15 bucks a month, I would never fucking buy this shit. But because I have access to Origin, Premiere, I'm, I'm getting this game. Yeah, and so when this does come out, you know, I've kind of got, got one foot in the door on these EA things these days, so I'll just pay the five bucks and get my EA access and play oh, it. there you go. Yeah, because even on Xbox you get an EA access trial, yeah. Yeah. So, let's see. The next one we've got is, oh, Minecraft Dungeons. 13 minutes of gameplay. I heard that Whether that mode saw. is really good. Yeah, it looks like it's Diablo Asco. It looks like fun. You just um, go on to Dungeons. Co-op, hack and slash. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Looks really looks cool, cool, actually. And I talked about it before, but The Witcher 3 for Nintendo Switch. There's did actual we, did, gameplay did for that. Did we get a release date for that? Uh, it doesn't show it here, just in the was, bullet points. I thought but. it was October, wasn't it? Like October something? For The Witcher yeah. 3? Yeah, it doesn't have a link or anything. Does it, on, how, how does it run on the Switch? Is it like 60 frames a second, 30 frames a second? Probably 30. Yeah. Oh, I would think at least 30, but yeah, just, just reading off the bullet points from this website. Um, in our next one, we've got, but while you're looking that up, let's see, let's see. Oh, this game here, Death Stranding, introduces hot new features like Jeff Keighley and Urine Meters. I know you guys talked about that. Oh, we week, forgot right? about that. The P, the P performance, guys. Oh, yeah. the we didn't mention it. We didn't. This surprise news right that here, that Gunny. Week, Good yeah. job, Gunny, for bringing up the news. About the P meter. So we can bring let's bring up a scenario. So like say uh, Jesus is walking down the, the street yeah. and he decides to pee in a corner, pee and then and, and then I go and pee in this. Yeah. The exact same spot same that corner. Jesus does. 
Gunny, you can walk over and pee in that same spot, and you might get a surprise. A big, <laughs> okay. a big yeah, surprise. 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 A big, yeah. Not just any surprise, Gunny. A big surprise. So listen, Gunny, when you pee in, in Death Stranding, it's just like, it's not like it can pee. All right. I it's, just want to mark my own territory. This pee, that? Gunny, this pee will grow mushrooms. All right. And, and maybe if like a bunch of players, like Hideo Kojima said, if a bunch of players play go and pee on the same area, like the same location, then all those players might get a big surprise. Oh, okay. It's so weird, dude. <laughs> Hideo, so Kojima, Hideo Kojima's weird motherfucker, Gunny. You gotta know that by now, but I mean, like... Yeah. You know, I saw, like, him last year. Remember, he was outside, and he was with, uh... <laughs> now I want to say Daryl Dixon, but, um... <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> now let's flip it here and and they were outside they were outside smoking a cigarette like that was one of the things they showed on the website or maybe it was the magazine I was reading you know just kind of hanging out right and yeah I wonder what was in those cigarettes yeah or in those things they were smoking yeah. but I don't think it was tobacco so what do we know about this game now we know you have now a baby know. attached you have, you to you you have a baby attached to you that gives a you big, a big lighter that comes out of your backpack okay but the baby Maybe is a gateway to the other world, which is like the death world, where the World War II soldiers are coming after you. And um, so it's a big connection to the death world. It's like a gateway. That's where uh-huh. you have to keep the baby safe. But uh, you're, yeah, so you got to, so I wonder like how many times. The, how many the United States has over? fallen. The United States has fallen. The president of the United States is in a deathbed from the trailers we've seen. Uh, I don't. <laughs> And no a else. big ladder in your backpack. Big, huge ladder, mechanical ladder. You extend that motherfucker, and you <laughs> go go gadget ladder. Go go gadget ladder, and you throw that fucker you know, out, and he goes. This Kojima just scrambles my brain because I'm thinking about okay, I've got to get this baby from point A to point B, point, point a, right? Point B, and, yep. and you know, I'm I'm like just peeing in certain spots and using some magical ladder that pops out my ass. I can extend further <laughs> to get over buildings or whatever it might be, like. Why can't I just use like a monster truck to just I mean, file through shit? Hideo right? Kojima said, "Quote: Can't do that. If enough players pee in the same spot, something good will happen." Oh, wow! Also, Margaret Qualley is introduced as Mama, and she is connected to one of the invisible babies who lives who leaves tracks behind. It says here, her baby has been born on the other side. Whatever that means, it says here. Mama can't move from her location due to the baby's condition. The new footage also speaks of a still mother, though the concept <laughs> is about as confusing as you expect. It says here, babies are just equipment, Guillermo del Toro told people. <laughs> says here, uh, so yeah, so babies are equipment, pee mechanics, something good will happen if you all pee in the same spot. Uh, and there's Mama in the game. And what's the other guy's name? Uh, Dead Man? Yeah. Who, that's who Guillermo del Toro is playing as. He's playing as Dead Man. Um, that's his character's name is Dead Man. Uh, so that, there you go, people. Updates on Death Stranding. Woo! Yeah. Woo! And also, you cannot see his penis. You cannot turn the camera to see his oh. penis. It's, it's oh, carefully tuned. Canceled. Carefully tuned so you cannot turn the camera to see his penis when he's peeing. Hey, 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 but... We talked about mods earlier, didn't we? Okay. Oh. Yeah. You say we're going to see a mod for the penis? We're going to be a she and schlongs, man. <laughs> Those mods. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, the uh, story is very intriguing. I'm interested. Intriguing? What's intriguing about walking across a whole world with a baby? Well, I thought the whole... In that part, no. But I thought... Uh, like the story part where the... The guy from like I don't know whatever that evil company is, and I don't know. It just seems like you know some futuristic shit that looks interesting. But yeah, the whole walk walk across America, maybe you can't. You know, we're in the future, but you can't use like any kind of future device to get you there. It's kind of nuts. But uh, next one we've got here is, is that Modern Warfare. Fourteen minutes of gameplay. You can probably go watch it. Go on YouTube, watch that now. Um, um, let's see. This year's Call of Duty 
has an old title but new modes like 2v2 gunfight so um, anyway that's not very interesting of what we're playing so far Kerbal Space Cro- Program 2 there's an official trailer hmm. now, now. more more spaceships I can crash <laughs> yeah <laughs> we've added more assets folks um so yeah, I see that game always on sale for like ten bucks, but I'm like, eh, I don't know. I say Kerbal Space Program, dude. It, it, it's an incredible game when you actually like figure something out. You're like, whoa, I got this rocket right. Yes, I got to the moon. Yeah, I'm not a mechanically mud. inclined. So I'd rage quit after like two hours. It, it's um, super incredible though, Gunny. You gotta get to the the moon when you first get your first successful like rocket into space. You're like, fuck yeah. I'd probably get it makes you think like, oh, so uh, this boom, bullshit like, right? this shit after. makes you think how the fuck did we ever get as humans people into space how how gunny how Evol- we've evolved that's fucking craziness Innovation. we got people into the technology of a calculator alright yeah true yeah. nowadays we got 2080 TIs and we haven't gone back to the moon the fuck mail i know why do we only go once what's up with that <laughs> we beat the russians that's all we cared about <laughs> all, right. all right next next game we've got maybe you can explain this one jesus because you're you're somewhat into this uh gears of war 5 and it shows five minutes of gears 5 halo spartan piece gameplay in 4k and i think i heard about this on a podcast where you could now play as spartans right but i thought we were always spartans no, right? Gears of War. Gears of War 5. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay. in Gears of War 5, yes. you get to so play the two as... Franchises. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of confusing. Yep. Yeah, the way you read that headline was kind of like, what the fuck is well, going on? But in Gears 5, you actually get to play in the... I think it was... Was it the Horde mode, Gunny, that you just announced? Or the, the Arcade mode? One of the modes, if you buy the Ultimate Edition of the game and play within the first week, which... If you're part of the Ultimate Game Pass, you're already gonna get the Ultimate Edition no matter what. Uh, if you if you're in part of that, or if you buy the Ultimate Edition, you play within the first week, you get actually special character skins that make your guys look like Spartans from Halo. And and from the picture that I'm actually looking at now, they look like some pretty cool Spartans. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I like the I think they're art from, style. You know? uh, they're from Halo Reach. They're the team from Halo Reach. Yeah, like look at the helmets. So yeah. I'm like, okay, those are. Definitely from uh, yeah, that game. So there you go. Uh, here's a game I never played, even back on the OG Xbox. But uh, let's see, Battletoads. Nine minutes of Battletoads gameplay. So that's uh, up there. I mean, he is excited for Battletoads. I know everyone's making a bit. Oh, Phil Spencer brought um, back Battletoads. No, because I never played the first yeah. one. So yeah, okay. and well, I still have a side scrolling beat 'em up. It's gonna get old. Yeah, I don't I give like. a fuck, dude. Like, fuck this. Sounds boring. I don't. Now, I, I could a big say, deal out of it. I could say Battletoads in VR, side scroll and beat them up. That might be cool. <laughs> May wants everything in but, VR now. <laughs> oh, man, I'm addicted. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, here's one for uh, uh, over there for the GFNG. Hmm. Uh, FIFA 20, 11 minutes of Volta story. You're getting your story oh, now in your oh, FIFA. Stupid and lame. It's like yeah. Madden 20, where, oh, we got a story now. A visceral story. Or NBA. <laughs> we're, NBA yeah. we're known for our storytelling at EA Sports. <laughs> it's your story. It's your life. You make your you, game. Your superstar. Da da. Da da. <laughs> Fuck you, EA. <laughs> Fuck you, EA. Bullshit ass. All right. Then. Next one. Oh, I remember. I never saw this one, but I know what it was. Was uh, that ten minutes of Windjammers two gameplay? I know I did not see the trailer on this. I don't know what so that one. Now is. we have Windjammers actual too. gameplay. What the fuck is Windjammers? Isn't that the the rollerblade? What do they call that? Oh, is it that like uh? Not rollerball. Like, like it's supposed to be like competing with Rocket League. It was like yeah. an arena um, board game. I got gotcha. you. So yeah, it looks. There's that. And then we've also got seven minutes of Street Rage. Street Rage 4 gameplay. All right. Mm. Next one is no, Man here, the Shark Souls of Open Shark World Games. So you're going oh, to eat people and sharks? 
I'm, I, I hope so. I hope you are the shark, right? And you're yeah. eating people. Hey, but you know what? I'm already thinking, what about VR? Eat people in VR. There you go. Man eater. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's all I have, guys. Those are the coolest games, Sean. From okay. probably best to worst. Okay. <laughs> Nothing else, huh? Nothing else. I think we're on to community questions. Community questions. You can leave questions on the Facebook group, people. You can leave questions on our Discord. Hopefully, you got to check that. And you can leave questions there. Just go ahead. Facebook or Discord. Facebook group or Discord. Uh, yeah. where we post every week. Anyways. Rob to that, folks. So I think we have... I did remember. And you know what? We always ask that first one. And it comes from our good friend, Brian Tull. Okay. And he asks you, Jesus, what's a stereotype you live up to and one that you don't? I like beans. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Uh, I like beans. You're, uh, you're, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I don't. Said it. Uh, what is a stereotype you live up to and one that you don't? I actually am very patriotic. I'm not an anti Trumper, as you would call it. Mm-hmm. Like, like, I respect the office of the president, no matter who it is. And I'm actually very patriotic in the sense where, like, it, it, I'm very, I'm kind of conservative myself. For people listening, oh, 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 oh Jesus is conservative. <laughs> but like, yeah. and we just lost half our listeners. Yeah, we just lost half our listeners. <laughs> yeah. like, holy shit, I thought Jesus was not conservative. You don't hate him. How dare you? <laughs> no, no, but like, like if you have opposing views to me, like politically, racially, even if you're a neo, like if you're a Nazi, like say you really are a Nazi, where like you believe the world should be blonde haired, blue eyed people, and there's only one master race, you believe that. Like a race, like a human race, like I will legitimately defend your right to to express your opinion, and I will not shut you down. I believe in freedom of of like of speech in such a way where I will only debate you, but I will never like like want to shut you down for your your speech. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like some people, I agree. Some people like if if you don't agree with me or I don't agree with you, they want to shut me down for the way I believe things. You know what I mean? Like if I say I don't believe in religion, which I don't, some people may want to shut me down and say, no, God's going to strike you down. You should believe in God. God is this. God is that. Whatever. You know what I mean? And they want to shut me down completely. But they don't want to listen to my side of why I don't believe in such a thing. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm not that way. Like some people may not think that of me, but that's just how I am. Like I legitimately like believe in like Freedom of speech and open conversation and debate between the two. I don't believe in like a one sided situation where like you only let one side speak and never get the other side of the whole story. I so I align I know I align similar to what you're saying because I'm pretty much the same way where I say, I see where you're coming from. Yeah. You know? And then I will politely disagree with that person, you know, yeah. with my own views. In a respectful conversation. Yeah, like like some people would think that oh no, Jesus would like just disagree, disagree. No, 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 fuck that. <laughs> Believe in both sides. Woo. <laughs> but yeah, that's a stereotype. That's a stereotype I don't live up to. I don't hate Trump. Do I believe everything he does is perfect? No. But I also respect the office of the president, and I know that like, whatever, dude, like, he's the president. What are you gonna do about it? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. There's. I know what you're saying. Like, especially now with you know online and you know I read oh, a lot of online. There's so much hate. Like, fuck you, Jesus. You fucking Trump supporter. I'm like, well, he is the president. Fuck. You know what are you gonna do? <laughs> so the, right. I I'm not very political. Like I, I'm sure a lot of you will notice that even on my Facebook, I don't do yeah. anything really political. Um, if you know if it's a funny Trump thing that somebody puts on there oh, about yeah. funny Trump or funny. I uh, love the Trump Pelosi or whatever. I'll, I'll say, yeah, that's that's funny. That thing you yeah. wrote, it's not. And I yeah. post a shit about every one time. All the political figures, from like but even think, Democratic uh, ones, like like Hillary Clinton and shit. I'm always supposed to. Oh shit yeah, about a lot them. of Hillary Clinton stuff. Yeah, <laughs> and Bernie Sanders and all those motherfuckers. Like I, I post about everyone and and yeah, like people think like, oh, Jesus would be more of a, a liberal 
left leaning, like super like all this like other different things, but like I'm not. I'm way different than what you may think. Jesus, you know what I did? I shaved off my cop. <gasps> Oh, well, not fuck. Oh, shit. Not oh, fuck. No, Gunny. God. Well, because the stereotype is that, um, that I'm a, a cop. You're a fucking you know? cop, Everybody Gunny. thinks I'm a cop. You're a fucking cop. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Every picture he looks at, the first thing they ask my wife, right? In the you conflict. marry a cop. I don't, see, I don't see everybody, but they see me, right? Eventually, yeah. they'll, they'll see me and... You'll see me driving through the complex with my cop glasses, by the way, my <laughs> cop sunglasses. And, uh, and so oh they ask God her, glasses. you know, is your, is your husband a cop? Um, and we have a large, very large uh, Coast Guard base out here. So shout out to the Coasties that are listening. Yeah. Um, and out here in Petaluma. Uh, so between here and the ocean. Uh, so they, or that's what they ask, right? Because we actually have. Coasties to live here, so yeah. is your husband in the car? Because I wear the same like cargo pants, you know, that yeah. I have for my company here, right? And they're like, he's definitely a coastie, you know. Um, so yeah, that's a stereotype. Yeah. That, that's yeah, a stereotype. I, don't, I yeah. don't live up to. Yeah. Don't live up to that stereotype, Gunny. Yeah, fuck, fuck the police. <gasps> oh my. Yeah, I'm just kidding. I hate him. No, I don't. I'm kidding. <laughs> we need him. We definitely need him. There's just some real asshole cops out there. I'm not gonna lie. There are, yeah, for yeah, sure. I like really, cops. They, they do their job. They do, they're here for a reason. But there's some real assholes out there. They'll just lie straight up. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> They'll right. straight up lie. <laughs> well, that's just mean? people in general. You yeah, know, definitely. no matter what. Oh, you know? yeah, no matter what profession. You're, doctors will fucking lie if they need to. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Well, you, I'm trying to think of what, what stereotype I, like, I'd live up to. I always think of, like, you know my ethnicity or something, but I'm just trying to think of anything else that like, uh, hmm. old man gunny. Think, okay. any... think about the stereotype of old man. Oh, gunny. Yeah. You're old. Okay. You see, oh, yeah. That's what I was going to say. Old man Mayo. Like I wake up in the morning and have to slowly move around the D-mail, house. And I'm D-mail. Kind of like, like the man has to do of... some stretches before he gets out of yeah, bed. Yeah, pretty much. You know, you got to kind of stretch out in the morning and <laughs> you know, then I got to kind of look at the news and get kind of updated real quick before I start my day. And you know, then the kids are like, <laughs> want to tell me something real quick i'm like hold down just a minute you know we, i need we my time, coffee you know? i need my coffee first <laughs> yeah yeah that's me that's me that's me with the coffee give me <laughs> give me a half hour to wake up and get my bearings straight, you know i need at least a, yeah Fucking i need at least mayo. an hour well not before work but i do have to but that could also be like the three hours of sleep a night i get too like yeah that, that could be, affecting that could be a contributing factor there man <laughs> Oh you know. man, oh man, Mayo and old man Gunny can't get up in the morning. <laughs> I just sleep in till noon. Is, what, what do I do? I get up at three thirty every yeah. morning. So uh, Jesus sleeps in till noon to fix that problem. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, today I got out of bed at one thirty in the afternoon. Holy shit! <laughs> I'm almost done working at that point. In time. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> anyways, anyways. Uh, so what's the stereotype you do live up to, Mayo? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say the old man is the one I do, oh, and the right. one that I don't. don't. The one I don't, I would say, is PC Master Racer. Oh, you like, PC you know. fucking Master Racer, you are. motherfucker. Yes. No, you are totally a PC Master Racer. I don't like Epic. You fuck Epic. Placard on you your desk. fucking Epic oh, lover, sh- you motherfucker. You, the, the listeners can't see that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, like it, it's games, you know, it's games in general. So, like, you know, most PC people don't, you know, they'll they'll knock on console stuff or vice versa. Yeah, console right. people knock on PC it's people, but thing. it's games, you know, it, it's a community thing, and we we can have fun with it. So, you know, I don't I don't care what system you play on. You know, I get along with Nipron just great, and you know, plays on Xbox and you know, or PlayStation, and you know, and. So, you know, even if you're just on an Xbox, you know, definitely would enjoy Discord with you and, and stuff like that, you know. So you're still a gamer. That's true. I mean, I could, and if that were true, uh, Mayo, I think you would have stopped listening to this podcast, right? When oh, yeah. You, when like, you first started listening after, like, the second episode, you know? Yeah, when it was all Xbox and PC yeah. or PlayStation. Oh, and, yeah. Totally. Yeah, you would be like, fuck these guys. Right, fuck because that Xbox this, nerds. This podcast... This podcast used to be all PlayStation. Mayo right, came in here and master raced everything up. <laughs> then it was all Xbox. <laughs> I, 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 I you guys. 
this yeah this podcast has evolved over the last you know oh definitely dude like like you could definitely see the i would say the growth and the 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 taste of gaming kind of changing as we've gotten older in the podcast i mean i guess i'm the original one of the original people on the show but like think about back then it was all xbox me captain hug gunny and uh, no, not gunny but like i am's and brink and shit and uh-huh. tragic and then Gunny and Ryan coming in in like 20, what was it, 2016 you guys came in? You and yes. Ryan, you, Ryan, and Eric. And like that continuing, and then like Ryan kind of like talking about PC here and there, and that kind of gave me the idea like, oh, maybe PC is the way to go. And then like, slowly but surely, like, eventually like it came to a point where like... And then I bought a PC, you know, and then it was, yeah. And we 20, bought Switches. Yeah, and- 2019 came around, and I was like, you know what? Tax time. I'm I'm switching to PC, man. Fucking it. fucking. It. I'm switching, switching. PC time. Woo! Who knows, folks? I mean, 2020 could just be an Xbox again. 2020. Exclusive. Yeah, it could be like a Stadia Master Race or Stadia. Shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Like a PC. Just wearing a Google console. shirt. Hat. Yeah, big console. Right? Just Stadia Epic hat. console, PS5, and Epic console is all I play, guys. We'll have a Stadia. Uh, yeah, his uh. His chair, his stadia chair, right? <laughs> stadia <laughs> chair. Hey, guys. <laughs> guys, oh, I have sure. a question. Mm. Don Fuller, horribly awkward, wants to know, what time of the day would you like the clock to stop and stay on forever? I got this one. Okay. That that time, it will vary a little bit, but that time right after you eat supper. That when uh, you eat the full 6 belly. 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Yeah, I would say I would say roughly six p.m. because I won't, I don't want to say lunch because you gotta go back to work. Yeah, you know, yeah, but fuck but we at the yeah. end, you know, you just ate supper, you're settling down for the day. Mm. There's nothing better than you know and that six p.m. feeling when I just came home and I, I took a shower, I ate dinner, uh, I'm good, mm. I'm, like, I'm ready to game or maybe watch TV or something. Like, fuck yeah, you're right, man. Hell yeah. Or 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 it's when you're crawling in bed on a really long day when you're really really tired. Yeah. Yeah, I was see. I was thinking of the same thing where I was thinking, okay, like summertime, I'd want it to be, uh, you know, probably, probably like seven o'clock or eight, you know, because that's when things here where I live at kind of cool down. I can open the window up and let some air in. Um, and I thought, man, that would just be the perfect time. But maybe like the winter would have to be like earlier, you know, because I'd still want there to be daylight to be able to go out six, and do six or seven daytime stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet spot, yeah. During during the winter here in Ohio, it's dark the time I get off work. It's dark when I go oh, to yeah, work, and it's dark here. when I yeah, get home. Yeah, same here. Like, yeah, oh. yeah I, get, I get up to work, and it's like fucking pitch black. I get off of work, and it's like fucking black outside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? This is bullshit. It's, it's 3 p.m. What's, it's already dark outside. What the fuck's going on? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and see, sucks. only working, you know, the four days a week, and... But yeah. twelve, thirteen hour days sometimes it's like but, being at home but, outside near my near my home in the yeah. daylight is like weird. Yeah. By the oh, time I it's what like, this place looked like by the time it's like seven o'clock, it feels like it's midnight. You're like, what the fuck is it so dark outside for? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, is sucks. it bedtime? <laughs> yeah. I just want to go to bed and it's like it's barely seven o'clock right now. What are you doing, Jesus? Oh shit. So guys, let's say it's seven o'clock, right? Mm-hmm. And cause Sean wants to know. At that time, let's say you're tech, taking a, just a big, you're on the throne, man. You know, you ate that dinner at 7 o'clock, you take a fat shit. Well, in the middle of that intense online gaming, uh, what do you do? Do you pinch it or do you push? I mean, oh. it's, it's, it's towards the end, man. You're like, you're, you're, you're online like 13 and 0. What do you do? If you, you're like, you have Playing to take, Apex. You have, to take, you have to go to the restroom. Yeah, and if it's something, know, man, bench, if it's bench. something like, like <laughs> you have to, you have to hold him, man. Like, just can't let the people down. Yeah, you can't let the team out. Are you gonna do shit yourself? There's no way. I say, you know what I say, Sean? Just pinch, pucker, whatever you have to do to keep it in. Do whatever you can. That's what I do. I squirm, man. If I have to, like, really, uh, if I'm thinking number one, you know, there's a lot of squirming on. Hey, and I do that during the podcast. It's like, I don't get just squirm it, you know. Show must go on, guys. Yeah. So does the game. Yeah. Um, that's it. Sean has another question. Ooh, if a family member accidentally sent you a personal dick pic, 
would you ever bring it up or keep it to yourself and pretend it never happened? Um, I would bring it up and I would make a fool of him somehow. I would yeah, too. that's I would what I do. Pri- privately. That's what I would do. I, would, I wouldn't yell at him, but <laughs> yeah. I, would, I would make fun of him. I'd somehow. send a heart picture back, you know? I'm going to make a fucking joke out of it, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's kind of weird. That dick pic from your fucking your rear brother. Hey, you go, brother. It's a picture of my dick. It's like, whoa, dude, you sent it to the wrong <laughs> he, fucking person. He sent that out, right? Like, on the, on the, you guys ever go? Hey, guys, I'm sure. You know what? I know where Sean's going with this. Have you ever Where's gone he? to, uh, like, uh, you know, when you go into Facebook, right? And then you're just like, oh, I'm going to. You go into Messenger and you're like, send, send, send. No, 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 no. no. Send. <laughs> No, <laughs> right. So you got to be really careful yeah. because also, if you notice, like, like when you link like certain things where it has all your contacts in there, like your work contacts. Oh yeah. So you don't want to send your boss any, right? <laughs> yeah, don't be sending your boss dick pics or anything like that, people. <laughs> yeah. If it's girls, don't be sending nudes to them. It's kind of exactly. weird. All right. Next question we have from Gib eight seven seven seven. He asked, have you ever played a game and felt like you were missing something and couldn't figure it out? Um, yes, plenty of games that I played that I like that. So, yeah, for I, example, the, the Witness, everyone was like, oh, The Witness is such a compelling, visceral game. It'll you know, challenge your mind. Like, fuck you. Fuck The Witness. It's a bunch of bullshit. I remember when you played that on my account, you were streaming it. This, I was is, this is a fucking bullshit-ass fucking... This game is a bunch of hobo-ass shit. Fuck this game. Uh, what else? Go like people are like recommending. Like, this game is amazing. It's the best thing you've ever. Oh, what was that game that VGO kept talking about? Forager. Oh, you I don't like? like I like oh, Forager. Yeah. Oh, Forager is so good. Forager is the, the well, best thing ever. Fuck you and Forager. Forager is fucking hobo ass. Fucking stupid ass game fuck no actually game. you know what i gotta give credit to john on that show because fuck that game. even though he was drunk he did i want to say like he did like you were prior he did talk about what he thought the game was missing the game is stupid is what is missing <laughs> you should put that on the on the fucking title this game is stupid I mean, is what is missing yeah i mean i haven't played it so i can't Forager. speak to it but i mean from what he talked about like you know all the upgrades and things you're doing didn't really have anything meaningful for the end of the game? Uh, what other games have I played that I don't think that are super hyped or super cool? Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of like popular like Xbox games that I've played that I just didn't think of uh, fell into the hype. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in real quick. Why he's thinking and go, go real old school. Um, Gunny, do you remember uh, ET on the Atari? Like that game, you just feel like you're missing. You can't figure out how to get out of the hole. <laughs> <laughs> like no, ET. but you know, like I, I remember Pitfall, but I don't remember playing ET on there. Yeah, I had this little hole, and you couldn't. Nobody could ever really figure out how to get out of it. And uh, actually, somebody, I don't, I don't know if this is true or not, but somebody at work told me actually some guy was like talking about it. He didn't know what to do. All she had to do is because you know the Atari just had the one button. You push the button, and it would make your neck raise on ET. And if you hold it down, the the ET character would float out of the hole, and mm. that's how you got out. Something simple as that, but nobody yeah. thought of it back then. <laughs> but, but I don't know if that's true or not. Possible. But yeah, that game I was so lost on. There was, it was just kind of like, nope, not playing it. Yeah, speaking of, that's that's funny that you know we're talking about holes, digging holes, right? That's where they put that game. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. In the ground. Um, yeah, I can't I can't think of any because I would for mine it would probably be like a, you know like. An Xbox game that you know you gotta love and play this game. It's the best thing ever. But um, hmm. trying to think of a game like you know so many people love, but maybe I couldn't stand. You know, or you know kept trying at it, but yeah, nothing at this time. Um, so I'm just gonna go on to the next question. Jonathan Penpoint, what the hell is he talking about? The duck, fuck, fuck off, John. Okay, all right. <laughs> next oh, one. What do you say? I don't know something about woodchuck. Fuck if a woodchuck could fuck wood. Something stupid on there. It's How much really wood could a woodchuck thing. fuck if a woodchuck could fuck wood? Mike's short and sweet answer: would be, If it's male, all of it. Fuck the yeah. shit. That fucking fucking fuck the fucking fuck. Fucking fuck that fucking wood. Fuck yeah. Also, shout out to Shiloh Jocelyn. 
new member of the group. He's been very active in the group. I've noticed him. He's from yeah, Oregon. I had a he's, from, he's, he's, from, he's from Oregon, actually. So, like, what's interesting was when I noticed when he joined the group, because you know you have to answer questions for the group to join. Uh, he said that uh, our friend over at uh, JB's Computers, the dude who sold me the computer. Right, right that's who I thought it was. I thought yeah, it was yeah. the same person. Uh, our friend over there, he uh, he sent him over. He was like, hey, dude, like, listen to he actually recommended our podcast when he sold him the pc and he told him to join our facebook group so well thank you that's awesome shout out to jb's computer thing in shiloh thank you guys jb's custom gaming pcs is his page on facebook go find him he sells computers for people people pcs PCs. he actually does a really good job man like i actually like I've seen pictures of his recent work of like new PCs he's building for people, and like it's actually a pretty good job. And it's not it's not crazy like it's not crazy overpriced compared to like buying like, a built ugly ass computer from like Best Buy. Like the other day I was at Best Buy, and I saw a pre-built uh, computer with like what was it Mayo like a twenty eighty in it or something like that. oh yeah 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 the one you did i send me. you a picture of that thing the thing was yeah, fucking you did. ugly dude it was <laughs> i was like what the fuck is this shit it was freaking horrible looking and it cost like i think it was like 1400 dollars at best buy i was like holy shit dude like this thing is ugly as fuck and someone's gonna pay 1400 bucks for this it's ridiculous anyways yeah. Well, and Shiloh also, you know, if you haven't yet, come on over to the Discord and uh, say hi if you're on the PC anyways, especially yeah. since it seems to be the form of chat of choice and Discord we're pretty active. Over there. Actually, speaking of how active we are over there, did you did you look at the complete list of rankings on Discord over there, Jesus? No. What, what's uh, I was just kind of, I was kind of proud, actually, the, the top four spots mm. were, were the th- three of us were in the top four. Oh, I nice. won't go in the order ranking, but like, and that just ranks your activity. So it just shows how active you know we are with with the group, and enjoy. Oh, definitely, know. man. Yeah, like, like I enjoy talking to all you guys, all the listeners out there, all the people that message me on Facebook, message me on, on, on Xbox. Even though I'm not on there quite often, but I mean, like, if you message me on Discord or you message me on my Facebook personally or whatever, like, I'll reply to you pretty much right away and, and same and I'm, and I'm happy to say that I'm willing to do that you know what I mean like a lot of podcasters feel like I feel like they don't do that I don't know why maybe they feel like they're uh, too much of a celebrity or too much of like they're just they're not willing to step down to that level or whatever to like engage with well, the I think too I kind of see it as being new you can get kind of busy you know people are trying oh, yeah. to like get you to play certain games with them and like you know, we're just constantly on the move. You know, like yeah. I was thinking about Deep Rock the other day with Mechmod and them guys. It's like we played into that game for a while, but yeah. but we got to keep going. You know, and, and also just to have content for the show. We and just, just, just kind of keep the moving. That's the truth. Like, yeah, like we're constantly. I'm constantly playing different fucking games, man. Like one minute, like one minute, I'll message Jonathan Hall. Like the other day, I messaged him. I was like, Yo, Jonathan, get on, get on right now. We're gonna play some more No Man's Sky. And then like that fucking same night, I was playing like something completely different. And I did fucking forgot to message him again. Like today. Yeah. Today, yeah. Gunny Chief. Like I message Gunny Chief. Gunny, get on, we're gonna play Call of Duty Modern Warfare Alpha. Gunny's right. like, Gunny, I'll be back in ten minutes. Ten minutes later, Jesus is playing Days Gone. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? you know, it shows you were online. But I'm like, okay, he's playing on something else. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm completely playing something else. It's like we're constantly playing different things and especially me, man. Like I'm right now catch up with Days Gone. I'm trying to play like other. And I'm hopefully gonna finish Wolfenstein before the end of the year. I, I want to make it a goal of mine to finish that before game of the year. Um, I wanna like there's so many games coming out, man. Like like Man of Medan is coming out this this week. Control is coming out this week. Uh, Gears of War Five coming out in a couple of weeks here. Like next week, isn't it? Gears of War. Uh, uh, the ninth, I think, is the official release. But if you own it, the two. Game Pass, it's like three days earlier. Yeah, so two, two weeks from now, on the sixth is coming out. So there you go. Uh, um, then there's like fucking all those games coming out that week for for Borderlands. Yeah, Borderlands coming out on on Epic exclusive mail. Epic exclusive. Mm. Yeah, you're gonna have to buy that mail from the Epic Store. Yep. Yeah, per- <laughs> That'd be my third game I bought. Actually, 
purchased. Mayo sounds very excited about that. <laughs> 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 but like, there's so many games coming out this fall, man. It's like, whoo, here we go, boys. Yeah. Get ready for spend hundreds of dollars on fucking video games. I Woo, remember what the winner said of earlier, you know. If, if our Patreon, uh, our winner of our Patreon coming up hasn't bought Borderlands 3 yet, and he enters, that might be his, his way. Yeah. There you go, people. There you go. You, Fifty dollars of it, right there. Fifty dollars. Yep. You got to just spend ten more bucks and get yourself your Borderlands copy. Yeah, Borderlands Three, or maybe even Gears of War. Oh yeah, well, Gears of War will be out. Then, huh? You can still get it. It will be only a week old. Yeah, yeah. You'll get one of those too. I mean, five dollars to try it. Gears you of know? War. I mean, Blair Witch is coming out this week too on Game Pass, guys, in just a few days here. Coming out in Game Pass. All these games coming out. Anyways. Oh, well, games that we haven't played that I feel like you were missing something I couldn't figure out. Yeah, that Forager game, I couldn't really, like, get into that, uh, yeah, Witness. Oh, yeah, it was, uh, uh, gosh, now I forgot the name of it, but it, it, it came out a couple months ago on, uh, Game Pass, um, crap. What was it about? Uh, that was the one where you played that small character, and, you know, it was that, I don't know, it kind of reminded me of, like, a like an old kind of Zelda thing, but with newer graphics. But you kind of moved really slowly when you had the torches and yeah, the name, it'll come to me, but I, I could not figure out that game for the life of me. I don't know. I do what they showed it at E3, like, you know, for like three years. I know Andrew had, you know, talked about where is this game? It's not, is it below? Is that, was that the name of it? It's below. It's below. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, no, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of a different game that came out, but uh, no, you're right. Below is out. It came out last year in December. Yeah, so that's that was the one again I was talking about. Yep. Yeah, it didn't it? Didn't I don't know. It looks stupid. That's what it was to me. It just, and you know, I'm sure I just didn't give it a chance. All other people that played it that talked about, oh, and you got to do all these different things. That yeah. I was like, yeah, well, I'm done. <laughs> like. It, it still sits on my uh, hard drive space. Yeah. Anyway, uh, next question is from Nipron. Jonathan, what's up, dude? Uh, and he asked, if you could get one animal that would be your friend and closest companion, which animal would you choose? This animal is also extremely loyal and would do anything for you. Anything? Yeah, my, anything at my, all? I mean, it would have to be a... Yeah. Remember we talked about the monkey? Remember? I'm choosing a tiger. It's, it's, it has I was going to say like a panther. A fucking tiger, bro. See, I'm thinking like something that's something not going to be... fierce. Look, no. Look, hey, look. We're talking about modern times here. Yeah, is, yeah. I'm making my own shit up here, man. And we go into the grocery store. My monkey's just going to be doing all my grocery shopping. <laughs> you, just want, you just want like a little slave monkey. Thing, like the little you know fucking, what? Jesus, I'm going to... You know what? You if don't I come over to your house with my monkey, that monkey can still slap you. Okay? <laughs> little monkey. I thing. command it. I think a monkey That's would be right. pretty cool. I think a monkey yeah, would I mean, be Your tiger cool. would probably eat it. But As I say, your tiger would protect them. So. <laughs> yeah. Look at that monkey slapping the shit out of me. Fucking tiger would probably <laughs> eat the shit out of it. Yeah. yeah! I think a tiger would be cool. Like a, like a, like a loyal tiger that you know is not going to eat you. Mm-hmm. Would be so fucking cool, man. That would be like... you. Who the fuck's going to talk shit to you when you have a tiger next to you? No one. <laughs> no. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Don't talk shit to me. I got my tiger right next to me, buddy. What's up? <laughs> Some of my old miss, you'd have to tour. <laughs> the old E-Man rip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That'd be badass. I think it would be cool to have a tiger. Yeah. It'd be like the largest what, What's cat? better, a tiger or a lion? I still think a tiger would be cool. Yeah, I like the panther because yeah. they're black. and They're black. They they're got cool. Like, like look like a black cat, pretty much a big black cat. Yeah, you're right. And the, their eyes are really you know Super you focus on their eyes. Yeah, and, like yeah, green or yellow. Yeah, we had a black cat that was an outside cat, and I haven't seen him in like a long time now. I wonder if he's dead or something. Poor cat. Not very loyal. Yeah. 
<laughs> he probably found food somewhere else. Is what I'm. <laughs> yeah, someone else, baby, baby, someone else is fucking. Him. Someone else uh, is feeding his ass, and he's out there fucking eating. <laughs> anyway, probably something like my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> the male's out there feeding my stray cats. <laughs> my daughter is probably out there feeding his stray cats. My, my eight-dollar cat food. Eight-dollar cat food to a stray fucking cat. <laughs> uh. Oh shit. <laughs> But yeah, Tiger would be cool, Jonathan. What would you want? What would you want as a... I think an eagle. Like, if I could use an eagle, like the people in Assassin's Creed could use an eagle, that would be cool. But I, I doubt that. I think Jonathan, for some reason, I feel like Jonathan's like a uh, a big reptile type. Like, I can see him mm. with a big reptile, like a crocodile or... Oh, shit. That's kind of scary. That's more scary. Yeah, that than, be... That's more scary than a tiger. Did you see John walking down the street with a with a... Leash on a crocodile. Going <laughs> yeah. in the mall. That'd be fucking crazy, dude. <laughs> oh shit. And be like, he he doesn't bite, really. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alright. Brian has another question here, guys. Brian Tell. With everyone showing off their pop collections, if, if you could own one series of pops, which one would it be? Mass Effect. Which ones? Mass Effect. Mass Effect. I was thinking. I was just thinking like Gear Marvel because I do like a. Uh, I've got my Marvel characters over here. Mass Effect. I would have to say uh, Doctor Who. Like most of our family here loves Doctor Who. Doctor Who is pretty cool. I've seen a few episodes of it. Yeah, I watched the middle ones, like the, like the two thousand six, two thousand seven. Yeah, ones that's really the ones good. I ended up watching a few of. Yeah, the two thousand six, like I don't know, probably two thousand five, two thousand six, two thousand seven. Yeah, somewhere Matt around Smith, there. David Tennant. It's Matt Smith, David Tennant era. Those ones are really good. Is there uh what's the latest series? Do they have Doctor uh-huh. like every year, don't they? Yeah, they have a series every year. They have a, a girl like doctor a now. This was the first time that uh, you know, if you know the story of the doctor, he can regenerate new people. So yeah. they they always bring in a new cast. Well, the last time the doctor regenerated it you know, he regenerated in a female. And uh I, I didn't care for the season as much, but you know, there's some people liked it, but There's they kind 50 of push, seasons. Woo! They push uh, girl power a little more in it now. Mm. and But the earlier seasons were really good. Yeah. Hey, uh, Jonathan, I think uh, Nipron wants to know, what is the most useless fact that you know? Or uh, facts. Most useless fact. I know a lot of facts. Any. But are they useless? They're not useless. If it's a are they useless fa- to you? So if it's a fact, if it's, is it useless if it's a fact, Gunny? It can be. How? Okay, I can give you an example. Uh, my useless fact, charcoal is just made out of charred wood. It's not made out of coal. Uh, 150 Use- people a knowledge. year. Okay. 150 people a year are killed by falling coconuts. That's not that useless. one, like, that's actually. Awful. Remember, I talked about that. Going well, yeah, to Fiji Islands. You're, uh, you're on a tropical island. Yeah, there's coconuts. You know to coconut. be careful. Yeah, you that know thing careful. falls on you, man. I think we'll you are a helmet doing. on a tropical island. <laughs> like when that thing hits the ground and you're standing near it, there's like a. You can feel that thing's like, man, that would bust open my, my noggin. It kill me. I don't know any useless facts. I can't think of. Them. A sneeze travels about a hundred miles per hour. No useless facts here, boys. No useless facts. All the facts I know are facts, and they're fucking important facts, Gunny. I got one, Jesus. During your lifetime, you will produce enough saliva to fill how many swimming pools? Your guess. Twelve. Two. No. Two? That's it? I think we won it. That's it? What the fuck? You know, the way you spent... Probably Mayo, twelve. Maybe, maybe five. <laughs> <laughs> how many spiders do you eat per year, Gunny? How many spiders? Uh, per year, you know, and we've got like those those little black ones, not any round, brown recluse ones. But I'm gonna bet I probably eat like maybe twenty a know. year. I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, probably like twelve. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you thought I was gonna know that fact? I don't fucking know. That's a useless fact. Why would I know that fact if it's useless, Gunny? I don't know. I don't know that shit. Um, but yeah, no. Oh. No, facts are super important to me. I rely on them to survive. 
Yeah. No. Oh, oh, I got one. Jesus, okay. so this one could be useful. Banging your head against a wall burns 150 calories an hour. But wouldn't your head be bleeding and you'd be dead? But it's... it's was in yes, armor. you're right. That's probably his useless. Like, how hard are you banging your head against the wall? Well, I guess you'd burn more calories the harder you bang your head. Yeah, that doesn't sound very helpful. There we go. Yeah. It's pretty useless. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, guys. Uh, our last and final question here on Discord is from V8 Better. No, no, I got, I got a useless oh, fact. I got a useless fact. I got, I got thought of one. Thought of one, Gunny. What is it? Tell me. In Oregon, it is illegal to have no windshield without windshield wipers. So oh. you, you can have, like, no windshield on your car, but you must have at least windshield wipers. But yeah, like you oh. don't need, you don't need a windshield. You just need windshield wipers. <laughs> is that, is that <laughs> really useless? Because you need to know this in Oregon. Well, maybe, maybe that's not useless. So I can get a ticket. See, that's no that's like a, that's like an insider tip. See, if I come out to Oregon and I don't have a windshield, somehow. <laughs> somehow. I mean, like I know it gets these broken, things. Say. Right? Maybe, maybe you don't. I don't know. I don't what know. if I had one of those fancy Jeeps where the windshield folds down in the front or whatever? You know? <laughs> well, at least you'd still have windshield wipers, though. Yeah, so just you, make sure they're attached. But, they're but doesn't it fold forward? Fold forward so it, it goes forward, the yeah. All right, so yeah. All right let me give you guys. I'm on a website called uselessfacts.net, and I got some useless facts here, guys. That's where I got them from. <laughs> in space, you cannot cry. Because there is no gravity to make the tears flow. Well, I didn't know wait that. a minute. Hold on. That doesn't make sense because the tears would still... Would they? No, Gunny, would they? Would they come out of your eyes? Wait, how do you well, piss? How, how do you pee? I can just, sit in space, right? Does the pee get sucked out of your pee hole? I mean, I still urinate. I still... Well, yeah, but that's a muscle. I, like, I don't think you use a muscle to push a tear out. I mean, you don't, does the definition you, of cry wait, wait, you don't use a does You don't use a muscle to push a tear out? I mean, do you? I don't know. Do, yeah. Or does it just kind of happen? Does your yeah. water just kind of, I just kind of water up and it just kind of roll out? That's right, a good question, man. I don't uh, know. It says here, another, another useless fact. Another useless fact. About 7 million cars are junked each year in the United States. Yeah. Hey, that could be useful if you're a, uh, a, sav- uh, a salvage worker. You want to know uh, how much scrap metal you're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's you can spin uh, anything. Let's go. More useless facts here. Fourteen uh, percent of all facts and statistics are made up, and twenty percent of people know that fact. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's pretty fucking useless. I mean, that's all I have, guys. That's all I have. Oh. Anyways, move on here to more questions, Gunny. Go. All right. Our last one comes from Federholic. And he asked, I'm always falling asleep while gaming late at night with my Xbox pad still in my hand, even while I'm talking to someone playing co-op or multiplayer. Is it just me, or do you guys ever do this? I've done it. it oh, yeah. If you, wake up, if you wake up early, man, you're probably going to fall asleep eventually. Like That's funny, because I, I don't do that, actually. The only time I have ever done that was with that Gran Turismo game, and I was just driving in a circle, and that's when I was younger. <laughs> and I just mentioned that earlier. But that's the only time. I've ever done it. And I've had many a game to where I've had friends. You know, Snickersnee was on last week. Actually, he did that to me one night. We were playing uh, Diablo, and we just entered a dungeon. And his character like didn't move on the map. I'm like clearing the map, clearing the map, and I just see his character like not moving over there. You know, and like 20 minutes later, all of a sudden he starts moving. <laughs> you know, I'm like, yeah. Asleep? He's like, no. Like, yeah. <laughs> Snickersnee. <laughs> That's very funny, dude. All right. Well, it happens. Yeah. No, that was. I'm. I'm, I'm just thinking, Mayo. Like you're you eating potato chips on, with your man. You know, probably woke him back up, right? You know, I, I don't do any of that. <laughs> My mic is way too sensitive. Actually, it would probably really be annoying. I don't like having the crumbs around the computer, anyways. Yeah, I don't do too much multiplayer, but when I did, especially back on the Xbox 360, uh, that's yeah, that was. Uh, you're in a living room. Yeah, and that's happened several times where. You know, whether it be on a Saturday or Sunday, you know, like on the weekend. And, you know, I work really hard that week. And, man, 
like I'm like okay you know no coffee energy drinks nothing and, and uh, yeah I would just be falling asleep in the middle of a match you know yeah so, and then it would be weird like especially if there was like I say six of us in the same party um, like I've fallen asleep woke them back up and kind of went oh I guess they never knew I w- went to sleep because they were all so engaged with each other you know yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or it was like, we don't know what happened to you, Gunny. You know, like, yeah. Your Xbox turned off or something, yeah. Yeah. Um, due to inactivity. But um, that's all we have for questions, people. All right. Well, people, you can find me on Xbox Live, Gamer Tag, Jesus Walks Live, on PlayStation Network, G-S-U-S, Walks a letter G, letters S-U-S, Walks a Lot. You can find me on Steam, Jesus Walks Live, on Epic, Jesus Walks Live, on Bethesda.net, Jesus Walks Live, on... Everything else, Jesus Walks a Lot. I'm out of here. I'm on Origin, find me Jesus Walks a Lot. On, I'm just done. Whatever. Man. All right, guys. Go over okay. go over to Xbox. Over to Xbox. Add me on Gunny Chief. One word. On the Steam, one word, Gunny Chief. And over on the PlayStation, I am HGP space Gunny. And Gunny Chief on Twitter. What about you, Mayo? Where do we find you? All right, yeah, you can find me on you know on Steam, Xbox, Origin, Epic Store is the Mayo one, and then on Discord is the Mayo. That is awesome. it. Oh, the Mayo. Jesus, what does it say? Peace out, Brussels sprouts. We'll catch you on the next edition of the Horrible Gamers podcast i'm hungry i want like tacos or something i'm going for chicken i've got chicken here yeah, chicken. Mm. Gotta warm it up y'all making me hungry now i want like, See, a spicy want to eat chicken to sandwich mm. spicy oh chicken. the uh was it popeyes came out with their new chicken sandwich i don't today? have a popeyes near me gunny damn it and that place was had like 30 cars in the parking lot today so oh, must be good i've got one up the sandwich. next town up so I'll be going around. All right, guys. Well, it's it's bye, time for the bye. Bye, bye, everyone. Bye. We'll see you next Later. week. Later. Good night. <laughs>